Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome along to the lawn in Warringstown today. The Argus Irish Senior Cup final, the pinnacle event of Irish club cricket, takes place today, and it is between the NCU team of Warringstown and the Leinster Cricket Union, Leinster Cricket Club. Delighted to be here today. Um, overcast weather at the minute. It has picked up a little from this morning. It has been pretty poor in July here in Ireland, but hopefully. We'll manage to get a full game in today in this 50-over Cup final. I'm delighted to be joined today by Irish international Cal McCallum. Very welcome along, Cal. Thanks, Ali. It's wonderful to be here, uh, particularly at my own home club. Uh, so hopefully the, the weather forecasters have got it wrong. <laughs> it's to be showery throughout the day, and with a little bit of luck, those showers will evade us here. Um, great credit to the ground staff for the condition that the ground's in given the weather and the build up of the game and uh, the two teams now taken to the field for what should hopefully be uh, an absolutely wonderful occasion Yeah, it has been a fantastic competition right the way through since May when the, when the first round took place um, the two teams have made their way through to the final today Le Leinster have taken care with a few NCU teams along the way and Warringstown in the opposite they have taken care of a few Leinster teams here at the lawn but um, the two teams are just lining up at the moment and there will be a anthem this morning we're going to play Aaron's Call just before the two teams take the field Gentlemen, welcome to the lawn. Welcome to the Arrakis Irish. Yeah, two, two teams just lining up there with the match officials. Just things like that. <laughs> match officials, Ireland's call playing. It just makes the day that little bit more special. It's just not another 50 over game. No, it's certainly not. Uh, an Irish Senior Cup final is the pinnacle in a club cricketer's career. And had the, the, the pleasure of playing in six of these. Uh, won four, lost two. And they're special days. But they're even more special when you get when you manage to get across the line. And now that the young pairs are making the way to the middle, Roly Black and Mark Hawthorne, that will be the huddle in the Warringstown case and the batters in the in the Leinster case. We're trying to get that game head on to make sure that when they cross the right line, the only thing that matters now is the result. Absolutely. And just looking back then on the toss, it took place about 10, 15 minutes ago, and uh, Leinster actually won that toss, and, and they decided to bat. A few quizzical looks out there. What, what's your thoughts on that, Cal? I think probably Greg Thompson will be happy to have lost the toss. You know, the, the, the pitch, I think Warringstown prefer to bat first and post the total. Um, but that said, the weather here over the last week to 10 days has been very inclement. The, the, the pitch has spent a lot of time under cover, so there's most certainly a dampness to it. it it's it's a, a good looking pitch, you know, a good even covering of grass on it. It's not green by any stretch of the imagination, but certainly whatever there's going to be should be in it uh, now. Um, it's a tendency to potentially turn a little bit more. 
the, the, the longer the day goes on. But certainly I don't think Warring Sound will be disappointed they've been asked to bowl first of a funny feeling, no matter what Greg Thompson tells you. <laughs> he would have probably done that had he won the toss. Yeah, I think, I think Greg was maybe playing a few poker hands out there, you know, <laughs> and sort of keeping his cards close to his chest there. And uh, sort of once he'd lost the toss, he was sort of ifs and buts. But um, yeah, Leinster have decided to bat first. And uh, obviously looking from their point of view, then they can they can set up a total here and, and maybe, maybe defend that. That's their idea, obviously. But I mean, you've played here. <laughs> Or too many years from, 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 from us knowing here you've played here many many years so in terms of the pitch you were mentioning it there it, it still does look like a decent pitch and, and you know you, you can't score runs on this ground Listen it's, it, it will be a very good cricket wicket it might be a little bit tacky to start with the players the, the batters might have to be a little bit circumspect against the new ball of, uh, especially against somebody of the calibre of, of, of Graham Hume uh, and it'll likely be Ben Snell who'll bowl here from the Clare Road end who's just off the back of an 8 mm. for yet for 30 during the week for the emerging Knights against Leinster so look it, it, it should be tricky if, if Warringstown bowl well but that's it we always had a mantra when we played that in a cup final runs on the board and then second innings pressure so mm-hmm. look ultimately Leinster have, have won the toss it's up to them now to, to put Warringstown under pressure yeah so it is going to be uh, Graham Hume unsurprisingly to open up from the wearing end where he'll usually start from Bold back of a length and oh, quite a good pace. So here he comes. We start the Argosari Senior Cup straight away on that length. The opening batters for Leinster Bill Alazar, their captain, and Michael Hogan, he is their wicket keeper, also. So, yeah, Graham Hume usually bowls that back of a length, hard, heavy ball, and uh. Obviously, haven't been available for for Warringstown quite a lot of the season with international call-ups and the provincials. So it's great to have them back for the home side. Oh, I keep saying the home side because <laughs> this is their home ground, of course, but they're not actually the home side today. Yeah, Graham Hume will look to shape the ball into the right hander. You know, he'll look for that, a little bit of swing with the new ball but what his, his skill is he hits good areas and then you know his change up he'll look to then take that ball across and you have Greg Thompson Johnny Bush and James McCollum in that slip cordon waiting for any little tickle that, that may come through so Hume is a, a you know he's a, a really consistent operator and he'll challenge both edges of the bat without a doubt yeah interesting to see two slips in there straight away obviously looking for those nicks early on if he can extract that movement from the pitch And the sun is just trying to peek its way through the clouds, Ali. I just see that. <laughs> They'll be probably looking at, we looked at the test matches earlier on in the season in the Ashes and they were all talking about cloud covering and swing and, and just as we start, Warringstown thinking, oh, this is going to be great and suddenly a uh, blue sky appears for the first time today, really. But uh, in respect of we'd like to see a 50 over game on each side today, it really would be a little bit disappointing if it was cut short. So here's hoping that weather can hold and we get a full day's play in. Amen. Oh, that looked very close. Must have got a little inside tickle on that. Graham Hume, hands on head, judging by the reaction. A little inside edge, might have just saved Bilal Azar. Yeah, fuller length there from Graham Hume, and I think you're right. I think going by the reactions of the of the fielders, especially behind the stumps there, I think there must have been something there because it was pretty adjacent otherwise. That's it. The, the Leinster captain coming out with plenty of attacking intent. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. Just looking at him, he is sort of taking that extra step down the track, trying to negotiate that swing possibly. Um, and possibly Graham Hume will maybe pull his length back a little bit then. So I suppose that's a win for the batter if he's not bowling full to, to try and pick up the swing. I suppose where Graham Hume will take a little bit of heart is the fact that whilst he's playing it, you know, he's playing forceful shots, he hasn't really timed anything. That mm-hmm. just might be the nature of the tacky, tacky nature of the pitch. Right well ball to finish. A good probing over there from Graham Hume, as you would expect. And he started off with a maiden. And you can't take a wicket in your first over. That's the next best thing. No runs off the bat. And pretty threatening there early on from Graham Hume. Yeah, good start from Warringstown's Premier Seymour. And we have somebody of great experience now being 
in, in tandem with Ben Snell, young fella who's come through the system here and has had a really good year. For the, this is the first year really where he's been entrusted with the new ball and he's performed really, really well. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be nervous. Uh, an Irish Senior Cup final at his age is, is a big deal. But there's player coach James Cameron Dow who'll be just encouraging him, keeping him calm. And it'll be interesting to see how he goes today. Yeah, good to see from James Cameron Dow. They're a very experienced player coach here at the club and he's in it mid on there just to keep an eye on Ben probably have a word with him if things don't go perfectly just to keep him right and as you say Cal he's hitting a bit of form Ben Snell the other day don't see too many eight wicket holes in, in cricket these days and that's a, a representative game he's played in there an emerging game for the sort of under he's, under the international level and he's taking eight wickets so I mean you don't do that if you're not on your game he's a very talented young prospect we're very hopeful for him and there's no coincidence he's pat both at mid off and james cameron down at mid on a quick run and again a few heads and hands from the warringstown fielders i think there was a single there but Lazar maybe a little bit back in his haunches there and had the scamper through on a direct hit may have seen a Bit of a disaster for the skipper. <laughs> Michael Hogan, always good to get off off the, the zero, so he'll he'll breathe a sigh of relief. But a good start from Ben Snell. Oh, bit of lift there. Well bowled. Hit the pitch. Just took off a little bit. Took the glove, I think, of Vizar. Didn't go in the air, just kept it down and runs it down. It's a fine leg and he takes a single. Yeah, good start from Snell. What about bowling to the two left-handers here? You know, he's got two lefties up front. Um... Just in the NCU cricket, there's not not a great deal of left-handers about, so he'll be used to bowling, certainly at right-hander openers. So just that change of angle to bowl the left-handers, and I suppose it's a little bit better facing two of them instead of one and one Yeah, what will stand him good today is a very good wrist position when you watch. He hits the seam. Just getting a little bit straight. Two's the call. Good decision to turn that down. Just a little bit straight from Ben Snell, but good length. Nicely tucked off a set by Michael Hogan. Warning's time with two slips on a gully alley. Hmm. No third man. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice, just hitting that good length. Definitely a wee bit of movement there, and that's probably why Skipper Thompson has got... There's two slips and a gully in, attacking straight away. Not worried about, happy to take an edge if it goes for four. That'll be fair enough if you lose a couple of those and get a wicket. You'll take that all day long. So two slips, a gully, got a point. Just bringing a man in here now. Little stoppage in play. Mm -hmm. Leinster captain has called for some assistance. Yeah, maybe that just wrap on the gloves there a couple of balls ago, maybe. Doesn't look to be too much of a problem. Maybe just a change of gloves or something like that. No injury problems for the skipper. And it's lofted. James Cameron Dow settling on mid on. And it's the first wicket. Ben Snell with the Leinster captain to the Lillie of the Warringstown supporters. Leinster three for one. Yeah, had right, a character shot there really. Lofted that straight in the air. No timing whatsoever. He hasn't timed the ball in the first two overs. And has just tried to hit himself out of it. And has not got the hold of it. Straight up in the air. And took three catches in the senior cup final last week in mid on. And no better man to come under that. James Cameron die. Settled under it, 
and took the catch with real ease and the first wicket falls and this is exactly what Warringstown were looking for I'll see it again now Ben Snell hitting a lovely length and Bill Evans are trying to take him on but again didn't time it Cameron Dye settles under it takes the catch and the tears go up from the Warringstown supporters first wicket gone at three The new man in at three for Leinster is Manil Patel. He's been their main man with the bat this year in the Leinster League and in the Irish, Irish Senior Cup. So, big weight on his shoulders now. A wicket falling early. It's exactly what Warring's time are looking for. Graham Hume to continue. That is a superb leave. There's only two types of leave in yeah. cricket. Good ones and bad ones, and that's an exceptionally good one from, from Young Hogan. But this is what Graham Hume will do, particularly with that early wicket in the second over. He's going to ratchet up that pressure. He's just going to attack the top of off stump. It's going to be a real examination for, for Michael Hogan. I always used to love leaves like that. <laughs> in the field, I always thought it was good leave, good leave. Missing the stumps by inches, good leave. Yeah, it's got into the gap. Beats the fielders. I really like that. That's excellent cricket. Taking a step down. Not allowing Graham Hume to settle on that length. He's just going to not allow it. Really good for Michael Hogan. Very important for Leinster. That they don't just... Pat the ball back for the first 10 overs. This is the power play, don't forget. First 10 overs in a 50 over game. Only two fielders allowed outside the circle. So that's the that's the game you play and you can't lose too many wickets but at the same time you can't just dot it up. And That's good cricket from Hogan. Ross Allen. Sorry, Morgan Topping. Backward point. Very excite another exciting young talent. Come through the the system at Warringstown, uh, fresh off 150 in the NCU Senior Challenge Cup final last week. Yeah, very special player. Just come on leaps and bounds in this, particularly in this season. Cemented himself in the interprovincial team as well. Bit of width, not time from him. That's the first ball he's really bowled. A little bit wide. Hogan did throw his hands at it. Controlled it well though, but can't beat the field on the offside. Just for people who maybe don't know the Warringstown ground, over to our left here, you'll know it well. Large sort of slope up to the pavilion. And it does hold the ball up a good bit. You know, you think you've cracked it to the boundary and then it just holds up a little bit up that hill. There you just see number 71, Jonathan Bush, stalwart here at Warringstown Cricket Club. The silkiest hands I've ever come across as a wicket keeper. You just don't hear the ball hitting those gloves. Played a few times for Ireland. Great to see him back, donning his beloved navy and red. Yeah, great to see Bushy back on, on the field here. As you say, great pair of hands. Just one of those guys that this morning's time through and through. I mean, been playing for years, and it's great to see him back enjoying his cricket. I don't know how long he can keep going for, but but I'm glad he's out there. <laughs> he's he's a competitor and just loves his cricket. I think probably if you ask them, he's there by necessity. <laughs> I think um, so. But uh, you know, like I say, the. the, the Warringstown have done. They've had an exceptional season this year. A lot of change, a lot of flux, and a lot of in it. You know, when you change the column, Morgan Toppy and Graham Hume at various stages in and out of your side, playing rep cricket. Um, it's been a great opportunity to blood some other younger cricketers, um, and it's just good to see so much young talent on display here in both sides. You know, I see Mark Tongue there. Um, 
uh, Tristan De Beer. There's a lot of young talent in the display. Hopefully they have a good day out. Two slips in the gully again for Ben Snell to the right hand. Patel. Yeah, she's moved on to five off those three overs, so as I say. Ringstown will be delighted with their start. No runs coming, no convincing shots really. And of course, that wicket off a fairly poor shot from the captain. And Ben Snell to continue. Right on the mark. Very solidly in behind it. Played late under his eyes. They always worry maybe for a team captain when you're throwing the ball to a young bowler opening up in an Irish senior cup final. Always worry about those first few balls, but in his first seven here he's been very good. And as I've said, he bowls one outside the off stump a half volley. And Mona Patel doesn't miss out. And that ball goes up that hill I was talking about. No problem in getting to the boundary though. That's the first ball we've seen. Beautiful Wade shot. And a beautiful shot from Patel. Just width. The key for me there, just too much width. Allowed Patel to get the hands through the ball. And it sped up the hill. The first boundary of the cup final. And a nice reply. Well bowled. Yeah, that is well bold. Good to see him coming back. As I was, that's what I was just talking about. A few four balls, and suddenly the, the action goes a little bit. But as you say he's got a good repeatable action there, and comes back. And I always like to see a bowler come back after being hit for four and bowling back to their strengths and their basics. And there's a wicket. Nicked off to Jonathan Bush. Those silky hands we talked about in the big wicket of Patel. Boundary followed up by a wicket. Leinster in early trouble at nine now for two. And that's terrific stuff from Snell. Extracting a little bit of bounce from the deck. And drawing Patel into the shot. A little bit close for a cut. And he has nicked that through. And as we mentioned, Johnny Bush is about as clean as it gets behind the stumps. No mistake. From Bush, and the second wicket falls on nine. Mono Patel has gone for that solitary boundary. This is exactly what Warrington would have wanted. We're now into the, the, the engine room of the Leinster batting order. Joey Carroll, an imposing figure, strolling down the hill. An interesting thing for me, having won the toss, and there, there must have been a bit of knowledge in the Leinster change room that the ball's going to do something early on. I think it wouldn't be unfair to say that there's been two very poor shots in the first five overs. You know, both, you know, one playing at a ball that wasn't there, and the next one playing at, you know, a ball back of a length, wide edge off stump. Yeah, two poor dismissals from the Leinster point of view. But ben, young Ben Snell, smile on his face, he'll not be complaining. Absolutely. He's picked up his first two wickets, wicket in each of his first two overs here. As we talked about at the toss, if you're going to win the toss and bat first, got to set a platform. Got to set a platform. Yes, we're saying that they've got to score runs in the power play. There's two ways of going about it. You don't have to gung ho, but losing wickets in the power play when you've won the toss and batted. Well, Warringstown will be looking at this. You know, fresh conditions. We're still just in the fourth over. Ball's still new, and if Warringstown can nick off one or two more, they will most certainly be in the pound seat. And that's the conundrum now for the two Leinster batters, even more so now, two down. They stick in now for the rest of this power play. I mean, with Snell coming into Carroll. You can just see the body language in, in the Warringstown side already now. This is exactly what they had, they had hoped for. Leinster. With Carroll and Hogan. Got to get a partnership going here. Joey 
Joey Carroll, very good player. He's played for the Ireland Wolves, the Ireland Day side. Played for Leinster Lightning. Well in behind those first two balls. Not against the fourth over. Leinster certainly just struggling a little now. Nine for two. Good to see. Just at the start of play there, a good crowd coming in from Leinster. Obviously, they've got to travel a little bit today from from the Dublin area up to Warringstown. But good to see a real good crowd coming up from Leinster and what is, as we talked about earlier, a big, big day for Irish cricket. And it's good to see a crowd and a little bit of sunshine coming out. Obviously, the Warringstown locals are here, um, but good to see a crowd coming up from Leinster. Yeah, look, it's a wonderful day. It's, a, it's obviously home advantage for Warringstown. I played in an Irish Cup final previously against Marion here at the Lawn. Um, so it's certainly a very special day for both clubs concerned. And it's great to see Leinster so well supported. Lots of young boys and girls up. Uh, uh, a very strong club, very well run in, in Leinster. And it's great to see you know, two clubs with that tradition competing in the final. Oh, it's well fielded, very well fielded. A nice shot from Hogan. An excellent piece of fielding. Pablo to there at mid off. No better man. Yeah, Pat has joined Warringstown this year. You would know a little bit about Pat. Played previously at your own club, Ali at Carrick Fergus. I know Pat very well, and one of the greatest athletes I've ever seen. Um, just around the ground, he was. He was like later. I remember the first day he ran between the wickets, and he thought. Well, what have we got here? He was, he was like lightning. Well, bold Graham Hume just deciding just to put Michael Hogan onto the back foot. He'll run the third man. Yeah, I think it was well played, actually, by Michael Hogan. He read with the ball, just up on his toes, just dropped it down. That's maybe the change in mindset there. Probably if they were on that mindset of going for shots, he might have tried to take that on, maybe played a pull shot. Just rides with it and runs it down. The third man. Yeah, just getting back to Pat Bota. As I say, I saw him that first day and he ran a two. And the guy at the other end was <laughs> halfway down the track on the way back. And we're thinking, well, what have we got here? But yes, one of the best runners between wickets I've ever seen in, in the field. Just like a gazelle. Well played, Joey Carroll. Just tucked off his pads. Pitch at the moment doesn't seem to be doing an awful lot. There is a little in it, as you would imagine. And, you know, batting first, Seamers bowling reasonably good areas, but no demons in the pitch. No, not really. I mean, obviously, when when you start a mat, any innings, you would like to think it's going to do a little bit for the first five or six overs, especially with the quality of bowler that we've got on show here. Interesting field change on a deep square leg. There's a big, big appeal and he's, and gone. he's gone. He's got him. Hogan doesn't look happy, but the field change seems to have worked. The uncertainty of the man at deep square leg perhaps just meant that he was a little leaden footed. And Graham Hume Nicks off Michael Hogan, who walks off disappointed. Warringstown well on top. Leinster 11 for 3. Yeah, Michael Hogan, again, a little bit of a shake of the head there. He doesn't think he got a touch on that. Graham Hume was certain. There wasn't much from behind the stumps in terms of the appeal. It was definitely coming from the bowler. He was very confident. But the umpire has gone the way of the bowling side. Hogan's gone. Another catch for Bush. Just see it again here now. Make your mind up. Oh, he just fished at it. Again, look at the keeper there. No real no real appeal from Johnny Bush. He sort of followed the bowler a little bit, but... Well, I think if you have a look at this again, what you'll see is that Michael Hogan plays well away from himself. And there's no... You know, it, yeah, you're thinking it could have hit the shoulder, could have hit the back pad. But when you look at that, that has to have been a feather off the bat. Everybody up. But the most important thing is the finger of Roley Black went up. And Warringstown captain Greg Greg Thompson will be absolutely delighted here because arguably Leinster's best two players, Gareth Delaney now outstanding, Irish International joins Joey Carroll after only four overs mm. to face the new ball. And that's exactly what, what the hope was to get getting the good players in. Obviously it can, can go the other way. Good players can can obviously do what they do and play well. But you've got the opportunity with a little bit of movement still in the pitch. 
to see the back of them. And obviously, if we've talked about, they can't really go too hard at it here. They've got to set themselves in, bed in here, because three down within the first five overs, all the pressure on the men from Leinster. Well, Warringstown will have, you know, very much in the front of their minds, Gareth Delaney last year in the Irish Cup was <laughs> man of the match in the game that knocked Warringstown out at uh, Ralph Mines. He played beautifully to score 90 odd. So a very good player, and they'll be very keen to see the back of him. Definitely, it's actually great to see him back. A um, little bit of injury problems there. Missed the, missed the Ireland tour over in Scotland there, unfortunately. So it's great to see him back, back playing again. There we go, straight away. He's on the front foot. Playing that on the top of the bounce. It's good to see him back. Obviously missed the T20 qualifiers in Edinburgh with a broken wrist. And during the warm-up there, he had it strapped up. It looked to be his left wrist. So, top hand. So, it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Very fine fine cricketer. Great young man. All of a big role to play in today's final. Just be one, I think, on the boundary. A bit of a wayward throw. Only the single. So another successful over for Waringstown. Those three wickets have gone down in the first five overs. Today's match officials here, very experienced umpires, Mark Hawthorne and Rolly Black. Yeah, Mark Hawthorne from the NCU, Rolly Black from Brady in the Northwest, two outstanding umpires, umpired all over the world. On the ICC Elite panel. So we now have Ben Snell, who will get the ball to duck around a little bit off the seam, pulling to Gareth Delaney. I think the Ireland badge becalmed there under the white plaster. <laughs> Always like to see that. Nailed the Delaney. Yeah, good cricket there. Gonna go for four. He just leant on that. Didn't hit it too hard, just leant on it. Good timing. Beats the man at mid off. And even that athlete we mentioned, Pat Boda, can't come around. Beautiful shot. On. Ben Snell strain full again, and as my old coach John Slanky always said, show the bowler the maker's name in the bat. <laughs> and Gareth Delaney, just a wonderful example of that timing on the outfield here. And there's a slight slope down towards us here, Ali. That ball will always run away all day long, and it'll only get quicker. And well, and immediately after that shot, a change, not in field placement as such. And the keeper, Johnny Bush, has decided. Wants to keep Gareth Delaney back in the crease. So he comes up to the stumps, gets a helmet, goes right up to the stumps. Just trying to keep Delaney back in the crease. Right on it. From Snell. You know, if I was at mid on or mid off, I'd be just saying to Ben Snell, if you're gonna if you're gonna veer, veer on the full side. Mm -hmm. Um has a wee tendency occasionally just to veer on the shorter side. And Johnny Bush coming up well, certainly just any movement that there is, you know, Darth Delaney will have stepped out of his crease there to try and to get any, or any early seam movement. So uh, Johnny Bush trying to add to that pressure. And just even a wee bit of psychology there, maybe from, from Johnny Bush, just to say I'm up the stumps here. And the bowler then automatically bowls a little bit fuller. Yeah, it's often a two-edged two sword. Some bowlers like it, some bowlers don't. 
you know, I think the danger is sometimes when your keeper's up that you don't bowl the ball, you don't you, you don't hit yeah. the pitches hard, just in case you, you fear of getting one wrong. But the one thing I'll give Ben Snell huge credit for, ever since I've known him, he is unstinting belief in himself and self-belief. And, he, you know, a great bounce-back ability, and he'll not let a boundary ball affect him in any way, shape or form. So, a um, little discussion there between James Cameron Down and Greg Thompson. Perhaps they have a grand plan, Ali. Yeah, good piece of feeling. Backward there. Backward point. Keeps that down to one. Yeah, that's where we need the old hundred with the mic <laughs> on, the, on the skipper. We can hear their plans and, and then we could seem really all well, cognitive and we know exactly what they're doing and what we've got at the minute. We've just got to guess what, what uh, Greg and maybe Jimmy were talking about there and what the plans may be. The plans have been working so far though. But as you know, cricket's a game of momentum. Momentum certainly with Warrington at the moment. But it'll not only take a partnership here between Carl and Delaney. Absolutely, we've seen the quality of both of these players at all levels in the game here in Ireland. Both have played certainly in their pro. Carl Delaney, of course. Many caps for Ireland. It's definite ability. Right here, and as you say, just a partnership can certainly change momentum and thoughts. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Two very experienced players. You know, you look at Gareth, he's not only played for Ireland, he's played at Leicestershire, he's played in the Caribbean Premier League. He's you know, this will not phase him in terms of pressure. And two very hard hitting players. So they'll not be they'll not be worried at the fact that after seven overs or sorry, after six overs, Leinster are 17 for three. A little bit of rebuilding to be done. Absolutely, and possibly in that over we saw maybe the way Delaney Cam played. No, no big shots, he just played that four he scored. Just lent on it and pure timing. That's maybe the way they're going to go here. If they can time the ball through the field, they make it the odd boundary, but maybe just to knock it around for ones and twos at the minute. Keep those wickets in hand and reassess maybe and at the end of the par play and just have a chat between each other and see where they're going to go at each five sort of ten overs intervals. Ian Graham Hume just probing on that length but Gareth Lillian not afraid to throw the hands through the ball. As you say, Cal, you've played in a few of these, these finals. One more than you've lost. One for Cliftonville, I'm right, and the rest for Warringstown, is that correct? I lost here, playing for Cliftonville against the very good North County side. They were an outstanding team. Cliftonville, the leg side there, it'll be just a single, I think. Yeah, just one. So, one more to Delaney. Yeah, they're special days. And ultimately, you know, we, we won a game at Brady. Um, when we when when Warringstown beat uh, the Hills in a very low scoring encounter, uh, in fact, I think we only were chasing 120 or 130, and we were we were winning it quite comfortably. And then all of a sudden there was a little wobble. You know, I think we won by four wickets or three wickets in the end. So you're always in the game. You got to stay in the fight. Yeah, I think it's a really good point you make there in terms of finals. They are different. This was just a normal league game or. Or something like that at 18 for three you might be thinking well we're on top here but we've got this done finals you can never really do that because momentum changes and you start to think about the trophy a little bit well, well i hope warringstown learned a lesson from the the cup final last week uh, the, the ncu cup final when they bought it first at 350 and reduced your own beloved carry fergus i think the 130 for six and i think by all intents and purposes they thought the game was over oh, oh. chinese cut from Joey Carroll, and despite Ben Snell's best efforts, that's another boundary. But as I was saying, you know, at 130 for six, I think everybody in the ground thought the game was over. And then CJ van der Valt and, and Ben Cave and a few other guys just started to play a few shots, and before you knew it, you'd have thought with, with five or six overs to go, actually, 
you know, it was very much back in the mix again. So you would be hopeful that Warringstown have learned their lesson from that. That the game's not over until the tenth where it's, or the innings isn't over until the tenth where it's taken. The game's not over until the ball crosses the boundary. So a lot of cricket left in today's game, and no doubt these two guys are are fantastic players for Leinster. Yeah, and I actually spoke to a few of the Warringstown boys after the game last week, and I think they've taken that from the game to say, well, okay, let's just play the game. Play the game as it is and not think too far ahead. Thinking, oh, this is happening, this is happening, this is going to happen. Just just play the game as it is. And yes, 22 for three. But I think we've been involved in cricket long enough now. One partnership can change whole momentum. And suddenly you've been in a good position. Sometimes it's better not to be in that good position and lose it. Absolutely. 100%. Mother cricket, I think we call it. Yeah. You have to, the, the game will will come at you if you don't treat it with respect. So um, there's a, an awful lot of cricket going today's game. And Gareth Delaney and Joey Carroll have certainly becalmed the situation from Leinster point of view. Yeah, just picking up the odd boundary here and there. A little bit of luck and that last over. They are starting to tick the scoreboard over and as we say, just hanging in there. Change the momentum of the game. Ring's turn on a high at the moment. My father always told me you earn your luck. <laughs> you know, so, and, I've, and again, the, the guys have dug in. And you'll need a little bit of luck today, I would say. Both sides will require it. Very often that's the difference between winning and losing in cup finals, small margins. And that's the other thing I'm talking about, about cup finals. You'll always look back and say, what, that? what if there and what if that? League games, can I just let it go? Cup finals off. We'd have got that wicket if we'd have got that the season. It might have changed everything. You know, so um, those little 50, 50 50 decisions go your way. Change in the field. Slip has come out the short catching cover, James McCollum. So perhaps Warring's Town have felt that they've seen Graham or Gareth Delaney just play a little bit on the up. And perhaps they're just hedging their bets. Just the other thing I noticed here, mid off, mid on, swapped overnight. That boat has moved to, to mid off. A little bit of extra, extra pace on the off side. It looks like Delaney's playing towards that area. There it is again, but straight to the man at that new position. I think it's quite a good position that. Might just place a little bit of doubt. Hmm. But this is the beauty of the game, isn't it? Now, the, the, the chances are that if it places a little bit of doubt in Garth in his head, he just hangs the bat at it and he nicks it, and it goes through the gap where second slip was, and everybody scratches his head and said, What did you do that for? What did you do that for? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not going to mention here, Cal, but I see Pat Bode gone up the umpire there with the ball. Next time we're on comedy, we might have a chat about that, about changing the ball. <laughs> a lot of discussion about that in the last seven days. Well bowled. And again, that ball just hit on the up to James McCollum at short cover. On, what, he takes it on the first bounce. Good cricket all around. Yeah, I'm not afraid to put the shot away anyway. Garth he hasn't, he hasn't decided to just play defensively on those drives. Still playing them. Going through with his shot. I've no doubt that Warren's Town skipper want to see the back of him because he hits the ball an awful long way once he gets in. He just recognise that he just thinks that ball maybe just hasn't come on to him. You know, but Gareth and he's 7 off 13. If he stays in for 20 overs, he will most certainly make that up. He'll not panic about the strike rate at this stage. I'm glad to say the clouds are they're high. There's a, there's a little breeze which will blow any potential showers hopefully quickly past us and we'll get a full day's cricket here at the lawn. And there it is. Up east just in between the two fielders on the offside but as we say he's not putting the shot away. Only up. Gets away with that one. Yeah and that was very much in the vicinity of James McCollum at short cover. Ben Snell must keep just persevering on that length. He's already got the captain hit, trying to hit it, caught, trying to hit over the top. 
almost had it. Gareth Delaney caught in the trap at short cover. Well bowled again from Ben Snell. And that brings us to the end of the eighth over. I'm going to take my leave for a few overs. I'm delighted to say that coming in to the Combox Exercise International, Alan Lewis. Thank you very much, Ali. Lovely to be here. Wonderful ground. Always enjoyed my trips to the lawn. Kyle, wonderful place to bat. Just wonderful place to play. Yeah, I've always felt the wickets here have been good cricket wickets. There's there's something in it for the bowler, both seamer and spinner. But the ball comes on, so if you bat properly, you'll score runs. And you'll know yourself. You know Big Alan Nelson. Nelly takes great pride in the pitches and has done an enormous amount of work along with the ground staff, Alan Waite, Ross Waite, and everybody else involved to, to get us going here today. Well, I think we've already seen that, really, with... The wickets that have fallen today, it's interesting watching Snell, he's on the back of eight wickets during the week in a youth into pro, kind of bangs it into the pitch, dragged Monat Patel into that injudicious shot, but there is a little bit for the bowler and there's, it's a, re, it's a good cricket wicket, it has to be said, I think if you bat well here, you're going to you're gonna do well. Injudicious, Louis? Injudicious, yes, it was a little That's bit good. wide, I think early on. Mm -hmm. I think you need to be a little bit more watchful. Bowl it. Got a little bit of that extra bounce, but I think we've already kind of seen in the short period that he's been in, uh, in a sense, whether it's commentator's curse or not, but just the amount of time Delaney has to play the ball. At. Again, that full face. So it's going to be a real interesting passage in the match. And I, your, yourself and Ali were talking about it. And, and again, we've, you know, when we think of the World Cup qualifiers, you know, and it's something that Waringstown have. They've been winners, and you know, even if you think about, you know, through the duration of this competition, oppositions that were playing were in winning positions, but they're playing Waringstown. Yeah, you know yourself, Lou. There's tradition, you know, and there's an expectation, and when you've won them, and Waringstown, we 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 have won. You know, we certainly since 2015 we've won. Three out of four years there. Um, Pembroke beat us in the final at the Hills. Well beat us that day. And that, but that's what you find. But there's an expectation here to win these things. Leinster haven't won it in 2009. I think for the one and only time, we'll be wanting to bring it back to Rathmines, no doubt. Well, I've heard a rumour that certainly one of the major participants in that is in the ground. Played a lot of franchise cricket around the world. Remember the name? You remember the name? I remember the name. Well, he's in the ground today, Carlos Braithwaite. Had great times in Leinster. You know, certainly many of the boys were telling they telling me they've been in regular contact with him, always takes an interest in how the club does. And they've been a club very much in transition. You know, Jared Chetty kind of has taken over as coach of the setup. They were in a bit of the doldrums five years ago, and they've been in a gradual building phase. And, uh, you know, they've beaten some strong opposition to get to this stage. Certainly, I, remember, I saw, I went, and went to watch them in a great game of cricket against CI. And, you know, I think part of their rationale, you know, their real strength is in their, actually, in their bowling attack. And they kind of feel if they can get any sort of a score and interesting, you were talking about those games with Ali. You know, if you get amongst the wickets early, you might be chasing 170, 200. It's not easy. I'm, still, I'm just watching here, you know, Graham Hume has tried to you know, bang one in short there and the ball didn't carry through to the keepers. There's not a lot of pace in the pitch. Fairly, pretty much a feather bed. Well, probably a wee bit understandable, isn't it, Kyle? With the weather we've had this summer, it really has been. It's, I'm sure Alan had trials and tribulations this week trying to keep the wicket dry and all think, those sorts of things. Well, I can tell you that Alan Waite certainly, I think, spends... I dare say he probably spends 21 out of the 24 hours a day at, at Warring's time. And Big Nelly looks a bit 80 now. I promise he's not. He's only about, you know, he's, he's in his mid 50s, but <laughs> they put some time and effort in. They have such pride in the place and such pride in, in hosting games like this. And uh, they obviously want to put on a show. Um, and they want to show off the club. The club invests very, very heavily in, in its facilities and in its ground and in its infrastructure. And there's no doubt that, that that's part of the heritage here. And, 
part of the tradition and there's big plans for the future and uh, exciting times ahead for the club. I kind of think that's a, you know, it, it it's something since, funnily enough, in our own club, YMCA, we've had our own trials and tribulations, but Graham Ford has been coaching with us for the last 18 months and he kind of, you know, having not really been exposed as much to the club game, obviously, as the, as the national coach, but, you know, he's kind of seen the work that not not just us, but other clubs do, like Jared's coaching, Jeremy Bray's in the hills, Andre Both is in Balbriggan. So that's the kind of shift of change that a lot of clubs are using their own resources to develop the Snells, you know, these types of people coming through the game. And, you know, that's been, in a sense, the history. You know, that's where you and I belong. That's where we, in a sense, belong. We, we came through that system. That's a good shot by Joe Carroll. Whether that's going to make the boundary, it certainly looks as if it will. And that's a good shot from Carroll, short and wide from Snell. Maybe he's just tiring a wee bit, who knows. But he's bowled well here this morning, young Snell. He has. Now, Ali made a comment earlier on about the slope. There's this slope. Up. We talked about the ball slowing going up the hill. It, it defies gravity, you know. The ball doesn't slow going up that hill. You think it should, but it really doesn't. And Joey Carroll's been really good. He's played it very watchfully. He's played the ball under his eyes, and he's been really patient. He just waited for the bad ball, and he's just got his just desserts. Great cricket. Well, with that in mind, I've got to ask you a question. Now, you've played a lot of your career here. <laughs> How many run-outs have you seen of that? <laughs> Come on. Uh, I promise you, deceptively <laughs> few. What you, the only time that it really, from my point of view, impacts, if there's a bit of wet weather and you hit one early and you think, yeah, it's four, and it bounces maybe two yards before the boundary, end of the hill, it can sit in the hill. I think possibly the home in Donna might be <laughs> responsible for more run-outs than you'll see here at the lawn. That's well fielded by Adam Dennison. He's red hot there in the covers. Has been all his career, really, hasn't he? Well, you see, you've Johnny Bush keeping wicket, but uh, for a period of time, Adam Dennison has had to keep wicket at the club. And what you've just seen, we miss him dearly in the outfield. He's extremely quick. He's a short fella. He's very low to the ground. There's low centre of gravity. He's a wonderful fielder. Changing the field here. Deep cover. Now out. Just maybe a sense that Ben Snell's just starting to tar. Might be time to allow him to go and rest and relax a little bit in the outfield. I get the sense that might happen at the end of this over. No. Yeah. You've James Mitchell. Or while you've got Leinster under pressure, do you bring on Pat Botha, your overseas off spinner, Greg Thompson, who's probably our leading wicket taker this year. What would you do, Lee? Well, That's short, and that's gone the distance. And that's into the gardens here. At Wearingstown, I'm sure there's many collected in there, but that was short. And probably, as you say, Kyle, you could s clearly see Schnell was tiring. And that's short, and Joe Carroll's latched onto that very quickly. Very strong player, Joe Carroll. Watchful player. And that's an excellent shot from him. But going back to that point that you made about... Like, obviously, Mitchell has been picked on the side. I understand there was an element of conjecture, you know, who might be in, who mightn't be in, but you have to think in conditions like this that Mitchell has to be showing his spurs, you would kind of think, at this stage. Well, we're about to see him, Lee. Graham Hume is coming out of the attack, and James Mitchell's going to replace him. And, you know, he's a former Ireland under-19 international, has a tendency to bowl, he bowls full. He generally nips the ball back to the right-hander. Um, but has struggled a little bit for confidence so far this year, so what better opportunity for you to come to the party and make a big impact now? And, uh, you know, we're outside the power play, so there'd be the confidence to, to have a few more guys providing protection for him. But what we've just seen there, we talked about momentum. You know, with two boundaries in the last over, and all of a sudden, 33 for three, you're just not under the same amount of pressure. Definitely not. And there's nothing like wickets in the power play like we've looked at it over the years. Obviously, this is, in a sense, different levels. The principles are still the same, but if you take three wickets in the power play, you know, at any juncture, you know, if Leinster to lose another wicket, they're going to be under considerable pressure. But the only thing about this Leinster team, and again, I've watched them closely, you know, in the province, they... Chetty is a big man for kind of watched contributions when they've been 100 for six and another comes in at eight, gets 100, you know, so they've 
I think it's one of the kind of fabrics, and that's interesting that you say that. And right on cue, half volley is dispatched through the covers by Gareth Delaney. Yeah, a loosener from James Mitchell. Wide half volley. And you can't bowl those to players of the calibre of Joey Carroll and Gareth Delaney. And even with the man sweeping the cover boundary, the ball is raced down the slope. And automatically, the bowler's under pressure. A little bit of movement. Yeah, interesting leg side field too. Obviously, he's bowling to 6-3 leg side, deep square, long leg, mid on. And again, if you were Gareth Delaney, you know, again, you'd be looking to expose that, those type of areas, keep the scoreboard ticking. You know, in a sense, these two really just have to bat time, don't they, Kyle? Yeah, you know, I think Greg Thompson will be looking. He set a fairly defensive field here. He's kept himself in it slip. But if you're Gareth Delaney, you're seeing there's a single anywhere in the leg side, really. Um, so Greg Thompson hedging his bets a little in the hope that he, James Mitchell can prize out either Delaney or, or Carroll. We would always say, Louis, when you're feeling, add two on. You know, so even with a little partnership, adding two on, there's just what we're saying. Single on the leg side, tuck to fine leg. Easy single to bounce now. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting kind of situation because even at international level for Ireland, we've seen Harry Tector regularly coming in at 16 for two. And he kind of, in a sense, knowing him and talking to him, views it as opportunity a lot of time at the wicket. And again, these two will be, in a sense, Gareth obviously being the international player, Joey, Joey Carroll, the experienced overseas, who's played a lot of cricket in Ireland. He's been around one or two clubs, but uh, I think he's back in his own sense where, in a sense, he's his, at his most comfortable. And uh, again, with the structure that's been put in place with Jared, he was only speaking to me there six weeks ago. He's really enjoying his cricket. Here's a question for you. Yeah. So Ben Snell will beautifully picked up a couple of wickets, went for a few in his last over. The art is always to take the bowler over one over earlier. So the question for me would be, 25 to say if you want to hit me over the top come on let's see because we know that Gareth Delaney looks to take the spinners down but what you're really saying is come on well it's a no different is it at this stage like we've got sweepers both sides now on the 10th over Leinster are three down like from Waringstown's point of view another wicket or two here it's it's giving you 50 runs effectively I'm, I'm in your camp like I think you know mid on mid off in okay Gareth off you go interesting change I just wonder, is there, you know, I know certainly from being within the, 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 the confines of the national setup, Gareth Delaney will look to take down the slow left arm. He will sweep slog. So the dice has been cast. Ross Allen's going to come on at the clear road end. Gareth Delaney going to be hitting two relatively short boundaries, 70 metres to ourselves here. If you're Gareth Delaney, do you have the, the nerve? Are you going to take you want to take Ross Allen on early on in the piece? I don't necessarily think he has to. Uh, but again, it's just one of the... Like, I think, like, obviously, if you're sweeping, Gareth Delaney is a destructive sweeper. You know, he sweeps for four and six. Invariably, he's sweeping for six. So I think... You know, if I were in Gareth Delaney's shoes, I think you've got to show a wee bit. It was interesting, we were talking before the game and you were talking about, you know, we're bowled out in the 46, 40, losing 24 balls. You know, when, yes, you can play with attitude. She's a bit of turn there already from Ross Allen. Someone I've kept an eye on, Ross Allen. Good cricket. Bowls with a very good action, strong. Well, that was most certainly a little bit of turn. Morgan topping it slip. That's that perhaps changes it because it's only a fifty-eight boundary, a fifty-eight meter boundary square that we get on the leg side. So the thing for me, and it's down the hill. So the golfer in me, Louis, would say if it's fifty-eight meters down the hill, it's probably only forty-eight meters. 
That would be true. <laughs> but again, how many times have you seen on these small grounds people hole out thinking, oh, that's easy, I can hit it over there, no problem. Mm -hmm. Brilliant piece of feeling from Adam Dennison. Just as we talked about low to the ground, I think, Louis, that might have just gone past me at a significant rate of knots. Oh, I'd say definitely past you. <laughs> Good hand from Adam Dennison. Don't Important. think you like to get your trousers too dirty, really. You weren't one of those kind of gazelles and extra cover it was diving here, there and everywhere. More of a giraffe, Lou, <laughs> not a gazelle. Uh, oh, what's that film with my kids? You know, Madagascar, what do you call a giraffe in there? Melman. Is it, it going to be Melman. your name? <laughs> Melman McCollum. That is a, that is a ring. ring. That is yeah. a ring to it. Melman yeah. McCollum. Uh, he just pushed it into the pitch, Garth, didn't he? He's read that and caught it. But well, well feed up with James Mitchell on the I don't sense you'd be bowling to too many sweepers on the boundary with the opposition 38 for three, would you? I always liked the three men out in the left side, Lou. Yeah, I always believed All that. All the time? Uh, not always. Depending on the batter, I, would, I wouldn't have a... I, the Garth Delaney would have a long on, like I wouldn't have a middle on it. No, okay. I don't think so. That's well bowled. Tall action. Gets points. And a good start from Ross Allen. A single off the over. Well, the interesting thing, Kyle, is he's got some turn. Mm -hmm. So that's always going to kind of, in a sense, have you on your guard. And there is that, as you see, bowls from tall, so he's going to get that little bit of bounce. And there has been that in this pitch so far. So, you know, it's going to be something that I think will be there throughout just with the conditions, the climatic conditions that we've had. See, the interesting thing for me here is something that affected, you know, I watched Waring Stein in the Challenge Cup final last week. And you've Greg Thompson who bowls, you know, he's a very clever off spinner, and you've Pat both who bowls off spin. The, the difficulty I had last week was that we bowled just off spin from both ends, and I felt that we weren't asking different questions of the batters enough. And obviously, going straight to Ross Allen now, you know, Greg, I think, will have to be cognizant of the fact that he'll not want to have himself and Pat both are bowling. Although they're, they're, they're slightly different in terms of what they do, but as a batter, you want off spinners bowling at you from both ends because you get in, you can line it up, and you can hit it then. So, interesting to see where Warrington go from here. That struck beautifully. But again, well fielded by Adam Dennison. He really is a top class fielder. He's probably, and I remember when we played with Hansi Cronje, remember at that time, like John T. Rhodes averages 23 with the bat for me, he averages 65. Mm. It's a run out, it's a brilliant piece of fielding. He's got me 20 before he starts. Yeah. And it's so, so important. And it's it's beautiful to watch really high quality fielders. James uh, Mitchell, that's a better length from James Mitchell. He, he just has a tendency to go uh, you know, too full, very full. He just has to back himself to get on off stump. And where he gets batters is if he gets it going, he just nips it back and then his change up is the one that just goes straight on. So he, you know, but for me, length is the key for him. Changing the feed. Now Greg Thompson's come out of slip um, in the mid wicket. So just looking to maybe just build a little bit of scoreboard pressure. Again, there you are, Joey Carroll, just feeding that in the way on the leg side. And as you well know, maybe if these two are in five overs time, just tend to see a score just accumulate. And uh, really, with little or no pressure now, no slip. As we say, sweepers both sides, mid on, mid off up. Yeah, James Mitchell's job here has got to be just to build pressure. He's just got to pull tight line, tight length, and, and almost, as we would have done back this, a slow bowler forced the batsman into a silly mistake. He doesn't have to go looking for wickets. He's just got to do that. He's got to hit the top of off stump. He's got to ring field, cut off the boundaries, play the patience game. Wide ball there from... James Mitchell just seemed to be just not right at the crease there. First extra delivery. I think that Waringstown have bowled today. We're into the 13th over here. So they've bowled with decent discipline, Kyle. You'd have to say that. And obviously got wickets, which in a sense is the greatest run save. And it's interesting. The skipper's 
moved himself into mid-wicket now to try and just cut up a dab on the leg side. Which is probably a message in itself of perhaps the confidence he may or may not have in his bowler. You know, the worrying sign is attack quite balanced. You've got three seamers and then you have your three spinners. But it's really been your spin this year, hasn't it? That's well, yeah, a cause huge it, amount of damage. Yeah, Greg Thompson has just been a revelation with bad on ball, so uh, perhaps it's time to get him into the attack. Well, he appears to me to be the Ben Stokes of NCU Greg, and he's top of the batting average. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a talismanic leader, there's no doubt about that. You know, he's done a wonderful job uh, at the club, and he just has this impact on games. You know, he picks up wickets, he changes the momentum of the game very, very quickly. I suppose, having seen the ball from uh, Ross Allen turn, I would be tempted to have a look at Greg at the, at the far end, at the worrying end. Um, just again, while there's you know 43 for three, you're under pressure a little bit. You can't afford you know your th that gambles there for the batter. You say to Gareth, think, "Come on, hit me for six. Go to your log sweep." And he, you know Gareth may well deposit it into the field, but I, th I think I would be inclined to have a little look at that at this stage. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that. But going back to your going back to the skipper, like he's he's a street fighter. Oh, he's At a, club level, he's a street fighter. He's a street fighter. And, you know, you need those. And then, you know, when he's leading from the front, the tendency is that kind of others, others will follow. But, you know, you always get, I get the sense of a, a real genuine commitment to the club. Uh, and it's, it's great to see. There it is. First maximum of the day, thrown up by Ross Allen, and deposited into the machine shed. Well, you did predict that, Kyle. You did predict that, and uh, that is Gareth Delaney in a nutshell. It's quite funny, he keeps kind of adjusting himself. Obviously, that left wrist is still in the repair stage. It's a funny one, really, because... Like obviously in in an Irish setup, I don't necessarily. When you think of where he's batted, when you think of how much his leg spin has improved, and that's going to be another one, and that's out of the ground for six two from Delaney, and he's certainly taking the game now to Warrington. But as you say, it is a it is a small ground. What what would you bowl next? It's a challenging one, you know, for me. The bottom line is anyone in the... Gareth Delaney is known for taking down left arm spin. So in terms of being a matchup, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a good matchup for Gareth. You know, it, it's a question now for me. My temptation, the last ball would be to go much slower and much wider and say, come on. Now, you look like egg on your face when that ball follows the other one. <laughs> yeah, but it's but going you know, that way anyway. Yeah, but you know, the funny thing is, cricket people know and understand... There's another one. Three in a row. Ross Allen under pressure. And that six brings up the 50 partnership between Gareth Delaney and Joey Carroll. And not only is it the 50 up, but it's also, also the 50 partnership, Carl, between these two. And they've weathered the storm. And now it's become a bit of a storm. Three sixes in a row down the ground from Gareth Delaney. And now it's Waringstown that are under that bit of it. But I don't even see it, to be honest, as genuine pressure. Because, you know, the, the way kind of potentially Leinster play from here is going to be the, the interesting thing. That's a wonderful counter-attack. That's precisely. That's pre that's precisely what it is. Wonderful work, showing his international class, Kyle. And it's quite funny because Joey Carroll will actually be happy playing a supporting role here. He's he's an intelligent, watchful cricketer. And again, that's a good example of it. 
keep the strike rotating. Good over for Leinster. 20 runs from it. And all of a sudden, we're up at 4 and over. That's what I'm saying. you got to stay in the fight. you got to dig in. The guys have done that. But they're just reward. So really good counter-attack. Really good fight back here from the men from Rath Mines. And I'll be interested now to look at the body language of the Warringstown fielders. Because you've almost got to lift your body language. And you've got to lift into the fight rather than... Oh, the danger here is that you'll wait. And you wait for Gareth Delaney to make a mistake. Or you wait for something to happen. You've got to make things happen. Well, we've sat in commentary many times, Kyle, where we've watched and seen that. And it's probably the first time in the match that the skippers had to ask himself some questions. And I just wonder within that, will he take that responsibility himself? Well, you spoke about leading wicket taker, top of the bowling averages, top of the batting averages. You just said, give me the ball. Yeah, for me, he should be bowling this over now. And potentially then looking at James Mitchell to come from this side. Uh, so for me, obviously, just when you look at the dimensions of the ground, Gareth Delaney's got you know, all the freedom. He's, he's hitting with the wind to the shorter boundary down the hill. All the dimensions are with him. Whereas I'd be saying to him, come on, if you want to hit it, hit it up the hill. Just it's amazing how that affects the psyche of the batsman. Um, so out of James Mitchell and the seamers rotating at this at the clear road end. And I'll be bowling the spinners from the, the worrying end. Until you you get you get a breakthrough, then you can potentially say, okay, game's changed. Well, it's interesting that you say that because like often when we play in windy conditions, often when it's up and down the ground, that realistically your spinner should be given that protection of a hit into the breeze. Well, there's, there, there's always two schools of thought there. Um, there are a lot of spinners who like to bowl into the wind because they feel that that helps with drop and it helps to you know, deceive the batter. Me, personally, I never liked that at all. I always just felt, oh, that ball's going to be hit for six straight back over my head. <laughs> I wanted all the, all the protection that I could get. But there were lots of spinners who really liked to bowl into the wind because they felt that that just slowed the pace up and it increased the drop in the batter. So I suppose it's, it's personal thought. But the pitch is starting to look very flat. And uh, this counter-offensive here from Leinster is, is bringing them very much back into the game. Well, as often in the case, Kyle, oh, it's wide again, just losing a wee bit of his action, young Mitchell. But uh, when we talk about finals, it's often the big players that come to the party. Big games require big, big time players to step up in them. And, uh, Gareth Delaney is just doing that right now. And, and you know, there's Joey Carl's 19 not out here. Let's underestimate let's not underestimate the role he's played here. And as you say now, it's probably the first time Waring's down are kind of feeling a wee bit of struggle. But I dare say you're probably gonna see perhaps a dual change, whatever way as you say, you probably know more of these guys where they're Best bowling from Kyle, obviously your home club, and it's interesting to hear your thoughts on that. And again, it was quite interesting in the semi-final against but Cameron Dow had a big role to play in that. For a man that's obviously had his trials and tribulations with his spin, but certainly seemed to be different off two paces. He's also he's also played a bit of a role bowling sort of little dibbly dobbly left arm in swingers, just little seamers. And again, just that ability to offer, you know, I would suggest, you know, Gareth Delaney's great strength to anybody who watches the game will know that he, he left you know, Jackie Balhassan, I think he battered him at one stage, so like he likes slow left arm. So we've got to try and make sure that we, we you know, Warringstown bowl what he doesn't like, Adam. Well, it's interesting that you said, and I think the, the aspect that you're talking about was going that, that wee bit wider outside off stump. The only thing about that, you know, that allows him to, to free his hands up. You know, for me, do you come over the wicket and you bowl it into his leg stump and you say, come on, I'm going to try and cramp you a little bit. But the bottom line, I suppose, it, it, it's the arc of his bat. It's the way he likes to, you know, he's got that unique, you know, he picks the bat up really high and he gets tremendous bat speed. Uh, so you've got to try and get the ball in to try and limit the, that swing of the bat. I think that's it, you know, like definitely in a, 
in an environment where you're looking to what is your stock delivery? What is you, you? You have to have a go-to delivery. And listen, you can talk to me more than that than me talking to you. But and again, that piece that you talk about. And I always hear people into the pads, into that thigh, into that thigh, mm -hmm. and just restrict that movement at a good pace. And then, if you have a variation, then if you you know you might go that wee bit wider. But I think you always have to have a ball, a go-to delivery that you believe you can. Well, I, I talked about the game at Rust Mines last year when he, when when Gareth got ninety, and I was playing on that, and I went very quickly to middle and leg, and just to try it. But what he then started to do was, you know, just the, as you got the delivery, he bounced himself, you know, foot to the leg side to free it up again. But for me, I, at least, you know, he, he, he hit it. But for me, it brought the stumps into play. You know, I was trying to bowl to hit middle and leg, and if he wanted to give himself room, well, at least then he's, you know, for me, I'm trying to keep them. What are the maximum amount of ways that I can get him out? You know, often when the pitch turns, even today, there's been an, there's been enough turn here. I bow round the wicket at him because for me, I can't get him out LBW over the wicket, but I can more likely get him out LBW bowling round the wicket. I want to keep as many as many modes of dismissal in the game as I possibly can. So it's very important here for Greg Thompson and the Warrington boys not to become too. We've got to look. They've got to look at how we get our wickets here. You know, we've got to be constantly two more wickets on the total here, and the game's very different again. No doubt. Gareth Delaney on one over here has completely turned the tables. The, the Warrington bowlers have started bowling extras. They look very uncertain. That's well pulled. Gone that wee bit wider, that little bit slower, but it's interesting you're talking about Length. kind of that batting technique, Graham Ford big for moving around the crease a bit, make you think a little bit differently about how you're going to do things and take the challenge on differently, freeing your arms. And there's a big call. Gareth Delaney's out. Johnny Bush jumping with delight. Ross Allen gets his own back, and that's a huge wicket in this game. Gareth Delaney departs for 35. Warringstown absolutely delighted. Well, isn't that really interesting, Ross, too? Because it would have been easy for Greg Thompson to say, you know what? You've been collared for three sixes. Showed confidence in Ross Allen. Let him build himself back. Do something about it. And boy, has he done it. He's got the star attraction out here. Gareth Delaney just looking to get a little bit of bounce. Good catch. And Ross Allen is absolutely elated. And again, that's a huge wicket for Wearingstown. Massive wicket. I think that way it really does change the game. Because what it'll allow Greg Thompson to do is to keep Ross Allen operating at this end. It puts Joey Carroll under a lot more pressure. And I think what you'll see now is, you know, a significant change in momentum in the match. It's a huge wicket for the home side. And a big blow to the, the team from Leinster. Huge blow that. Just by, isn't it amazing cricket? Would you please welcome us to the wicket wearing shirt. Saki Barador, he's a, he's a fighter. He's played a really big role, good off spinner. I'll be very interested to see what you think during the course of the Warringstown innings, depending on where we get to in this game. Well, for me, Greg, what the, I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, I would have had Ross Allen off. I said it in the last over, I would have changed ends. So it just goes to show you. The one thing I'll say in Greg, you're talking about being a street fighter. We, Warringstown play basketball. I think we could probably call it Greg ball. Um, Greg is the most phenomenal, uh, strong-willed, strong-minded winner that I've probably ever played cricket with. You know, he you know, That's a big call. He reminds me very much of the, the Mooney brothers, John and Paul. You want to go to a game of cricket with Greg Thompson and your team in the trench with you. You know, I always love playing cricket in the Irish side with John and Paul Mooney because you know you were going to get blood, sweat, tears, everything. You were going to get every last drop. So, um, Greg Thompson deserves a lot of credit there, Louis. Should he have played more international cricket, in your opinion? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know, sometimes I get frustrated um, when I, oh, when I hear, yeah, a lot of people focus on what players can't do. And in terms of T20 cricket, Greg plays it uniquely. Uh, this year, you know, he's got nearly a thousand runs at a strike rate of 150. Literally on his day, you can't bowl to him. 
Um, and I think in international cricket you need guys who can change a game. Like we saw a glimpse of it there from Gareth Delaney in the space of a very short period of time he changed a game. Greg Thompson's one of those cricketers. Um, and Warringstown are very fortunate to have, to have had his services over the last number of years. But I do believe he had the talent. He was a hell of a leg spinner Lee, as well. Well, I think a part of it, to be honest, was he was probably in that transitionary stage, you know, and it's something we've spoken about before that, you know, in, in terms of becoming a professional cricketer, there's two sides to it. One, you know, obviously, am I good enough? Two, within terms of a prolonged career, am I going to be able to survive, as in financially survive? Uh, and they see it in a big, bad world of, you know, Obviously, at the top level, Josh Little, probably first Ireland cricket millionaire. And uh, Is that my best friend, Josh Little? Josh, that, if you're listening. That's your best yeah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, I doubt he'll be listening. <laughs> I always had a lot of time for Josh Little, you know. Yeah. Um, no, but isn't it wonderful, Lou, to see our best young cricketers now? You know, I was just saying there before, I see Harry Tector going to play now as an overseas player for Gloucester. Straight into the team, runs for fun. Curtis Comfort, exactly the same. You know, I think it's testament to you know we we I think just our our psyche in Irish cricket. We always look for what's wrong, but it's always important what? to look at the the strides that have been made and and the talent that we've produced and and how well we're performing in in certain aspects. We, of course, we want the national team to do you know better and qualify for everything and win everything. But I do believe that there's been yeah. Know, but bear in mind the team you were around. They were virtually all playing county cricket. Yeah. And I think back even to, like, and to give you an example, as that sped away square, and good work again, from Dennison, the tag team there, getting it back in, restricting another run. But I was going to, I was going to talk about, like, we played England schools, Wales schools, and, we beat Wales by an innings. Three other players went on to play. Two played test cricket. Another one played regular county cricket, churned out a thousand runs a season. And Hansi Cronje, when he was over with us, the late Hansi Cronje, came to an under-15 training session. This is as much quality. We have had a time and time and time again we produce for, a, let's call it a tiny cricketing nation, extraordinary actually cricket talent. And now the difference is, because... Obviously, I know Harry well. He's been in the club since he was eight years of age. From 13 years of age. 13 years of age, all he ever wanted to be is where he is now. And that's steely determined. And you're right, like because the other side of things, if you think back then too, when Ed Joyce went to Middlesex, any time Middlesex were on the box, we wanted to watch. Mm. And Josh Little saying, IPL final. Mm. Like, hard to believe. Do you not think sometimes we have a tendency to down player? You know, we, we look at overseas players as somehow different, whereas we're producing guys with the right surroundings, the right environment, are 100% capable, and we've proven that. Um, and you know, a lot of the talent on display here today, you know, could could make it at, at, at that level. And very often, I'll be honest, Louis, I don't know about you, it, it hindered my early days because you just looked at England as being better. Mm. Um, and I think what I learned too late in my own career was actually. I'm every bit as good as these guys. Mm. I just had to somehow find the surroundings and the environment and the opportunity to show myself that. Well, I think when you're immersed in it all the time and you have the quality, it's just easier. And, uh, you know, I, in a sense, used to think that too, having, you know, gone to England, played a, played a wee bit in Australia. Actually, when I'm not too bad here. You know what I mean? And once you garner that confidence, and then you see what the Porties and the Nile O'Briens and Boydos and all these people did, you know, imagine, think that three of our players went on to play for England mm -hmm. you know, in that in that period of time. And they all came from what we're watching today. All came from this background. Well, listen, there's a young lad whose house is at Coy Corner here, who's playing exceptionally well for Sussex and is on England's radar, Jack Carson. Who you know came through the whole ranks here, played Irish under nineteen cricket and so on, and is very you know a strong possibility that Jack could be picked for England. Um, so I just think that our talent, given the, the 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 right conditions, and hopefully with the new funding cycle of the ICC coming around, 
those conditions are going to be much more uh, productive. And who knows, I think the future here could be much brighter than you think. Well, if you're a young, aspiring cricketer, you have every opportunity to go far in the game. And, you know, I kind of think at the end of the day, even within that, you've got to work bloody hard at it. You've got to work very, very hard at it. And, you know, I I see it with some, I see it with others. And uh, generally speaking, outside of ability, the ones that work the hardest at it do, do the best. You're bringing the school teacher out me here. <laughs> As Steve Waugh would have said, if you put it in, you'll get it out. And I think Eddie Burrell's famous saying was, there's no glory without hard work, boys. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the bottom line. So you've got to put the time and the effort and the necessary in. And as you have just said, the, the, the new coaching structure and the transition period that Leinster have come through and Joey Caswell and Jonas Cricket, the reason they're here is because of all the, the hours and hours of hard work that has been put in behind the scenes to get them here. It's no coincidence that these two clubs are playing in this final. Um... Because there's so much goes on um, to get there. But Ross Allen now, we've got off the beaten track. Lee. We could sidetrack here. But a little bit, but that was always obvious. People can see the pictures. <laughs> Hopefully we can bring some words of wisdom. I don't know whether we do or not. We may be just waffling. I don't know. Ali right. will bring us down to earth again when we're together on comms. I like this field. Adam Dennison in tight at extra core. Slip in, James McCollum. Yet the man at long off. So... Basically, you know, hazard. There's three modes of dismissal here. You know, I like that field. Well, the fact that he's got a slip in particular, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, Ross Allen is getting that wee bit of turn, and he's shown great courage, and the captain showed great courage because we were looking at each other, kind of going, mm -mm, I wonder, I wonder. But he, he's both three point three overs for twenty three, and one of those overs went for twenty. <laughs> well, three <laughs> balls went for eighteen. <laughs> Discussion. Three of those balls went for 18. If this was the 100, he's, he's, he's bowled 18 <laughs> balls for what, five. Oh. <laughs> Do you ever see anything like your man Johnson? 20 balls, three for one. Oh, unbelievable. Glad, I glad, I he, glad he, he didn't play against us. For Italy. <laughs> I know. I know. Not Italian, not Italian name, Seth oh. Johnson. Jeez. Between see. him and Atkinson at 95 months. <laughs> He'll play for England, that fellow, mm. very shortly. Seth that Johnson. Pace. No, 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 no. Atkinson. Oh, Atkinson. Mm. I'm having a look here at Greg Thompson getting loose. Uh, you might just see a change at the at the worrying end. Canny bowler. There's a picture, Louis, on an old Irish cricket annual magazine when you were batting against David Mills. Yes. Do you know who also played that day? Phil Simmons. Did Simmons play? Mm. Phil Simmons played. I remember you. <laughs> I remember you, Simo, if you're listening. You're good help, my friend. And, of course, another West Indian. We've mentioned it earlier in the ground today. Carlos Braithwaite. And we've waffled, obviously, far too long. Ali McCallmont is battling at the back of the bench. Let me get those headphones on. And I'm delighted to uh, welcome... Ali back. I'm sorry, we began to waffle a wee bit there, Ali. We might just get back to cricket, but I haven't seen Kyle for a while. We just tend to do that. Yeah, I thought the two boys were in your front row again. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff, though. It's all about Irish cricket, and it's all, all good. I feel a little bit underqualified at the minute. No, uh, you, don't, you don't do any of that, Ali. A couple thousand Irish caps here beside me here. Well, we had a very interesting one out before the game because I haven't seen Garfield for ages. Alan Nelson, of course, the curator now on the ground, played many years from with him. But actually, and is that not, we talked at the draw way back in February. Is that not exactly what, what these types of competitions are about? The Arikas Harry Senior Cup and the National Cup, exactly what it's about. Meeting guys you haven't seen and played against and, and things like that. That's what makes, it, makes the competition well, special. It's, in, it's interesting that you say that because on Friday I'm at the India game with three fellas from St. Johnson. Ooh. Davey Rankin, Paul Wallace, who I played with and against for many years. and We forged this relationship so on open Brady. I get my wee bit of golf up in Bally Liffin. Yeah, and they're coming down to us, so you're going to see them. Yeah, that'll be good. And uh, that all came out of two or three games against... We seemed to get pitched against them in the All-Ireland Cup, and we met in the winter, and that's, in a sense, what 
the competition is about. So, Absolutely, that's exactly what we talked about. So, I heard you mentioning, Carl had mentioned a few times about, about the bowling change we've just seen now. James Mitchell, well, he didn't go for a lot of runs. He did struggle a little bit. Um, so the skipper has turned himself in. Carl had been calling for him to come on. He's come on from the wearing end here. Yeah, Great he just junction. struggled a little bit for rhythm, didn't he, mm -hmm. Ali? He just yeah. he kind of pushing those balls down the leg side and the skipper now taking responsibility. Pulled a little bit. He, yeah, Greg, Greg's obviously refined his action a little bit when he went away. Um, speaking to him just earlier in the week in the preview to the, to the final, and he talked about his time away in England and uh, he just lost his action when he went away and it was just a wee bit too early for him a little bit when he went across. I mean, we've been talking, I heard you talking with Cal about the guys that are going across now, the likes of Harry Tector and Curtis Camphor going across, and we've had a few, of course, but Greg was one of the first to really give it a go. I mean, there were a few before him, Ryan Eagleson, etc., but Greg was sort of saying that he found it a little bit difficult when he went across the old football thing, a little bit homesick, and, you know, it was, a, it was going to full-time cricket, and he just lost his action mm -hmm. and, and with a leg spinner at that time. Hard to get it back if you lose it. Well, you always felt over, you know, and again, I remember spending a week in Somerset. You felt you had more to prove. And again, it's, you know, in a sense, the environment, it's it's very important, the environment you're around. But I, I kind of think it was garnered in a lot of years by the success of the Irish team. And again, obviously, our star players, Morgan, Joyce, Boyd, you know, all playing for England. Well, that's it. You set the platform, and if somebody does well, then the next guy comes along. And it's very similar. You would look at the, the the girls' cricket now. You've seen a few making it into the to the hundred or the mm. you know the Rachel Hayhoe, and that sets the platform. Then some have done well, etc. So similar kind of thing that you need a trailblazer in a way. But um, Greg's on there, and he's bowled he's bowled quite a decent decent first over, just the two from it. And I uh, going to keep Ross Allen when I was off commentary, there and I was just going to come back on and thought Leinster. Had, really dragged themselves oh. back into it and uh, you know they were ticking along at 4-5 and over and then obviously that big over from, from Delaney but fair juice to, to Greg Thompson for keeping Ross Allen on that's a fine shot though and Carl on the sweep that's an excellent shot just dragging that down the leg side Ali but he got in a low position all the way along the ground textbook from Joey Carroll that and he's the, he's the sort of player you know, when he gets in, he can hang in there. And I think it's going to be most important from his club's point of view that he's there close to the end. Yeah, I think so. He played a supporting role while Gareth was going. And uh, now, obviously, like everything, he's got to step up now. And but that was a nice shot. Poor ball, probably, from, from Ross. And he hasn't pulled badly, apart from those three deliveries that Delaney took him downtown. He's pulled well. You know the way, I was going to ask you a question here, Ali, in that we're in the 20th over now. What do you think a good score might be? That's a terrific question. <laughs> I always like to get that question in before the other person, because <laughs> then I don't have to answer it. It always looks silly. Well, I think the big thing is the four. The four wickets down. If this was 80 for one off 20, with the likes of Delaney coming in, with maybe 15, 20 to go, you'd say, right, we can double our score here. At the minute, though, they've got to stick a little bit. Going up to drinks, possibly go to drinks and see see where we're at then, reassess. But no one wearing's time. I haven't played here quite a lot. It's been a, it's a different track now than when it used to be when Cal used to be here. Three, four spinners and just come on and bowl. 180 would be a good score. And they'd just come on and take wickets galore. Um, Gary Kidd, the professional, was always a spinner. You know, um, nowadays, though, it's a good track and a... I remember playing in a... Oh, I didn't play, I was actually watching them and days were done by then, but my own club played in a T20 final here two years ago and they got 260 in a T20 final. And the other team got 220 in reply. On that pitch we're playing on right now, 260 played 220. So, wow. so I mean, anything above above 200 here, as you see the scorecard coming up, there's your 20 overs gone. 80. So, I mean, they're going up four and over. It's not too bad, but again, the four is the big problem there. A couple of wickets here. Obviously, they've got Peter Francis due to come in next. And, uh, and here's your bowling card. 
Hume up front, miserly as usual. Snell really doing the damage. And probably bowled that bit better than his figures by his last over. Probably when he was tiring, went for a bit. But he did the important damage. He took those two wickets. Greg Thompson continues a little bit short. No, the other interesting thing, Ali, was, and again, I was just listening yourself and Kyle, when he was talking about some of the finals, you know, with these low scores and everything looked to be coasting and, you know, a set batsman gets out, two or three wickets fall, suddenly you need 35 with four wickets in hand and you're... Yeah, you got away the one there. Go ahead real full toss and... I'm surprised that didn't. Well, of course, you know, the other interesting thing, that's the sort of one you can... Obviously, we've deep mid-wicket there. It's a long, longer hit all uphill. But again, probably right from Joey Carroll to roll the wrists on those. But he would be disappointed that he didn't profit from it. Just getting back to your point there, all on about low scoring. I mean, I've looked at some of the old finals and Going back to the to the start of the competition way back in eighty two. Some some low scores at the time and you think, why did they win that game? But I mean, <laughs> in them days it's you know, wickets weren't as good. Let's hit in the air into that mid wicket area. Safe. We'll just be one. Well I was only saying to Kyle as well that I really enjoyed that. Obviously very disappointed from an Irish perspective, but that qualifying tournament. Who would have thought, you know, Scotland against us within a ball next thing they just get a momentum in the tournament some cracking games of cricket but Zimbabwe not qualifying with the side they have and again what we all call cricketing pressure just maybe got the better of them in front of their home crowd and I think that that's exactly what happened they got got the momentum they played superbly and uh, just at that last moment one game can change a whole year's Absolutely. planning you know um, and it's the same it's the same and, and here we talked about a few finals that we've seen low scores I mean we've talked here about what, what Leinster can put up but Kyle talked about earlier about putting runs on the board anything above 180 200 here you know it can change momentum then and you know a score can be any score you know well probably one of the things and I don't know how much you've seen of Leinster they've actually got a very decent same attack you know they're four kind of top line seamers and you know two spinners Baradour is a clever bowler only a clever bowler you know and they've they've done very well and they fight as a team it's something that kind of Jared Chetty their coach has built into them and he's really pushed this kind of in a sense this younger model this you know they're First, their second team, you look at them down the club, they're just trying to build. And I, to the cover, sweeper, just the one. Yeah, I was talking to the chairman pre game, Stephen Tongan, and, and uh, just about the fact that they've had a very, very settled side this year. They've had a good side, but the Interpros hasn't affected them too much. Maybe just Joey Carroll being away the odd occasion, but some of the other clubs are losing players left, right, centre. Leinster have been able. To, to kind of keep the same 11, get into a winning habit, play the same way, use your spinners. Well, you see, Ali, it's probably one of the great conundrums because Pembroke is an example who are a very good side when they're at full strength, but, you know, they create, obviously, a number of players playing for Ireland and they ended up getting relegated. Oh, that's turned again. Probably shouldn't have been played out really. That was quite wide. But we've already seen from Baradour, he likes to get bat on ball. And sadly, mm. we're beginning to see rain. And in fact, umpires have taken the very wise step very quickly to make that decision, keep the pitch covered as quickly as possible and that was clever from them that's the one thing I've seen here over the past few weeks is rain and I can tell you the ground staff are like lightning out there they can see it coming just behind us here and uh, they're on immediately with the covers trying to get the, that wicket covered as quickly as possible well, and the wind is as you can see on the pictures there the wind is not helping but plenty of volunteers 
coming out from the stands. Very well, difficult to keep the covers on the pitch at the minute. Well, I'll tell you something. Having been in St. Lucia to watch the Irish women play, to watch the ground staff get these sheets on, and they are the best, you know, when you're in the midst of of battle, getting the sheets on as quickly as possible, get the square covered, because often they're the areas that cause the delays. But it's been a fascinating opening salvo, Ali. Werningstown dominating up front, taking three wickets with only 20 on the board. And on top, and then we had the cameo. Gareth Delaney played ever so well and then fell with a great piece of courage, I have to say, not just Very from Ross so. Allen himself, but his captain, much to so. believe in him and say, you know what, that can happen to anyone. Come on, Ross, you're, you can do the job here. I would actually take a wager. There wouldn't have been one person on the ground would have said, you know, everybody around the ground would be saying, what's he keeping him on for? It's always the way in the crowd. Why are you keeping that guy on? He kept him on. He got the wicket. And I can tell you, that'll be a conversation piece at the end of the game. Definitely, whichever way this goes, it'll definitely be something to talk about in terms of the captain, Greg Thompson. Very much. What were your thoughts? Very so, much. Well, you'll be doing that, Ali, of course. Oh, well, that's possible. So, that's, <laughs> that's possible. so you can ask all those <laughs> questions. We, we, we've got to have a wee bit in you. The Carrick man will have to do that job, Ali. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's it. I um, couldn't. We couldn't have it any other way. No, that's couldn't right. have it any other way. So just a little bit disappointing here. We thought the chars were were possible today. We just hoped that possibly that that little pocket that we're in here at the lawn it sometimes just blows around us. But unfortunately, um, we've been caught with a little shower here, and uh, the covers are the covers are being brought on. As we say, plenty of volunteers here at Warringstown. It was a subject of, of great discussion from a few teams in Leinster, particularly Pembroke in the last round. I think the whole of Warringstown came out and uh, there was about 500 people here after two minutes. It was like a rallying call. Well, but they arrived and, uh, and got the ground. To be fair, I mean, we always talk about it. We want cricket played. We want to see a game played on the pitch rather than won by weather. So fair play to them for getting the game on um, in the end. Um, but it was like a rallying cry for Warringstown. They came out of everywhere. Um, to get the ground and it has been something that's been plaguing us for, for about four to five weeks now uh, unfortunately um, it's been plaguing everyone Ali I think so like certainly our own club YMCA and the, the whole the Leinster programme two weekends have been entirely washed out it's been obviously the wettest July on record and it's been deeply frustrating and I you know the again clubs they put so much effort into these big occasions and days and you just pray for one thing, Ellie. Just That's sun. what you pray for. I'm just dry. dry. Not even, not even sun. I don't, couldn't care about sun. If, like, <laughs> as long dry. as it's not freezing. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, we just pray for that. But as you say, Werningstown have done well here to get the ground covered as quickly as possible. Because the one area really that in any sort of cricketing environment, it, it is actually the square itself that becomes the problem. You'll generally find at club level, players will be happy to play. Uh, and I certainly sense that, like, because I even before the game when we were, you know, I was even asking, are we going to yeah, start? And tell you, the covers were still on, but they were very, very clear they were. And, you know, you could clearly see that both captains wanted to get on with it. You build up to these things so much, they wanted to get moving. And I think you're probably going to have today, like, a, it, the forecast is showers. So, you know, there's no doubt we're going to have those. But, you know, if you have two teams that are willing to get on with it and play, Absolutely. I just, I just always, I hate these sort of situations because now we've started, then one team's ahead, one team's behind, and then it all starts about, you know, oh, what should we go on to play. So if you get two teams willing to play and get out there and play it on the field, it just helps so much and, and get the game done and, and, and play in, in conditions that maybe maybe you wouldn't play in as normal on a, on a, maybe at an international level. It's, uh, it's important because that's the country we're in, unfortunately. And, Absolutely. You know, we've got to try and play cricket in maybe conditions, but... You know, hopefully, hopefully we can uh, we can uh, get back on quickly. As I say, hopefully the wind will get up here and blow this little shower across, and we can get back on. Um, just a reminder that the score at the moment is 85 for four. From 21 overs have gone. Uh, Joey Carroll and Saki Bahatur are the naughty batter at the minute. We hope to be back with you as soon as possible. As soon as we get back on the pitch, myself and Alan Lewis. We'll be back to keep you company. Until then, goodbye.
So with the score on 85-4-4, unfortunately we're currently off for a rain delay. However, on behalf of Cricket Ireland, we welcome all fans here today, especially those who have travelled from afar to support their team. And I know there are many of them here today. So again, you're very welcome indeed to the lawn. Cricket Ireland would like to thank the official title sponsor, Aracus, for their very generous support of our wonderful sport. Please note that spectators are not permitted onto the field of play at any time prior to, during, or indeed after the match. If you haven't already, make sure you pick up your free match program from the main entrance. And if you're enjoying the match today, why not come along and join us in Malahide next week as the Ireland men's team take on the mighty India in three T20s. The first two matches are now sold out, but hospitality is available on all three days. The Enterprise train between Belfast and Dublin will make a special stop in Malahide for access. Great to see the sun out and fingers crossed we'll be back on the field of play very shortly. Leinster 85 for 4.
Well done boys, looks great, looks really good, well done. Did you get on to Spacker?
thought he was up the top of the first belief or something. Yeah.
just to fill you in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, play will commence at 2.05, and I'm delighted to let you know that no overs have been lost. So play will commence in four minutes' time at 2.05, and very thankfully, we have lost no overs. And would you welcome back onto the field of play, Roly Black and Mark Orthorn. And would you also welcome back onto the field of play, led by their captain, Greg Thompson, wearing Well, welcome back, everyone. Thankfully, the skies are clear. There's bits of blue sky, which, of course, we like, but we know we're going to have showers during the day, Ali, and you have to commend the grand staff how quickly sheets were on, how quickly sheets were off, and the most important thing is we're going to be back playing cricket. Yeah, big big shout-out to that grand staff. Um, we've seen them before here at... Uh, it's been a fantastic effort to get it on. Keep the ground dry, as you said earlier. Just those wicked ends can get wet, and that causes all sorts of problems. But we've lost, we've lost about half an hour there. Of course, it doesn't mean we lose any overs at this stage. We've still got half an hour to play with, so we're still hoping for a full, a full game, which obviously all parties want. You know, it keeps the game at a full 50-over game. There's no issues with DLS, etc. Well, just a reminder: in those first. 21 overs, Warring's time bang on top, certainly for the power play. Taking those early wickets with Ben Snell. Especially reducing Leinster to 11 for 3 at one stage. And uh, a little bit of a rear guard then in the middle overs between Delaney. Well, Delaney certainly showed his international class. And probably that we were talking about it a wee bit off air there, really. Ali, young Ross Allen took the brunt of that three sixes in the drop, but his skipper showed confidence in him, and he came back next over and had him caught behind. Very good catch by Bush behind the stumps, and he's resuming here. Yeah, it'll be interesting now to see. It's a stoppage in play, like any stoppage in play. You got to start again. Batters have got to start again. Then, sort of, but the fielding team's got to start again. They've got to show that energy again where they were at, they just took that wicket of Delaney he was giving that big boost, but there's been a break now, I'm sure there's been chats with coaches, etc and you got to start again and it's always difficult just to get back up to speed again been cut into the offside, I think it'll just be one with the sweeper Well the interesting piece of course Ali too is that ball goes out into the outfield it's going to kind of soak that seam a bit obviously that white leather ball will be harder to grip and certainly will skid on, you would think. You know, that's the general trend when a little bit of moisture gets on the pitch in the, any of these breaks. And it's just in these types of sessions, who can rebuild better? Yeah, and especially at the minute with, with two spinners on, with Pat Boda to come, a little bit of wet on the ball. It's going to affect the grip. As we mentioned, that. The square itself was well covered immediately, but you can't you can't cover the outfield unfortunately, so it's gonna be wet. So just little things they got Leinster look to get the ball into the outfield and that's a poor ball first up. Pulled out there, but good cover in the boundary. It'll just be one. Sort of got away with that drag down, Greg. Thompson. Well he's well protected, Ali, on the leg side, deep square, deep mid wicket, long on. Traditional feel for Craig Thompson, of course, now bowling off spin. I would have been used to him bowling leg Absolutely. spin. Absolutely. As we talked about pre rain there, it was a very useful leg spinner in his in his younger days. So bowls the odd one now and then. So very important for Leinster here now. Just with the break. I get back up to speed quickly, can't waste overs. Short again. Again, same shot. 
As you say, I'm well protected out there. Uh, to James McCollum, back in the side. Today for the final. The Prince. Yeah, they were very pleased to have him back. Didn't score. He got one last week in the Cup final, but has the potential at the top of the order. And Warringstown have missed him for most of the season. First of all, from obviously his international duties, but then that disastrous injury in the Test match when actually I think he looked in that first ten overs as good as he's done in, in a few years now. He looked he looked bang on it and then got that horrendous injury at the Test match. But great to see him back out on the on the field again. Very true. I was only going to say there about Bob Doerr kind of shuffling that last delivery, getting himself to off stump, working the ball away to that big gap on the leg side. I think the most important thing in this phase of a game, Ali, is that you keep that strike rotating as much as you can with limited risk. Because that's the sort of ball that can happen. Again, it's well collected. Obviously, your view is obscured from where you are, Ali. But that's Mitchell down a deep square leg. But Joe Carroll, a player of vast experience, and I was only saying to Kyle from what I've known at Joey, he can bat deep, and I think it's going to be so important for his team today that they do that. And it's amazing you know, how many runs you can accumulate if you can take the game. Kyle was talking about Waringstown playing this incredibly basballish cricket that you know, yeah, well, I was, I was actually talking on your point to the Warringstown guys last week at, at the Cup final, and, and a lot of them were saying in the first five or ten overs, we, we kind of just bat to 30 and 35, and then we decide that somewhere around there when we send when we send Greg Thompson in. So he has a rule, he floats about, and, if it, you know, and comes in for those last 15 overs, and a lot of teams are playing like that. We talked about Gareth Delaney possibly doing that for Leinster today if they had a sort of hung their wickets in. That's the kind of job he can do, and a lot of teams are, are getting that big hitter at the death to come in, even in 50 over cricket. That's that's the influence of 220 coming into the 50 over game. Well, it's actually amazing how often now you're watching regular league cricket where the side batting first doesn't bat the overs. <laughs> you know, it's definitely, definitely, and something you could probably talk about at some stage is the toss now. I mean, I'm looking at games now where. The toss is kind of irrelevant. People, but guys are just saying, we'll chase anything. We'll just chase anything. Whatever you can set, we'll chase it. You know, and the toss is kind of, people used to look at the pitch and just go, we'll just, we'll just have a have a ball first, thanks. Well, I think the other side of things is, and we were talking about it earlier, how quickly a three down Waringstown had sweepers out, long off, long on. And, you know, myself and Kyle were talking on air, is that not the time to try and press for the wicket? Don't wait for the wickets mm. to happen. You've got to try and press your advantage home. And even more so then, the wicket of Delaney, obviously. If he had hung on, that would have become more prescient. Then you'd have said, you know, you've got to try and take his wicket, make him make him do something. And Warringstown, they didn't get lucky, but he kind of gave his wicket away there. And in terms of the shot he played, he'd been playing sort of very aggressively, but just that, that shot... Give, wicket, give that wicket away and just buoyed up Warringstown again. So Leinster got a rebuild once again. And that's well bowled, Ross Allen. A little bit of turn on his left arm. See, I think there, Ali, you can kind of see Joey Carroll. He's kind of gone into defensive mood. I think that ball was full enough that, you know, it could have been pushed wide of um, young Dennison. An extra cover, and again, he's probably their most pivotal fielder, and he's in the most pivotal position to left arm spin. But at the same time, if you kind of get into that mindset a bit, that shot that was induced, that last ball of the over, is the sort of thing that can happen. Yeah, that's the second twist that, that Leinster in position now with those four wickets. You, you're probably right; it probably looks like a better ball than it than it is. Um, in terms of he's just played a forward defensive and it, and it beats it, but it was a little bit half-hearted. Um, in terms of a defensive shot as well. It's important they stay positive. That's a good shot. Cut behind square. This time your view is a little bit obscured, Alan. I can talk you through that one. That's over 
the offside is fielded, but it's two this time. Out to the offside. Well, the most interesting thing then again there, Ali, about that shot is to, to and again, obviously that square cover, he's probably 10 metres fine. If you can get it to the left-hand side of that fielder at any sort of pace, you're certainly going to get two as they did there, but possibly four. And It's just literally taking the ball out of the keeper's gloves is what you should be trying to do when it goes wide like that. Yeah, and he's missed out again there. The full toss. Those are the balls they've got to take advantage of. Get the boundary. And then they can work around singles. And then still get four, five, six and over. Well, it's funny that you say that, Ali. And again, from a coaching perspective, you know, when you're watching a game and I can sit down with a player and you can kind of go, let's say there's six of those deliveries. And you kind of go, you have to get that wide of extra cover. You know, again, that sort of ball short, you can hit it anywhere. You've got to be thinking about getting one. Keep that scoreboard ticking because ultimately it will induce an injudicious shot. And that's what tends to happen when you don't keep this focus on trying to score every ball. Yeah, like that, that. That last ball you were talking about there, actually, that, that offside field, there is only the man just at backward point, and if you beat... You beat backward point, and you will get those runs. But just a single off the off that ball. I thought that was the end of the over. A little bit premature. One to come. Going for the big shot. Joey Carroll again. Just a one. But okay for Leinster. Well, and they moved on to 94 for four. It is an area he looks to, certainly much more so laterally in his innings but he's gone that little bit early and that may be because of this wee bit of pressure that's come on but Ali lovely to be with you for the period of time we were together and I'm sure we'll see each other again during the day but I'm going to pass over to Kyle McCallum yeah, Terrific I'm in the company of Alan Lewis sir Good chat, always good company He'll be back with us a little bit later and I'm delighted though to have Cal McCallum back with me. Cal been away a little bit an extra half hour you got off the <laughs> off the game there with a little bit of rain. Um I'm sure you're well refreshed there, having a bit of a look at the game. What's your what's your impression right now as we as we hit the halfway mark? Well I think the game is finally balanced. Um you know, Leinster wrestled back the initial initiative through that blitzkrieg from from Gareth Delaney. And really, from what I can see, they're going to bat around Joey Carroll here, um, who's playing very nicely. Where he's found it's very important that they try and continue to take wickets. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good call there in terms of you, know, you don't want to go too defensive here. You want to just let it tick over because as we've just been talking about there, teams can double scores really quickly now if they've got wickets in hand. There are four down, but if you just let them work around four and five and over here for the next ten. Suddenly you're looking at a different scoreboard. Yeah, you know, I think it's important. You know, there's, you know, Ross Allen just throwing the ball up. The length's the key here. But I think it's important that Warringstown don't allow the game to drift, that we, we are proactive with our bowling changes and our field changes, just to try and keep asking questions. That's a good length. Nicely played. Bad Doers looked very solid since he's come to the crease. I think fresh off a big score in the semi-final. So... That's the quality of the, the, the Leinster side. They have a lot of depth and they'll continue to bat. So it's nice to see the sun out and let's hope that it stays out. But wasn't it so impressive to see the, the, the covers on so quickly and they cleared so quickly? The, the whole the, the operation here was, was magnificent. Great yeah, credit there was excellent. To, to Alan Waite, chairman of the club, and, and all those volunteers to, to get the players. But a big crowd that will have back on the deck as quick as, as they have done. Yeah, you mentioned the crowd there, and we want to give them cricket. You know, they're here to watch the cricket, and if we can get cricket on as quickly as possible, and the players buy into that as well. Sun's out now, and it, I just walked around the ground there when I wasn't on comedy when yourself and Alan were on it. It really is a fantastic place to watch cricket when you walk up that, that little hill and have that little sort of upgrade, and you can look down on the pitch a little bit. It really is a very special place to play and indeed watch cricket. Two brings Leinster just on the verge of their hundred. I'm sure they'll be delighted to see three 
the figures on the scoreboard. Picks out the man. Just picks out the man on the boundary. And that sweep shot and that does bring up that 100 for Leinster. Going, as you can see, just under four. I won't worry them at the minute. As we said, they can catch up later. Obviously, wickets are the are the key. As you can see, you know Ben Snell, two early wickets along with Graham Human, a fine opening spell put Leinster on the back foot. But as you can see, just as the the white ball starts to get a bit older, it gets a bit easier to bat there. Joey Carl Garthelini with more significant contributions, and now Bahadur, seventeen thirty-two. But it's very important that that Leinster build upon thirty-five. Don't win cup finals. You got to, you know, Joey Carl will be most certainly wanting to make a significant contribution, try and get that up to three figures. That's the difference between winning a cup final and, and finishing on the on the losing side. That's exactly it. You want to make a contribution while you're in there. And they've sort of set the platform now to do that. There's those couple of shots that myself and Arnold Lewis were talking about in the last over. He just lets that come on to him a little bit. He can cut behind point, fast spaces, and then a full toss, which he doesn't He doesn't get away. And that just builds the pressure now, two dots. And Greg Thompson bowling a very attacking line there, getting a little bit of drift away. But he's bowling very wide out of stump, inviting Saki Bahadur to play through the offside with the hope that he might get a little bit of turning back through the gate. Length is going to be crucial here. And that was the call. It was too short. He has bowled a few short deliveries, but he's got his protection on the leg side. He's happy to let them play offside, so those bad balls only going for one. So the run rate isn't getting away from him. As you can see there, he's only going for 14 off, just over four and a half. Once again, that's a little bit more into the gap. The fielder gets there. They will get back this time for two. I think that's very well played. Joey Carroll, the pitch is quite slow, which means that you have to bowl the ball that little bit fuller. So when you start to bowl the ball a bit quicker, it can sit in the pitch. He's just rocking on the back foot, and he's got all the time in the world just to play that ball through the leg side. It's good cricket. Uh, we just mentioned about getting the ball into the outfield when when you were playing you sort of well we should talk about the Jew nowadays and but whenever you've obviously played in Ireland most of your career and and we get a lot of moisture in this country unfortunately so you would have bowled with a wet ball was it a huge huge thing for you or where did you yeah. sort of not worry about it oh we're worried about it for sure you know you didn't you, you had worked very hard to get that seam dry what I didn't like occasionally was that the ball swole yeah and that annoyed me more than the wet seam mm. uh, when the ball feels big in your hand as a spinner it's never good um, so for me it was the importance of keeping that ball up you know I used to lose the temper of the boys <laughs> throwing it in on the bounce you, know, you, you never lost your temper um, child. never but uh you know, I often find actually just when the, when there's a slight dampness that helped you grip the ball. Um, that's a lovely shot. That's an absolutely great shot. Not a bad ball. He just swept that wide of the middle on fielder. Much to the applause of his teammates. Yeah, and a good crowd, as I said, are left here from Leinster. It's really good to see. You know, this Ross Allen's ninth over on the bounce. Mm. You know, just sometimes I think it's important just to break it up. Maybe bring Graham Hume or Ben Snell back for a couple of overs, just to to change the pace. You know, the slow bowling from both ends. Just ask different questions. I would imagine now Ross Allen, their respective, will will bowl out from this mm. end. Now it'll be interesting to see where where you think Captain Greg Thompson goes. Looking a little bit creative there, <laughs> Terry. Got a cue end on it in the end. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about that last week in the cup final. Warringston kind of stayed the same for, for too long, and even though they were going for runs, well, you look at the other side of the coin today. We've always 
we could talk about getting Ross Allen off as soon as Gareth Delaney took hold of him. So it was a double-edged sword, but sort of it's the same for... It's going to be 10 overs, probably not going to leave him with one now. Um, I just think it's very difficult for the bowler uh, because of, you know, just breaking a spell up you know, can, can, can reap dividends. You know, Pat Botha is still to come into the attack. You know, for me, it's, a, it's just a case of keeping batsmen... You know, the, the best the best batting partnerships ask different questions to the bowlers. I think the best bowling partnerships have to do the same. Do the same, yeah. Did you see the ball slip in now for him? Yeah, slip has been there. For me, there's a very, very big gap between Ben Snell at backward point and Adam Dennison at that short cover. Um, but if, as a batter, you're almost getting a single for playing a forward defensive mm -hmm. shot, so... It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, just... We talked quite a bit about Warringstown haven't been in the ascendancy, but just looking at, at Leinster now, you know, Louis threw it at me in the last little stint, so what would you be looking at for Leinster now? I mean, I kind of battled it back a little bit because I never like to give scores, but in terms of Leinster up to 1-11 now, for me, you know, 111 for four, these guys have, have, have put on the guts of 50. You know, with a bit of discipline here and setting it up, you know, there's still very much the opportunity to score 250, 260 here. Uh, it's a big ground to defend. So it's, it's important, that, as I said before, 20s and 30s don't win cup finals. Uh, so Joey Carroll is now set. Saki Bahadur is now set. It's very, very important now that one of them takes the, the mm -hmm. takes the game by the bull or the, takes the bull with the horns, and and sees it through. And Greg Thompson's making a change. Just mentioned it. Pat both are now to come into the attack. Very different off spinner to Greg Thompson. Uh, bowls very straight. Bowls for LBWs and bowls. Yeah. Outstanding off his own bowling. Uh, bowls quite flat. Doesn't really look to turn it as much. So, interesting to see. Oh, that's right, I've seen quite a lot of Pat Bota's bowling, as you say. You kinda, you've got it mid on, mid off. I can really get rid of those two. <laughs> just say, Pat, Pat, you just feel all of that area. Because he is excellent um, off his own bowling. You know, you try and bowl it quite flat, as you say, and rather than look for cat, he looks for hitting the stumps he pulls. And sweeping on the cover boundary. Three failures on the leg side. He'll change it up. He's worked very hard on a carom ball, which he flicks off his knuckles, uh, which take the, takes the ball away from the right-hander. Very canny bowler. Yeah, knows his cricket inside out. Captain of his province back in South Africa. The Knights. A very, very experienced player. That could have been the wicket. It's got through everything. Will be hauled in. Ben Snell. Getting a bit of a look at the umpire here. It'll be interesting what the decision is. He's got a little nick on it by the look of it. Yeah, very well bowled. Very well bowled. Induced a cross the line shot from Badur. Much more circumspect. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a got away with one there. <laughs> I'll just pat this one back. I think I said it earlier, uh, you earn your luck. And certainly this partnership have dug in and they've earned that little bit of good fortune. But that's a good start from Pat Botha. Just the two off the over. And looked a little bit more of a threat, perhaps. So, Yeah, I think that's a... As we sort of described when he came on, you sort of mentioned that it was a fairly typical Pat Botha over. Fairly straight, stump to stump. And if you're missing the old proverbial... I'm looking LBW and, and bold here. And he very, very nearly got one pass by under there. The inside edge saved him. So Ross Alm is going to go through his 10. Not often you see it, especially from a spinner. Going right through 10. You like the bull 10, though? You got on? I always look the bull 10. Yeah. Uh, but, the again, ball off you. but again, as a bowler, you get a feel. I think you get a sense for when things are just starting to become a bit stale. Uh, very often I'd have made that suggestion to make that change. And very, you see, for me, that's that would break my heart as a bowler. If I was bowling off spin to a left-hander and they were playing a shot like that to get off off strike, that for me, um, 
I would have had my cover point in and potentially tried to bow without the sweeper up the hill or uh, potentially spinning the ball away from the right hander do without my mid wicket and, and then you know, you've still got your protection you're really asking them if they're going to work it against the spin then that might be the there we go again similar kind of shot in the last over he's clearing that leg away and pulling it over and his mid on's in going for four and that has brought up a 50 partnership now but as you can see He's very comfortable. He's been playing. He's seen the bowling for five or six overs. He's very mm. comfortable. It's a very easy shot, that. So, Ross Allen has four big balls here to get through a spell. Not going to make it. No better man coming in there from long off in Papoda. He didn't get the hold of it. And there it's just as well. All safe. Just a single. Game finally poised. I think the next 10 or 11 overs will most certainly determine in a big way what way the game may well go. Oh, well. Worked into the leg side. It's in a gap. Good pace out there. Keeps it down to one. Ross Allen. Finish up now. Just 10 over spell. He's one for 52 at the minute. But that one was a crucial one. And a funny spell from Ross Allen. He's bowled really well at times. Through that, got taken down in that one over. But as I say, he came back in the next. Got the crucial wicket of Gareth Delaney. And there you see his 10 overs. One maiden, one for 52 from Ross Allen. Bowling right through his 10 overs. You can see at the start there, Ben Snell. As we've mentioned before, probably bowled a little bit better than that. Two for 22. Now, Greg Thomas is going to work with his sixth bowler now, Papoda coming on. A little bit to work with now. He can mix up his bowlers for the remaining 20 overs. And with the advent of T20, Cal, obviously you always look at 20 overs to go. We can always vision what a 20 over game is now because it's been played so often. It's different, of course, in a 50 over game, but we can now work out where 120, 140 can be scored quite easily off. Of 20 overs, no problem. So that would take them up to the 250. Big shade. And a bit of confusion with the running as well. Yeah, not great cricket there. <laughs> as we say, Pat both the bowls stump to stump, bowling for LBWs and bowls. But umpire Rudy Black, brilliant. Superb at his job. Just nodded the head and said, no thank you. It's a shot we're talking about a couple of overs ago, just playing a little bit later to get the single rather than picking the man out. Turns the strike over. And this is what we talked about. Lancers have got to keep that momentum going now and keep the singles ticking if Bode is going to bowl stump to stump. What's your game plan? What's your shot here to get off strike? A little bit shorter there. I'm going the back foot because I'm actually just watching the, the four Warringstown fielders in the ring here. And you can actually see them, you know, looking to get in on the ball, looking to keep the singles because they know what way boat is going to bowl here and they're in the game. So just trying to keep that single again. A little bit short though. That's in the gap. And this time, oh no, they're not going to go for two. There's certainly a potential run out on the cards here. There is. Just um, in the last few balls. Uh, there are 
looking more energetic maybe than Joey Carroll. He's looking to get up <laughs> the other end very regularly. But another good over from Pat Bosa. Two overs for five. But again, just a sign of the pace of the pitch. You know, the batters are quite comfortably able to play oh, the, the spinners off the back foot. What's your change here then? I can't just see it, actually. Graham Hume. It's going to be given the ball for, I would imagine, no more than two overs. I think this is going to be a two-over burst. Yeah, he's bowled five in his opening opening spell. From the other end, the wearing end, he's going to come on at the Clare Road end. As you say, Cal, he's probably going to come on for a quick two-over burst here. See if he can break this partnership, which has moved past 50. It's on to 56 now. So Greg Thompson just turning to his main strike bowler, probably for a couple. Coming back in the hope that he can break this partnership Graham for Waring's team. The old pie-wye between the captain, the professional and the senior scene bowler. Dilemma here, I suppose. Do you go searching for wickets? For me, I would just be asking Graham Hume to come and do what he does, both top of off. He does get the ball to reverse later in the innings, just the tail back into the pads, looking for LBWs and bowls. So, yeah, it's important for from a Warringstown captain's point of view, I think you've got to be thinking, you've got to pick up, you know, two or three wickets here will really limit the potential for a big score. And from a Leinster point of view, you're thinking, okay, just see out these couple of overs and set the stall out. Intriguing. Yeah, that's the game. That's a 50-over game. It's a different, different to the T20 format where there isn't as much thought goes into it. It's just bowl and hit. 50-over game. Lots of different nuances during the game. This is a different one here now. Leinster are just setting a platform here. And that's probably why Greg Thompson has turned to, to Hume. So I think Leinster deserve huge credit. When you think they were 11 for three, mm. you know, to be sitting now at 125 for four, you could argue they've really, really wrestled the game back. There was that moment, possibly. But yeah, they've, they've come back right into the game. As you say, 11 for three, haven't decided. We'll have a bat on this, and, and suddenly three wickets are down early. Um, it does take a wee bit of character to come back into it. And they've gone about it in different ways. Obviously, Gareth Delaney was very aggressive, the way he plays, as they say. These two have, have decided to be a little bit more circumspect. Both doing a job. Oh, that's a poor, poor drop from the skipper. Give him his juice. He was placed perfectly for that shot. But he's put it down. Well, you don't see too often Greg Thompson dropping that catches. Is, that is a collector's item, that. Uh, normally a very, very safe pair of hands. Almost as if he was celebrating before the ball went into the hands. We talked about it being like Ben Stokes. The same thing mm -hmm. happened in the test match of Moe and Alley. What a... Yeah, it's a potentially a big moment in the game, that, Ali. They'll, they'll definitely be thinking about that now. Yeah, I want, for, for myself, when I, when I dropped the catch, it, it always took me at least to the end of the over to get over it. I was, I was constantly thinking about it. And the, the matter of many times you think, right, put it away, put it away. It's a bit like a bowler and a bad ball. You've got to put it away. Can't do anything about it. But it always stuck with me to the end of the over. And then you're always thinking... Get rid of this guy. Get rid of this guy, please. Somebody else do me a favour. You know, I'm looking at Greg now. He'll be wanting Graham Hume to do him a favour. This is excellent from Graham Hume doing exactly the job his captain has wanted. He's come back. You know, he's bowling tight. He's creating opportunities. I suppose to Gennathan, we talked about your golf game, you know. <laughs> Very often, how much do we focus on what we've done in the past when you can't change that? You can only change your next shot, so important to Greg and the, the rest of the Warringstown team. Forget about that. and Keep keep their best foot forward, but certainly a, a big opportunity lost. And, a, and a, you know, if you're Leinster, you say, OK, that's the, you've dropped the Irish Cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's a good point that Leinster have got to take a little bit of, a little bit of advantage of that. You know, they could have been losing a wicket and that over and exactly what Warringstown had tried to do, bring back their Premier Bowler and there's the wicket. They've got away with one, so... 
So as you can see, three early wickets. But then the counter-offensive, the counter-attack, Carroll and Delaney putting on 57. And as you can see, in both instances, in both partnerships, you know, Joey Carroll is certainly the secondary partner, scoring sort of sedately whilst letting his partner do all the work. And so as we thought, he's just going to play the anchor role, but he's certainly got the capability to put the foot in the accelerator later in the inning. So, like I say, wickets are very important for the fielding team. And it's, it's a really intriguing situation. It's, a, it's an intriguing part of the game. But a cat and mouse. That yeah. Who's going who's gonna to blink first? Well, that's kind of what I'm saying about, about the different different formats of the game. You know, the 50-over format. The, these, these little periods are just as interesting as the ball disappearing out of the park four or five times and over. You know, how do you, do you stick or twist as the batters? Or, you know, do we hang? When, when do we put the foot down? At what stage do we go? You know, it's all it's all the mental aspect of the game, not just putting the foot down and whacking it into the field. I'm a traditionalist, Ali. Uh, that's, <laughs> you know, there's a limit to the amount of bish boss boss that you can take. I think this is this yeah. is an excellent examination of not just your technique, but your understanding of the game. And You know, it's thoroughly enjoyable. I hope everyone at home who's watching here is enjoying it as much as we are, but it's, a, it's just so finely poised. Just off the, off the pad. Must have been. There are a couple of boys to the left of me here shouting. That must have been a wave. Maybe just clipped on the way through. Is off from Pat Botha. Just me and Joey Carl wait for it. It'll be interesting to see it. I, you know, my impression would be Joey's going to go right back on the stumps here and look to force this off the back foot. So potentially force it a bit fuller. There we go. Nicely worked though. On the leg side. Picks up the one. And Botha just running through his overs as well here. He's just nipping through the overs. You know, he's going to finish up his third here fairly quickly and at this stage of the innings. If you can nip through a couple of overs quickly. See, these are the intricacies. You know, certainly back in, in my day, you know, myself and Gary Kidd, we, we tried to pick up wickets, but we also knew each other's game inside out, and we knew we could get 10 or 15 overs in very quickly. So when the batters looked up, there were 10 overs left. That's very well bowled from Pat Botha. You know, it's important that the fielding team understand the, the nuance here and get through their overs quickly try and get three or four very tight overs together as quickly as possible so that then the batting team to go. But there's 14 overs remaining and they haven't really gone anywhere. So, yeah, Just those little things in a team that plays together as a team. You know your bowlers, who's bowling where, when are you in, when are you defending, things like that. And at the minute, as I said before, the four, bowl, the four fielders on, on the ring, for both of, they're on their toes, they're in there, they know they're on a big job here to stop singles. Like, uh, very important, only a couple off that last over, and now Hume to bowl another. If there's only another couple off this, that's another over. So, yeah, it's an important stage here for Waring's Tank. Just trying to turn the screw a little bit here. Joey Carroll moves on to 43 now. Bahadur on 35. I just have a feeling here there's a big shot in Saki Bahadur. I think he's going to look to try and perhaps target that long mid-on, deep mid-wicket area. Right on cue, we'll give you that one. <laughs> He only gets one for it, though. And tonight's lottery numbers are going to be. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't quite get it over <laughs> over Is that mid-on area you were talking about. Pulled it a little bit There's no square. Doubt. No doubt he's looking to the leg side. You can just see mm -hmm. in his body language where he's looking, where his eyes are going. He's he's just starting to... He's wanting to hit the accelerator. Complete opposite from Joey Carroll. 
quite content to play that into the offside and take one. Maybe just see off Hume for these two. Again, the thought process of the batter, he's only going to have one or two overs here. They're not going to bowl him three or four. So just take him for those ones and twos. Here, Graham Hume, halfway through his seventh over, one for 15. A little bit different again there from Badur. Will it go for four? Good piece of fielding down there. Prevents the, the boundary. They work in tandem. Great work from James, James McCollum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great work from James McCollum. Everyone on the ground just taking a deep <laughs> breath there. He's got up and uh, hobbled a little bit. He's come over a significant ankle injury. Absolutely. Just down on fine leg boundary. We'll keep an eye on him. He's down on his haunches at the minute. Hopefully just a little bit winded. That could be it. There's a massive appeal. Colthorne has turned it down. And the Warringstown players, especially Graham Hume, fairly exasperated by that. He was absolutely certain there was a nick there. James Cameron die having a word with Mark Hawthorne, but he's fairly adamant. Nothing on it. Have a little look now, Cal. Well, it can't have hit anything else. I have to say, it's sublime to ridiculous for me. If you're playing with some sort of cricket intelligence, you're thinking this is Graham Hume's penultimate ball of a spell, and I'll just see him off, but... Saki Bahadur is not, you know, in many ways I, 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 I admire his bravado. I have to say if it was his captain and he nicked off there, I'd be having a, a quiet word with him as he walked up the hill. Absolutely. He's I mean, done so well. You know, he's 38 here. He's done so well. Just a bit of cricket intelligence there. The man out at Kai Corner now to let him do it again. <laughs> Hold on to that one, Jimmy. I think he was going to let that go with a little bit of frustration there. So that is the end of the 34th over, an eventful one, one that could have brought a wicket. Graham Hume still having a word with the umpire. He's not happy. I'm going to take my leave for a little bit and we'll welcome back into the com box, Alan Lewis. Thank you very much, Ali. Nice to be back game in a very interesting phase Kyle. It most certainly is Lou. 15 over 16 overs to go and I dare say Leinster are batting themselves into a position they'd be quite happy with. Well it was interesting I was just oh that was a chance possibly and a great effort by both of that away to his left hand side he's bowled well since he's come on looks an efficient operator. Yeah this is what Pat does he's normally brilliant of his own bowling just bowls straight. Subtle changes of pace. And now there's a lot of gesticulating. I think Mr. Bahadur has started there, perhaps with that. The, the, the potential controversy last over. He's just got under the skin of the Warrings Town fielder, so fair play to him. Well, it largely is going one way, Kyle. There's a lot of bottom hand. Yes. Not too many aggressive shots on the offside, has to be said. But it doesn't matter. As you said, he's on 38, and that's going to run down the hill, I would imagine. Although it is well stopped. Actually, it's probably a ground, Kyle. There aren't too many threes here, I would imagine. No, no, there's not. I think what's probably you know, annoying the wearing sign bowlers is the amount of times that he's stepping away, the amount of times he's calling for gloves, he's breaking the game up all the time. You know, he's slowing the game right down. The guys are wanting to get on with it. Watching That's nicely too, played. Could watching, be two again. Watching too much television, I'd say, Kyle, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's not exactly 35 degrees here at the lawn. But uh, he's done a good job for his team, to oh, be he's... fair. And I've seen Joey Carroll kind of play this role, because it's the sort of thing, and I'm sure you had... You know, you've played long enough, no different. We always had this kind of view, if we can get into the last 10 overs... 
you know, with some wickets in hand, you're looking at nine, ten, and over if you can. That looks very, very close. And Pat Booth has got him. And you can just see the frustration burning out. Oh dear, and Somebody. there's nastiness. A wee bit of nastiness. And I think Pete Bolt are really probably overdid it a wee bit. Got a little bit Rabada-esque, I would have thought. Probably no need for that unless they were aggrieved with something. I don't know what they might have been aggrieved with, but he's on his way. He's made a very useful contribution for his team, but you kind of sense that was kind of going to happen. You mentioned just before I came on air that, you know, Hugh might have been in the second last or last ball of the spell. <laughs> As his captain, Lee, had he nicked off to that ball, would you have been cross? Yes. Because I think you and I are old school. And I think the, 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 the new attitude of the new player is doesn't matter what stage of the game is in, we're going to be positive, we're going to play our shots. But for me, that was not in cricket intelligence per se. You know, you should know that they've brought their premier seam bowler on. He's two over two balls left of a spell. We've actually got away with being dropped a mid wicket in the last over. Just see him out, get a single, and then dine out on what that was still to come. So I think perhaps the frustration from the Warring Sound players' point of view is they thought they had him nicked off. He was mm. given not out. There's then the change of gloves. There's a wee bit of chat back and forth, and obviously Pat both has had a word. And Rowley and Mark, just in their their dulcet way, just speaking to Greg, calming the situation down. That's what That's you've got to do. That's the way you do it, calm and courteous. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself. I know I, what you're thinking to yourself. Put your turn, gamekeeper. <laughs> I've been there. I've done oh. that. And I most certainly wasn't the most rational, calm headed individual. No. Any time I saw you were in a cricket field, you were anything but. Well, listen, I'll tell you, and it, it, it irks me. Mike Hendrick, God rest him, said something to me that in, in Queen's University in the indoor school, he says, Kyle, you're a spin bowler, you're not a slow bowler. He says, you must be in the fight. So I used to watch Mark Patterson, the fast bowlers, come in, and they were able to bounce them and slobber, and they used to sledge and so on. And I thought to myself, well, I wanted the batter to know when they were when they were playing against me, they were in the fight. And I was always up for the little chirp. I was always up for the little, you know, goad. I had to, you know, when you're just a standard off spinner, you have to find other ways of trying to... And, <laughs> and I love being in the fight. I love being in the fight. It's the one thing I miss, Lou. I know, it's very difficult. The only thing is, it's funny, you know, I've been involved in cricket obviously a long, long time, but I'm down with the boys Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Obviously, Graham Ford's with us. I just love it. I just love seeing the younger players prosper. <clears throat> and you've still got that changing room piece, you know, and to kind of see how attitudes have changed and different things and more watching kind of him at work. Everything is looking for positive solutions, positive solutions the whole time. Interesting now. Graham Hume going to get an eighth over. I think that's going to leave Warringstown short at the back end. I think that's a good move, though. Do you think so? I do. I do, because I kind of think they've probably sensed to themselves Francis has played a number of very useful innings. They've probably done their homework. Obviously, he's their leader of their attack with the ball, Australian. St. George Cricket Club, very useful cricketer. There have been a lot of very easy singles taken into mm. that space, haven't there? Uh, very nicely. Well, I kind of think that, you know, again, that sort of thing, you've been around long enough, there's still a huge amount of this innings to go. You know, how many times do you see players get out with 16 overs to go 40 odd, and you're going to go, what have I missed out on? Also important, you know, to see Saki Bahadur, 107 not out in the semi-final against the Hills. So let's not underestimate the significance of Pat Bose's wicket in the last over. Well, there was something that I spoke to you about. There's one thing that Chetty has done as coach is he's, he's pushed this whole element of everyone make contributions. Everyone has something to say. Everyone has something to do. And he's kind of generated that attitude amongst them. And they're a neat outfit. They have a decent seam attack. I think it'll probably be, you know, come what may, come what Leinster score. You know, the, the first 10 overs really will 
in many cases probably decide the trajectory of this match. Because I'll be very interested, you know, with what you've imparted here to us about how Werringstown are playing the game now, about, you know, how that will unfold. Looked a bit white to me indeed. Mark Hawthorne agrees. Mark not endearing himself to the big Warringstown opening bowler, is he? <laughs> Certainly not. And again, Roly Black, his assistant, obviously very well recognised on the international stage now. Roly's done the country proud with his contribution. Very calm official. Graham Hume just banging it in a little. Obviously Graham has been omitted from the squad of 15 for the India T20 series. I'm sure he was disappointed with that. It's been a great addition to Warringstown. Affable, gentle, gently spoken. But a very skillful cricketer in all regards. That's well bowled. You can see what he was doing actually, just trying to set him up, just putting him on the back foot to try and then attack the stumps. It's very well played by Peter Francis. Tell me a little bit about him. The St well, George's? St George Cricket Club. I think when you see him bowl, beautiful traditional action, bowls at a decent pace, takes the ball away from the right hander. And I think he'll be impressed with what you're going to see. He's had a, a good impact and certainly of any of the overseas players, and you spoke about this actually earlier in the sense of impact that overseas players have, and I kind of think back probably in the last 15 years there was one chap, Solway, who played for Pembroke got over a thousand runs in a season. And again, Carlos Braithwaite was probably the last, and that's back to 2009. Now it's in a sense, it's somewhat different in the sense that many players with first-class experience don't. But I even think back to the likes of Trent, Trent Copeland, who went on to play for Australia. He took 18 senior wickets. It was now he was a young man, in fairness, but and obviously you hear him on you hear him on commentary a lot in Australian cricket. Now Copeland, very good analyzer of the game, but uh, I think that will be the, the kind of the measure for me. It's just a question, really, I think, from Leinster's point of view of how far they can get. Probably when Bardor is in, you're kind of thinking to yourself, maybe 235, 240. But so much probably relies on, you know, Joe Carroll being there at the end. I would have thought he's got to be kind of thinking to himself, I need to get 100 here. He's played very well in difficult circumstances. He's had have to, sh have to shoulder quite an amount of responsibility. Seventy nine balls for his forty six. Starting his fifth over, four overs for thirteen loot with a big wicket of Saki Bahadur. He's done well. He's done well both at as you say, bowls wicket to wicket, it appears to me. How many seasons has he been with Warrington? This is just his first. Okay. I think we're very keen to secure his services again for next year. Right. Length is the key here from what I've seen from the spinners. You know, if you just get it on a good length, it's very difficult to score. If you're a little bit in the short side, you've plenty of time to rock back and play it. And as I say, if you're a little bit in the full side, you can play it down the ground. So length seems to be absolutely vital. Again, straight full. And hit hard back over his head. Great shot from Peter Francis. Good flow, swing of the bat, Louis. Well, that's... I heard again you talking on air about... So often that looked effortless, but it was the full face of the bat. Stayed lovely and upright. Lines were fantastic. And again, a lovely swing of the bat there. That's quality. Absolute quality, that. It's no better feeling when you take an off spinner down straight down the ground. 
Speak for yourself, Luke. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we didn't play much against one another, did we? I don't know if I have. Did I? No, I, I don't think we, we played with each other more mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we ever played against one another. Garfield Harrison was who we came across. Obviously, Alan Nelson too. Good work from Morgan Topping at extra cover. He'd have played a lot with Nelly and Gub, oh, yeah. two stalwarts well, at the club here. Well, I always said, and people have asked me, you know, like if you, you'll you'll hear people say, if you wanted someone to bat for your life. Who would it be? But if someone that wanted someone to bowl for my life, it would be Alan Nelson, hands down. Met metronomic. Only ever saw him welted in one match where we played together. There's a famous story goes around about Alan Nelson and Graham Hick at Clontarf. Is there any truth in it, Lou? Tell me more. The rumour has it that Big Nelly ran in and there, Graham Hick, a young Graham Hick, was playing, and Big Nelly nicked him off. And the, the home umpire gave it not out. Now, you know Nelly as well as I do. In his exasperation, the umpire said, everybody wants to watch this boy back. <laughs> and he went on to, I think, source significant hundred. And I still think if you want to get Big well, Alan Nelson chirping later on, ask him about the, well, the, the Graham Hick incident. It's funny that you say that. You know, obviously, we played in trophy games and... In many cases, they were painful for that very reason. I remember when Laura caught and bowled Doak eight, like complete and utter silence. I'm <laughs> come to watch you blokes play. I'm <laughs> come to watch him. <laughs> and you know that was that was kind of common theme then. And like again, if you had a rain affected game, you know three thousand people in, trying to persuade an international team to play. Oh, Cameron down now into the attack. James Cameron Dow uh, has been a wonderful addition to the club as player coach and a lovely bowler. When he gets it right, he gets great shape on it and he does spin it and he puts a lot of revs on it. And I dare say, you know, his contribution here in the next few overs may well be significant. Well, I notice he just walks in now. There's no kind of momentum through the crease or obviously he was... A bowler, left arm spinners, it just seems to affect them. I don't know why more than most in terms of that level of consistency that you talk about and trials and tribulations. And I, one hand, you've got to say fair play to him for battling through it, getting back. You know, because as you well know, you can bowl in the nets any day of the week, but when you come out to the strip at 22 yards, it's a different story. Has a test match 50. Yes. As well. Yes. And has made good contributions down the order with the bat. Well worked to the offside. Big outfield to try and defend, so two more to the total. Again, I could be tempted here, given the way that James Cameron Dow bowls, to bring Greg Thompson from mid-wicket across to strengthen the offside field and basically say, OK, Try and play straight against the spin to work it for a single. Still got cow corner out, so he's still got protection on the lay side. It's only ever going to be a single. Well, it's interesting that you say that. I'm a huge believer in that, Kyle. Particularly if there's any element of grip. You know, again, I remember talking to Hendy Wallace at the time about that type of thing, left arm spinners. And again, what you were saying, Mike Hendrick, you're a spin bowler. <laughs> you know, if you've got cover out there, you can still play mid on back if you want, 45. You know, to do that, and another very interesting thing, and sadly, you know, the players absolutely loved him, Nathan Horitz. Mm -hmm. You'd have you'd have loved conversations with him. You know, I had the pleasure of meeting him for a half an hour, and even Harry Tector, this whole business of him, just in mid-over, just move from someone from 45 behind point for one ball, then put him back again. Again, this thing that you talk mm -hmm. about of, what, 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 how am I going to impart my skill and make the bat the batter think that little bit differently, and I'd be with you there. Easily tucked off his hip. 
Yeah, Lou, we, we had lots of conversations about this. You know, as an off spinner, as a standard off spinner now in cricket, you're pretty much cannon fodder. So we looked at so many different ways of where we delivered the ball in the crease. You know, we moved from the stumps to the wide, you know, to the wide line. We bowled from behind the stumps. We bowled, we 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 paused, um, because batters had this forward press to try and get their rhythm. We thought, well, if they have a forward press, well, when I land them a back foot, I'm going to pause to try and obstruct them. Got to bowl the ball over the wicket, round the wicket, just constantly seeking to make the batter's job. We had to be more. Less predictable, you know. You see Murley and and you know um, Sackley and Mushtak and and these guys who had the Dujra. We didn't have a Dujra. We had your standard arm ball. So we had to had to think out of the box about all the different questions that we could ask the batsman. And uh, needless to say, I'm glad I don't play now with the advent of T20 because basically I think you don't play if you're, you're an off all spin, all spinners don't play unless well, you're unique. I I heard it actually described as Santa Claus coming down the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> if you find a finger spinner coming on, it's like the fellow with the big white beard coming down the yeah. chimney. However, it was it was interesting that uh, my daughter was telling me at practice when he was working with the spinners, uh, he'd have this kind of device at the back of the net with three sets of different lights, which was a trigger. And you talk about that business of delay, angle, line, and it would just come on just before your delivery that was telling you the batsman's going to give himself room outside leg stump. Where you, so you had to try and adjust mm -hmm. to kind of get your mind. And I thought it was so innovative. And that's over the top, over extra cover again. A very good shot from Peter Francis. And that's good from him. You know, what he's done well since he's come in, the momentum of the batting innings hasn't stalled. You know, you always say to yourself when you get a wicket, it's about, you know, the best way to slow the innings down is to take, keep taking wickets. So what I've been really impressed with here is the fact that as he's come in, the run rate hasn't stalled. He's just come in, he's playing his shots, good swing of the bat. And, you know, he's on 17 from 16, run a ball. And uh, Joey Carroll is now starting to accelerate. He's 49. He's one away from a well-deserved half century. And, you know, the Leinster run rate is 4.18. And again, normally now 220, 230 would be below par at Waringstown, but it's a cup final. Mm -hmm. Runs on the board, and as you, you have said, Leinster have a very strong seam bowling attack. You know, the question would be, if Waringstown were 11 for 3, do they have the ability to bounce back as Leinster have? Well, obviously, you know, you, you, you'd be much closer to the Waringstown team than I, so it'll be very interesting as, you know, their innings progresses, just your thoughts on things, but you know, the sort of stuff you talked about before, that famous game you played against the Hills, I think it was up in Breedy. You know, you were coasting, suddenly you lose a few wickets. And that's 50 for Joey Carroll. A wonderful innings of responsibility is what I would call. Kyle, you can talk about 87 deliveries, but if he's there at the end, close enough to 100, he's done a magnificent job for his team. It's been chanceless, and uh, he's looked totally assured at the wicket in very difficult circumstances. We've got to remember, Leinster were 11 for three this morning. And that quite rightly, a wide signal by Mark Hawthorne. Yeah, a little bit of turn. He pulls from very wide in the crease, and he just straightened that ball. Well, you see, there's your rationale for taking mid-wicket over to have basically those two fielders within 10 metres of one another, get him across that side, get him to play against the spin. Young Dennison in a short extra cover, potential leading edge. Yes, and you see, from my point of view, the other thing is, when you knock it through that gap in cover here, it's a very big boundary up the hill, so you're more likely to score two. When you knock it off your hip for a sit, you want to do well to score two to the leg side. So for me, I want to see Greg Thompson across, and uh, then say, OK, you want to work a single or you want to try and work a two, you're going to you're bringing the leading edge into the game. James Cameron has settled into his routine really nicely. I want to see Greg Thompson brought across. I can't tell our viewers... Of your gesticulations to long off here. <laughs> You've got to show your impartiality. I had to learn that very quickly with the BBC. I couldn't refer to we and us. 
Not good at that, Lou. No, Not I good know. at that, Lou. Sorry. <laughs> whether I'm commentating on the Irish boys, whether I'm commentating on my own club, that's a huge challenge. So. There's the batting card. A really good performance by the middle order of this Leinster side. But again, as I said, with a 35 and a 42, you know, Joey Carroll 50 not out. It's an absolute imperative that he now is there at the end. If he can convert that 50 to three figures, I'm going to say Leinster will be in very much in the pound seat. They'll be the favourites to win this game. If he goes to three figures, I would say Leinster will be the team ahead of the game, Lou. Wow. Well, I think, to be honest with you, Kyle, in the cup final, and again... Oh, that might have been mighty close. Again, Joey Carroll shuffling himself offside to try and get that gap open on the leg side for one. That's a real balancing act. You know, this between out and out aggression, but... Easy single there. Oh. I think if they'd pushed harder, they might have got two there. Kyle, to be honest with you, but again, that's the point I was making. It's very the ball goes towards the the, the mm. fielder down the hill, whereas when you're going up the hill, the ball tends to slope. So it's easier to run two up the hill than it is to run two down. So nicely bowled. Ball just sat up a little bit there. Well, you see, the interesting thing here is both is actually getting a reasonable amount of turn here, Kyle, which makes things that little bit more difficult, as you say. You know, he's bowling a very good length. Wicket to wicket. And really, you know, the batter really has got to ask him some, himself some questions. Is he going to advance? Mm. Nicely bowled again. That's very good bowling. Really good bowling. You just sense, and again, with this accumulation of dots, something is going to happen here. Now we're in the final power play that allows Warringstown to put that mid-off fielder that Peter Francis has beaten on a couple of occasions back to save the boundary. The other thing that may come to play, Lou, to add to the mystery here, is the weather forecast is for showers. Now one of the things that we always believed in doing when there was rain about was you always liked to bat second. Because if the, if the rain comes and the, and, and the game is shortened, I know Duckworth Lewis makes it much fairer. There's no doubt that it does. I've actually never got my head around Duckworth Lewis. I always feel that I'm always on the wrong end of Duckworth Lewis. Always. <laughs> no well, <matter> what. <laughs> we played a game there two weeks ago, and we lost four overs. We got 265 or whatever it was. And the revised target for the opposition was 257. That's kind of going. So they've lost 24 balls for the sake of seven runs. This is Christmas <laughs> for us. <laughs> And again, because, good shot. Excellent shot through extra cover. Again. Get the man for mid-wicket. Into the covers to give James Cameron Dow protection there. Mid-wicket hasn't touched the ball off James Cameron Dow's bowling. Although, well, mid-wicket, absolutely, I'm with you. But that's probably the first ball he's offered to drive of any significance since he's come on Cameron Dow. you say it's been a really good job by the middle order of Leinster here it's nicely bowled James Cameron out pace off Joey Carroll looking to hit that down the ground just got an inside edge on his boot I was looking these occasions you know, you Get to the end of the over, 48 balls. Shot. Nice use of the feet by Carroll. Could we get 60 or 48 balls? 65. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Minimum. Minimum. Eight, eight overs? 60? Eight and over? Eight and over? Mm hmm. Okay. Minimum. Okay. 10 and over. Five over. Ah, well, I understand. Five overs that, to yes. go. You're looking 10 and over. 50 off the last five. Yeah, go with that. Not that, I'm not suggesting that I want to go with no, that. No, no. <laughs> no, but it's interesting, isn't it, that, you know, and again, it's a t I, I, I'm not going to waffle on about this, but we, when we played cricket 
in limited over. We were consumed with the run rate. Yes. You know, and if it got over six, there was nearly, you know, you were getting the shakes. Yeah. That you had to keep up with the rate, and you watch so much cricket now, and you just stay deep, stay deep, stay deep. When we talk about DL, when you're chasing, DL is a very good sort of, uh, you know, method of comparing what. Oh, that's a nice piece of improvisation. Peter Francis got into that position early, made himself a left-hander, and another two to the total. Good cricket. He's looked exceedingly calm since he's come to the crease, hasn't he? He has. Francis. Louis, I'm going to stop you because Why? we got told off before for overstaying our welcome. All right. Are and you I think going? I think there's danger that it could happen again. But I think it's now time for me to depart and believe you in the safe hands of I, Ali McCalma. I'm not crying. <laughs> in, <laughs> I'll stay at overs. Thanks very much, Kyle. And. Lovely to have you back, Ali. So we've got, we were just talking there earlier, 48 balls. Can Leinster muster 65 or possibly 70? I'm not sure. Well, that certainly takes them into the game. Boat is going to continue. Just been walking around the ground there during a little stint, chatting to a few Leinster oh. supporters. Well, you're Mr. Cricket, Ali. That's it. You're the man. You are the man. You're yeah. Mr. Cricket. Just chatting, just chatting to a few fans up from from Leinster. And starting to get into the game a little bit <laughs> on the field and off the field. Let me assure you. And they were talking, two twenty five, two thirty. They were looking, and that was maybe five overs ago. Mm -hmm. So they'd be happy with two thirty, I think. As you mentioned there now, Alan. Um, if they can, if they can get these runs. Joey Carroll advancing down the wicket and so a big life that for Joey Carroll oh that could be no it's funny, he's just gone into a shell a wee bit. Now 53 from 93. And he's not that he's an unaggressive player. He can show huge levels of aggression. But you want to be trying to hit that maybe with the spin. Obviously, it's to the biggest side. I just can't say that, Alan. That's exactly what he's done. Could come back for two this time with the little fumble in the deep. Can almost come back for two. Well... As you say, almost probably a better percentage shot for him coming deep in his crease to try and play that shot rather than the, the reverse. Well, it was just too full for it, Ali, wasn't it? Mm. You know, often it's a premeditated shot. Similar. This time it'll only be one. Get McCollum out there sweeping. Well, the other interesting thing, Ali, is as the over comes to an end, Joey Carroll is a personal trainer by profession, so he's a very, very strong man in his own right. Mad, mad into his personal training, and there's your bowling card, the miserly Hume. Snell taking those two very vital wickets up front, and really both the, has bowled very well in tight situation. Eight overs for 35, so very interestingly poised, Ali, I think, this game. Well, I think it definitely is, and, and you can see from the bowling card, there's seven bowlers used, so lots of options now for, for the skipper if he wants to, to continue with. He's got Hume's only got two, obviously, but he has options there. But from where we were a couple of hours ago at 11 for three, certainly Leinster have fought their way back into this contest, and now at, at 180 for five with those seven overs to go, definitely back in the contest. Fortunately... Just off screen there, the umpires are having a little bit of a chat here. Delighted to say, the ball is thrown to James Cameron down. A little bit of a shrug of the shoulders, but I think he's being told to get on with it, and we're going to try and 
play on a little a little bit of a skiff of rain, but looking up up ahead, there's plenty of blue sky about, so on we go, though. Cameron Dye continues. Greg Thompson in the misfield there. He'd be disappointed with that. A great day in the field, the skipper. Dropped one. A few teapots out there with that one. As Trevor Bailey would have once said on the radio, that was a dolly. <laughs> it was a little. <laughs> the old dummy there. James Cameron Dice seems to be coming into the game more and more, the old dummy. Oh, that's a wide ball. Very interestingly, actually, Ali, another thing when you talk about personal influences, a man you would have known very well, Bobby Rayo, oh, yeah. had a huge impact on, and again, in terms of these types of situations about, you know, when you might look to seize on a moment and, you know, things that I would never have really ever thought about in terms of cricket, but first ball of a spinner's over, you know, look to take risk. Maybe get a boundary, you know, just unsettle someone. Again, that time they can tend to come in and just... No, that's not out. No. Yeah, really good point, Alan. In the, these days of international and even inter-pro cricket, they've all analysts and every team's got an analyst. But those guys, when they first came over, way ahead of the game. They had their analyst in their head, not, not on paper. Well, probably the other thing as well, to be fair, was it was this balance between coming down the pitch because invariably, you know, a slog sweep or a sweep was much the same like that. <clears throat> of where you'd come down the ground, hit down the ground. Terrific fielding just down in front of us here. On with the two of them. Pat Boda doing the fielding, but the mid-on fielder coming with him to help him out. Keeps it down to one. All those little things help out. Just four off the over so far. That'll be a dot. Again, you know, that, that type of delivery short. You know, Francis has so much space between Greg Thompson there and Midwick. He could have just flicked it anywhere on the leg side, keep the strike rotating. And that's clever. Should get two this time. Oh. It's run away. It's run away up the hill. In fact, he's got four. So that makes it just changes the over. You're talking about first ball of the over from a spinner. That just changes the over from four or five. Up to nine. And that's interesting too because that boundary brings us the third 50 partnership in a row for this middle order from Leinster who've re retrieved a very, very difficult situation at outset 11 for three they were earlier this morning. So 36 balls remaining, legitimate balls. But again, going back to that point, first ball, last ball, boundary. You know, an over for three or four suddenly becomes eight and nine. And uh, these are the kind of things that... How often do we see the last ball of an over alley go for a boundary? That's in the air, but it's in the gap, I think. Yes, it's in the gap. Push back on the boundary. It is only one. Hard to think that that could be one. It was such a long <laughs> way down to that boundary, but James McCollum does the field and knocks it back. And again, his partner... Down there, doesn't just watch it, goes round. It's a, just a modern day thing that you go every time and keeps it down to one. Tucked again, McCollum will do the fielding once more. This time just coming in from the boundary. Single again. Moving into the last five overs here. Well, this is the thing I was talking about, Jared Chetty. You know, he talks about everyone making a contribution. And that's a very good shot from Joe Carroll. That's in the gap, and that's four runs. That's a super shot from Carroll. And again, he got in a much better position to execute that shot, Ali. Yeah, absolutely. He was balanced when he actually hit the shot rather than trying to hit it too hard. He actually picked the gap that time. We've seen numerous shots out to that boundary, none of which have gone for four. But this time you can see he's well in position and hits the ball really cleanly into the gap for a boundary. 
That means now you can take the single with the single or scoring off every ball in the over with the boundary. Then that brings it up to that 8 9. That over, which is exactly what Leinster want. Closing in on 200 now. Bit of a hack there. Mm. Probably the first hack from Peter Francis. He's batted beautifully for his 32. Lovely calm assurance. That's really the first one he's had any sort of hack at, but it very, very well. I wonder is that a wide? Did I catch his pad? I think Must, have done. Must, Must have, have done. done again because it definitely was down the leg side. Yeah, you, you can see Peter Francis having a word with Pat Boda and Pat Boda is just tapping his tapping his thigh. So there we are. One of the twin towers there. We all know who that was, Gareth Delaney. Three sixes in a row from Ross Allen. And, of course, if he weren't with us earlier, his skipper showed great courage. And the bowler himself, Ross Allen himself, dismissed Gareth Delaney the next over. But they've just gone steadily along. Again, if they can look maybe to certainly get eight or ten and over from the remaining five overs. And it's interesting... Snell has been brought back into the attack and I don't know whether I'd be right in saying whether maybe Carroll, particularly with that short leg side boundary, Ali, I think he might be eyeing that up. Well, yeah, the funny funny thing about Joey Carroll, you just mentioned there now, about there's, the last three wickets have been three fifty partnerships and probably it'll go under the radar. He's, he's got 64 at the minute, but he's been a lesser partner in every one of those partnerships, but no less important for it. Absolutely. There you go. There's right, the start. The leg side. It's gone all the way. That's exactly the start that Leinster wanted. Joey Carroll pulling that delivery for six. It takes Leinster past 200 with just about five overs to go. And again, this is nothing against Ben Snell, but I, you know, when I see a seamer coming back like this, I'd say Joey Carroll. That's another one out of the ground. You see, it's going to be very, very difficult. And again, now, this is where you could see a massive sea change. Actually, we're quite, we're quite fortunate here. The captain is just five yards in front of us, and as soon as that ball was let go, you could hear that sigh. He sighed, and he no, he knew, he knew that was a short ball. But you can watch Joey Carroll in his setup now, taking that step back to off. He knows that's the shorter boundary. Anything of a length, that's the side he can hit. Well, you see, the other thing Ali is as well, that's his natural length. You know, that's where he was, you know, bowling early, early on. on. Yeah. Four overs. You know, he's... And again, in that fifth over, he just looked to be tiring a wee bit. You know, what's going to be harder to hit? James Cameron Dow spinning it away from you. Or, you know, you, you're in, you're 76, not out. I know what I'd want to face that's a very clean shot on it beat the fielders it's bolted down there as we said top athlete gets round it's a great piece of fielding from Bolta he just not alone did he gather it cleanly he had it back in at the rate of knots because that was hit straight down the ground yeah, lovely, piece of, lovely piece of fielding Now it'll be interesting to see what Francis does, Ali. Um, there's your answer. He's down on one knee. Flicks that over his shoulder. Gets plenty on it. And another boundary to the total. And that four has brought about the highest partnership of this innings. 212 for five. Who would have thought that, Ali? Well, at 11 for 3 this morning. He put on 200 runs for, for the loss of two wickets, which is an excellent recovery from the side. Well, that's the Cricket Union. I'm just going back to your, your point there, Alan. Is it another one of those cricket things that you you bring back your seamer? got to bring back your seamer. It's just one of those things that everybody always talks. Leave the spinner on. If he goes for a few, it's your fault. So they don't do it then. They say, bring the seamer back. But the seamer's gone for... What, 12, 15, 17 off this over? Yeah. So if that was a spinner, you'd be saying, oh, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? 
Oh, that's a cracking it. shot. That is a superb shot from Peter Francis. And again, you have to commend the way Leinster have gone about their business here, Ali. That is a superb shot from Peter Francis. And again, it was just that flow of the bat, the full face, all the lines correct. Coaches dream that. Shot of the day for me there. Clean. Again, not over stretching through the shot. Nice follow through and straight over our head here. A beautiful shot from Peter Francis. He's moved on to 42, now from 40. I mentioned just a few moments ago about those three partnerships, over 200 for the last three. And that's a tremendous comeback from Leinster from where they were. 57, 70 and 80 on broken now for these two. And as you can see on the left, Carroll just playing that role. It's been fantastic. He might not get the plaudits, but he hasn't there. He can't have those partnerships. So it's been fantastic from Joey Carroll and his partners. Wonderful innings from Joey Carroll. Faultless. Apart from, and again, you think about it, that miss stumping from Bush yeah, at a time when he was just on edge. You know, had, and batters go through periods like that, Ali. It's always a, a period. Game, yeah. In a 50-over game, there's periods where you got to suck up a little bit of pressure. And he's done that brilliantly. And now, the difference is in this last four, can he reap the reward now? And Kyle talked when he was on about getting to 100. Mm. He's only 23 short now. Well, the other interesting thing there, Ali, is that's a situation where you're a partner that just get me one. Mm. Just get me one. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Just get me one. Get down the other end. Have a breather. But he's played beautifully. Graham Hume back. These are big four overs for Warringstown now. They really are because they've been in the ascendancy, certainly at the very start of the innings. And sometimes, I, I talked about it before, sometimes it's a wee bit like the old football 2 0 is, is a poor score, you know. You're 2 0 up, what are you thinking about? You're 2 0 up. But they always talk about that's a bad score to <laughs> think about. Warringstown in the ascendancy. Now going in, if, if Leinster can finish this on a high, that, word, that M word we always talk about. Well, I kind of think, you know, in terms of momentum, and again, this is where Graham Hume, I would reckon he will be, it's going to make was, you know, even in terms of momentum to this point, from where they were, you know, would they have ever felt we'd be anything close to 230, 240? Probably not. But, you know, momentum is a huge thing in cricket. Just the one. Man back on the boundary. Keeps it the one. But you can see the difference in the two, the two ends here. You know, the young bowler coming in, bowling his lengths that he's used to bowling. Graham Hume has changed it up here. He's bowled three full balls. Nothing short to let Joey Carroll go onto that back foot and play into the leg side. But will he stay the same for Francis? I think he might. Mm. Or you might have maybe the bumper. <laughs> That's the only thing, but it, it certainly won't be a length ball. I am the old duff of the cap there, Mr. Lewis. You called that one very, very well. Telepathy. Telepathy, Telepathy indeed. Telepathy. But he but bowls a good bounce. He bowls a good bumper. Yeah, he he's does. got that in his locker. And I think that's what he's doing. You know, like, he's keeping the batter thinking the whole time, Graham Hume. And in complete contrast, just the one so far off this over. Yeah. Will Francis go down on one knee again? He'll play straight. Man back though. Keep it the one. Good stuff from him here. Well, you see, even still, Ali, you're going to have 12 balls from this end. And what I'll be intrigued with is who are they actually going to bowl from this end? And I would imagine... Well, that's a good point. When you go back to that semi-final against Pembroke, he stuck with Cameron Dye and I think the plant was over and, and he bowled very, very few runs on it. Graham Hume does the business. There's that full ball again. And he takes the wicket of Joey Carroll. 
Just the experience there of Graham Hume. Not ball in length. Either Yorkers or the odd bumper. But an excellent, excellent innings comes to an end from Joey Carl, as we've just mentioned. He stuck in there with his partners. Foreign partnerships was exactly what Leinster needed from 11 for three. He maybe won't get the plaudits for a classy innings, but really, really important for his team. He's gone for 78 from 108. Well, I thought that was just an absolutely excellent innings from Joey Carroll because Leinster wouldn't be where they are now without that innings. And you can talk glamorous, you can talk this, you can talk that. But uh, that was a, a hell of an innings for his team. Come what may, what happens. But he's been done by international mm -hmm. class. And uh, everything in the locker. Four, almost, well, certainly two Yorkers, two very defendable down the ground. You couldn't really get underneath them. The bumper, tremendous over from Graham Hume. Yeah, top class. Death bowling there from the international bowler, Graham Hume. And as we mentioned, um, it is going to be James Cameron. Dow. He is going to come on at this end again. You talked about it in the last over. What would you rather be facing? Especially now they've got a new man in. Well, Kristen De Beer has come in. Interesting. Patrick Lynch is a left-hander. Mm. And I would have thought they might have sent him in, more particularly in anticipation what's happening now. Uh, Tristan De Beer, he tends to bat lower down. Very good fielder. But it's going to be tough. And I would have thought playing kind of with the spin, left-hand, right-hand partnership, make Waringstown think a wee bit. Might have been the better option, but we'll know on the next <laughs> 18 balls. Definite intent here from Francis. He's decided that he's going to have to clear the ropes here, try and get up towards that 250, 10 and over would get them to 250. Round arm from Cameron Dye. There's only going to be one, I think. Yep. Just the one. That'll suit Waring's time. New man on strike. And as you say, the right hander. It's, you know, difficult in these situations. You're a hero of the villain alley. And realistically, with four wickets in the hut, she's got to try and do something. Well, he's done enough. Well, he's done enough. He's just tickled that right in the corner. He's got down the other end. You're right. He's got Peter Francis back on strike, and that's going to be the most important bit, that whatever happens, Peter Francis faces the majority of the deliveries that are left. He's going to try and get two here. Thompson coming in from the boundary. Going to Francis's end. It's a bit of a wild throw. And get back for two, and that's important as well. I don't think Bush fancied that <laughs> throw too much. Johnny, Johnny Bush showing every one of his, his his years there. I'm not going to tell you how many there are, but there, there's a few behind him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he'll be having a word with his skipper after that one, I think. A few deep breaths from Johnny Bush. Oh, that's six of the best, and what a way to bring up your 50 from Peter Francis. And you can see the emotion, what it means to him. He's into this big time, and that's a fantastic innings from Peter Francis. Ali, calm, assurance, great shots, striking ability, brilliant. Yeah, he's caught up beautifully there towards the end of the innings. Played a really class knock there, but I can just watch Cameron die here. He, he's been pulling the last three balls real round arm. That one, he's right over the top. Natural action. And he goes the distance. Let's see if he's going to bowl that flatter. I think he might go back to that. Let's have a look. It's okay. There's no fielder there. Just be one, though. He'll take that because that keeps him the strike. And that one shot changes the over again. Clean hit from Francis. Changes it from six or seven. And the double digit. Very clever cricket from Peter Francis. 
Big two overs here, aren't they? Yeah. Big two overs. If the 250 mark is, is brought up, we've talked a lot in this 50 overs about pressure in the final. You're chasing 250. You can't make too many mistakes chasing 250. If you're chasing 180, you've got a little bit of free, few free wickets, if you want to put it that way, but not 250. If they can get up to 250, Leinster from 11 for 3. <laughs> Bite your hand off. Well, I think what's going to be very important here, Ali, is how Peter Francis takes Graham Hume. And they're taking the single that's on offer, and I think that's, again, the wise thing to do. Fielders on the edge of the circle. Really what De Beer needs to be doing is just get bat on ball, run. That should be the conversation now, probably. He's probably had a chat in between overs, you would think. You get on strike, your job is to get off it again. Have a look around. You know, tell tell look around to find leg. <laughs> well, him pulling all these Yorkers. He will. He's dug out by the bear. Could have been pushing for two, but immediately Francis just said, I'm happy with the one. You've got off strike. Wow. It's Pat both out there. That's another that reason. <laughs> good piece of fielding. There's no no necessity if they can if Leinster are in a position where they can get maybe five or six off this over. You know, the short boundary, just use the head. They've done incredibly well to get to this point. Oh, that's it's gonna be a wide surely, and Bush has done fantastically there because that has bounced in front of him, he's worn another one. But he's done really well there. That could have gone for four wides. Certainly could. And he got off cross and put his body on the line again there. Like Brian Close when he's finished here. <laughs> he'd have a lot of bruises. <laughs> he's been diving around the place all day. If you haven't seen it, get on YouTube and look up <laughs> Megal Holding and Brian Close. I don't like, I actually, how did someone not get killed in that era? <laughs> that over, like... No helmets. No helmets, no nothing. And for our viewers that don't even remember who Brian, just tube Brian Close Holding <laughs> and ask yourself the question, would you play cricket after watching it? Play cricket we are, and here we're back here now. Shume comes in again. Francis has dug that out beautifully. That's a fantastic shot. It wasn't the worst ball in the world. It's full again. That's a terrific shot from Francis. He's dug that out, and it's gone to the boundary in a flash. Well, it's been a wonderful innings. Like, just so steady at the crease. Waits, watches, pure natural timing. That's a class cricket from... Peter Francis, it really is. And look at that strike rate. Fifty eight from forty nine, Ali. Take the one now, surely. Set up the last over. He could get oh, there's a man down on fine leg. That's a perfect outcome for Leinster. Actually the wide in the over, so there is one to come. See Francis is coming down to De Beer now and maybe saying Free hit. Go for your life. Free, free hit. hit. Do something. Maybe scoop him over two men up here. Third man. Really good cricket from Francis. There. Yeah, very happy, good. Because it's a free hit it is if he, he wants even numbers here. They're going to take the one. Well, they could get back for two now, and that is almost a perfect scenario for Leinster. They got two when the ball was hit. They were thinking about the one, take not, who we just stay, and then they've ended up getting two. Well, if you consider what Johnny Bush has to put up with, or has had to put up with for this innings. He'd be having a word with his skipper. The throwing from the deep yeah. over the last ten overs has been very poor. But to get Francis back on strike huge. with a misfeel like that, huge... And that 250, bang on the horizon now. It's 
been great from Francis and Leinster as a whole. Just looking at the figures there, though, Graham Hume, 10 overs, one maiden, two for 35. Very impressive from Hume, both first up and that little spell he came back at the end there. A little bit unfortunate, I suppose. Francis has just picked him up. So the last over, Cameron died a bullet. Bowling to Francis. Comes down. Clean hit again over the top. He's done him again. Surprise with Cameron and Dow there again, Ali. He just floated that one up, didn't he? Hit me ball. Yeah. This is a hit me ball. And this guy's been in for a bit now. He's got his eye clean in. He's just floated up in the slot. Lovely follow through again. Some innings this. Will it be a match winning innings? Some innings. Ali. 249 now for six. Francis 65 or 50. Already partnership 29 from 13 balls. Some effort by this lower order. Oh, and that's also six of the best. And doesn't it just prove to you, Ali, you take a game deep, you do what Joey Carroll has done, you look at how everyone has chipped in. Who would have ever thought, with four balls remaining, Leinster would be on 255? Yes, the old poker phrase, isn't it? Chip on a chair. you got one <laughs> chip on a chair, you're still in the game. It's been fantastic. And another goal there, it's come back off the keeper. I don't want to say it doesn't really matter at this stage, but with 12 off the first two deliveries, you would have been happy with 12 off the over. I don't think from here, like obviously with three to go. Mm -hmm. There's that round arm again. It's in the air, but it's going to fall short. Watching the spin there. Now, there's a situation I don't think I would have taken that no. run. Probably not. You have a chance of 12 off these two balls. But again... The bear might go here and pump one into the field. We no, we're not allowed to do any of that sort of stuff. Sorry, Ali. He goes. He's going to get one. Gets Francis back on strike. In his own little way, De Beer's done well. He he's has. got bat on ball. He's got Francis back on strike every time. So the last ball of the innings. Francis now on seventy-two. Boat is coming in. Oh, it's just dropped short of him. Terrific effort again. Probably the only man that could have got near it. It comes back for two. That, that is a tremendous effort from a Leinster. But it all the way down. You can see them out on the field there. High fives galore. They're going in. 259 for six. And from 11 for three you got to say, he'll be happy going in at the break. Oh, incredibly happy. That was wonderful cricket, Ali. I, obviously, we're both neutral here today, but for the neutral to see the way they reconstructed that innings and to see what it meant to Peter Francis hugging De Beer. He's the overseas player. Of
No control, of course, and that is open your eyes. It is the Arakas Irish Senior Cup Day. Delighted to see so many people here today. It really is a wonderful occasion on behalf of everybody in Cricket Island. Can I welcome you to the lawn today? Lovely to have you here in such numbers. Earlier on today, Leinster won the toss elected to bat and scored 259 runs. Hence Waringstown will require 264 victory. Can I remind you, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, 
that no one is permitted onto the field of play during our game or indeed following our game. Remember, there is plenty to eat and drink here today. Just head to the car park where you will find lots of lovely beverages. Also, the clubhouse bar is open and awaiting your business. It is the Arrakis Irish Senior Cup Final. And would you welcome onto the field of play, please, our two standing umpires who are Rowley Black and Mark Orthorn. Would you also welcome onto the field of play, led by their captain, Bilal Azar, Leinster Cricket Club. And would you welcome to the wicket to open the batting for wearing sound? Please welcome James McCollum and Adam Dennison. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome back. Delighted to say it is a warm welcome. The sun is out. Back to the lawn for this Arrakis Irish Senior Cup final between Warringstown and Leinster. A reminder that Leinster won the toss, decided to bat. Warringstown bang on top in the power play. Reduced Leinster to 11 for 3, but a fantastic comeback from the Leinster side. Three consecutive 50 partnerships. Joey Carroll involved in all and then... A great innings at the end from Peter Francis took them up to 259 from their 50 overs. So, big chase of 260 here for Warringstown. I'm delighted to be joined by Warringstown legend, Cal McKellen, who's right beside me here. Cal, you were just chatting to me off earlier. Not too sure which way we would sit here. What way do you think? I have to say, uh, my, my heart is saying... It's a very chaseable score at Warringstown. 260 is not out of the equation. My head saying 260 batting first in the cup final. If I was in the fielding team, I would feel we very much had the upper hand. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Here we go then. Oh, and a bit of carry first up there. Here's Peter Francis coming in from the wearing end. A lot of talk. Obviously, the Northern Cricket Union guys don't often get to see the guys from Leinster week in, week out. There's been a lot of talk around the area the last couple of weeks about Pace of Francis on that first ball. Good carry through to the keeper. Yeah, I've heard a lot about Peter Francis. Classical bowling action. Hit the length hard. And really, that ball has gone through beautifully at shoulder height to, to Young Tong, the keeper. He's very tall for a wicket keeper, I have to say. So shoulder height's quite impressive. Adam Dennison nicely in behind that second ball. I think, Ali, the first 10 overs, the power play here, will go a long way to deciding the uh, destination of the Bob Kerr Irish Senior Cup. I tend to agree with you there, having a chat, as you do, in between innings, there are a few people around the ground, and really important partnership here for Warringstown. James McCollum obviously back into the side, Irish International. Adam Dennison fresh off 100 last week in the Cup Final. So you think that these two really can set a platform for their other side. In comes Francis again. And we get our first run. A little bit of hesitation there between the two. They come through for the single. Dennison gets off strike. And that brings James McCollum down to face the music. Yeah, a little bit of confusion there. Nicely tucked off his hip. But if you were listening earlier on, with a bit of a discussion, I can't ever remember playing against Alan Lewis. And it turns out, thanks to Ger Siggins, 
that I did. Um, Ulster Town versus South Leinster in Coleraine in 1995. And probably the reason why I can't remember is because Alan Lewis got three for 24. <gasps> Pitch must have been poor that day. Oh, that's a beautiful... Um, that is an absolutely beautiful delivery from Peter Francis. However, James McCollum opened the baton in the test match at Lords, and one of the things that people commented that the test match was the fact that when he plays down the line, he just holds the line, he doesn't allow his hands to chase it, which is probably why he's played inside the line. Had he chased that a little bit, he may well have feathered that through the, to the wicket keeper or the waiting slips, but a very impressive start here by Peter Francis. Looks very threatening with the new ball. It's very important that Warrington dig in here and, and make and, and set an early platform for what is a, a, a substantial chase. The ball just off the edge there. Like any batter, it doesn't matter what level you're playing at. You want to get settled. You want to get off the mark. You want to get settled. Bat on ball. You'll not be on James McCollum's Christmas card list with a comment like that. I would say that's an outside half rather than... Rather I think... <laughs> I think... <laughs> but you're wearing some hat on again there. Ball's going to backward point. But yes, again, just that little nice ship. You know, very impressive start. Nice ship. From, from Peter Francis. Look, they're taken away from the right hander. Again, good carry. Three to finish the first over. Just the one from it. A little flick off the hip for Adam Dennison, but a good opening from Peter Francis. Reputation well backed up there from that first over. Good carry through. And also, you look at the deck then. The deck looks to be carrying through there very well. Not just the pace from the bowler. You can carry through to the keeper. And yeah, in well, a way, that'll shoot, shoot Warrington. You would think ball coming onto the bat. Yeah, look, we went out, I went out at half time there to have a little nosy third on park, Gareth Morrison. Very protective <laughs> of the strip, I have to say. He kept you off it right He did, didn't he? But it looked a good pitch. You know, it certainly looked hard. The ball's going to come on okay. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, 260 whilst this is a good chase is not out of the question by any stretch of the imagination but I dare say this man the Leinster captain Bill Alazar bowling left arm seamers will, will want to make that mountain that Waring Sound have to climb that little bit steeper here in the par play yeah I just think the score that's on the board now means that Waring Sound have that less just that little bit less of room to manoeuvre a wee bit they can't give away any wickets really whereas we were chasing 150 160 you can maybe lose one or two but you know free ones if you want to put it that way but certainly yeah. we're chasing 260 you've got to be on the ball even the difference between 220 230 mm. and 260 is significant so um but like i say the sun is now shining beating down on on the glorious lawn 260 has set up a wonderful game of cricket and let's hope that uh, the two teams continue to provide you know a real landmark occasion for for the Irish cricket watching public. So well now, Zart, start from the Clare Road end. A little bit short on the pull there. Adam Dennison will be cut off from the square leg boundary. He gets two. A little bit short there from Zart. He want to use the facilities up. He want to use the swing. If there is any on offer. She said with a wee bit of Sunshine, maybe not just as much as we, we saw early on tonight, this morning rather, um, with Graham Hume particularly. There was a wee bit of, wee bit of shape, not much, but a little bit. Look, you'll be gone, and is. There's the first wicket. Adam Dennison chasing one. Wide outside the off stump. He got the neck through to Hogan. The first wicket goes. It's a big wicket for Leinster. They got rid of Adam Dennison, who's been in form of that century last week. But he's gone for three. First breakthrough for Leinster. Yeah, big blow. Centurion in the Senior Cup final in the NCU. Hazar here just bowling the ball. It's wide out off stump. Adam Dennison's thrown the kitchen sink at it, and he's feathered it through to Michael Tong, who makes no mistake. And the much-needed early breakthrough for, for Leinster brings Pat Botha, the Warrington overseas player, to the crease. Yeah, we mentioned just in the last ball, the first ball he bowled was a little bit short, but he's pitched that one up. 
whether there was much movement, I'm not too sure. But a healthy well, neck, gentlemen. healthy Can neck there from Dennison. And as you say, Carl, that brings in Pat Bota to the crease and a big innings. Goes without saying every single batter that comes in now. But a big innings for Bota now. He was batting five for Warringstown at the start of the season. Changed that up recently. He's been coming in at first drop. And here it is, he's in in the second over. The one thing about the Warringstown side this year, you know, that has been a, a sort of trademark of theirs is they just keep coming. You know, the, the, the semi-final against Pembroke, they got 248, I think it was, bowled out in the 43rd over. So they will keep coming hard. They don't believe really in playing conservative cricket, which is what I was so impressed about with Joey Carroll and so on. He dug in and set the platform for what is an imposing enough total. Yeah, it's been something I've been talking about every every round as we've gone through this tournament. Especially with, with Greg Thompson, the captain, I've talked about those three matches here at the lawn, they've been behind probably in all three games. The Leinster sides that they've played, Clontarf, Marion and uh, Pembroke in the last round, probably were sort of three to one at fun stage in each one of those. And just that depth in the batting, but it's going to be tested here today. The key thing is at any stage in a run chase, there's going to be sticky periods and you've just got to be able to work your way through them. You've got to not panic. We saw, I think, Leinster must have scored guts of 100 runs in the last 10 overs. Um, so it's important just to keep your head. Yeah, we talked about that during the Leinster and how sometimes you just got to hold in there, hold the pressure. It's a long game, 50 overs a long game. Yeah. That's what Leinster did so well from 11 for 3. Just held in the game. Good start from the Leinster captain. He'll want to make up for his failure with the bat, won't he? He was Definitely. first man out. And he has certainly he has certainly started very well with the ball. Always good to have a left arm option. Mm -hmm. That's cut. Through the gap. In the power play, nobody out in the boundary. Boda hits his first boundary. The last ball of the over. Goes for four. Nice and calm there from Boda. Pushed it through the offside. Goes for that boundary. I think the best way to describe Pat. Languid, you know, he's got a nice free-flowing swing of the bat. Gar-esque. Caress to the covers. That's the first boundary of the Warringstown innings. Yeah, those are the types of shots he likes. Just not over-hitting. He's not a massive power hitter. Likes to manoeuvre the ball quite a lot. Pat's down the order for his state side in South Africa, but obviously button three here. He still scores quickly. Doesn't doesn't like to hang around, but he's not not a massive power hitter. Francis back now. That's sharp. That's sharp. Just around the column up a little bit. We got a good game on here, Cal. Without a shot of a doubt, Ali. A real examination here of the warning sound openers. Peter Francis looking very threatening. Good pace, good areas. James McCollum just going to have to see through the the new ball. Just yeah, we've see. talked about quite a lot in the, the test series when when Mark Wood came on. High pace just changes. And obviously, we're we're not at. Mark Wood sort of pace here in this scenario, but just that extra little bit of pace, getting through and it's just hurrying batsmen up, hitting the keeper's gloves, just gets people chatting and oohs and ahs in the crowd, and it's good to see a quick bowler in action. Yeah, but, you know Peter Francis isn't express, but then he stretches the imagination. But he's got good. Pace. The thing that's impressed him here, he's just got that little bit of shape. You know, he's he's taking the ball away from the right hander. He's going to look here, obviously left hander for him. He just want to get his line right. Interesting that second slip has moved now to Gully. It's lovely bowling. Economical action. Yeah, he doesn't waste much coming in there. And sometimes you see the run up. 
a bit of a waste of a run up when they come through, but you can see them going through the crease. Everything goes forward. It's not wasted. I think that's exactly. It. He just, you know, he he's, he just yeah, he's making it look quite straightforward and quite easy. What really impressed me about him actually was just listening to him and the energy that he spoke to his teammates. You know, your overseas player, you want to bring much more to it than just batting and bowling. So he seems like a guy who's made a big impression at his club. Yeah, really good point you make. Actually, I was on commentary at the very end of the innings and Young De Beer had only scored six or seven, I think, but he'd done exactly what Peter Francis wanted. He turned the strike over, he didn't waste any balls. And he actually gave him a big high five when he walked off. He'd only mm -hmm. got seven, but they put on... 35-40 for the last wicket. So a little bit, he could have just walked off, but he made sure his partner yeah. got, the, got the recognition for the, for the good job that he did. So it's good to see an overseas professional, as you say, just buying into the club a little bit. Well, Carlos Braithwaite's here, you know, played mm. in 2010. So you can see that maybe it's just part of the culture and the DNA of the place. There's a big shout, big shout. More heads and hands here. Seen that a few times and there we are, hands on hips, looking at the umpire. I'm a big fan of that, to be honest with you, given this decision. But again, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. You can just see he's looking to bring the ball back in to Pat Botha, attacking the stumps, looking for those LBWs. Let's have a look. I think it just looked a little bit on the high side. Roly Black with that. <laughs> Solid. He's very stoic. Stoic is the way of putting it. Not much movement. Not much. You're not there. gonna. You're not gonna put him under undue pressure. Definitely that's why. Not. That's why umpires all over the world. This is all going off here now. And this is all going off. He's giving it as a wide. And you can see. Leinster players gathering round. I've had Richards all those years ago. Yeah, there looks to be daylight between bat glove and so on. Certainly does. Whether or not Pat no. both has clipped himself. But I have to say, Rooley Black is doing to Peter Francis <laughs> that Mark Hawthorne did to Graham Hume in the first innings. <laughs> Absolutely. They're not endearing themselves to the fast bowlers today, but... Well, it looked a good decision, though. It looked, a good, it decision. looked a good decision. But I can give you an absolute guarantee here, Cal, like the crowd's getting involved. You can hear the Leinster supporters over to our left starting to get involved in the game. But another top over from Francis, just the two from it. He's only gone for three. Mooringstown, nine for one from those first three overs. Good start from the big Aussie pace bowler. Two overs for just the three runs. Asking for a lot of questions of the Warringstown batters. As has the Leinster captain, Bill Alazar, about to start his second and the fourth over of the innings. A nice contrast. Left arm looking to shape it in as opposed to the right arm looking to take it away. Very similar indeed to the wicket. This time though, all along the floor. A little bit more of an edge on that one. McCollum gone for four. Through the gate. And the DJ's playing the Venga boys. The DJ's are ramping up already. Don't think he's the official DJ now. Is that Heatley Tector on? I don't on, think so. On. I don't think that's Heatley's. <laughs> I think that's it, this game. I think that's the Leinster pin box going. James McCollum almost going the way of his opening partner, Adam Dennison, chasing a wide one, but his front pad just down, as you can see, on the line of middle stump. Yeah, you could have put the old R in the top corner there for a replay. Very similar indeed. So we're just pushing it across the left armor's classic push across the right arm. Right batter, right hand batter, sorry. Plenty happening out there. Lots of appeals. Mm. 
It's an Irish Cup fan. Well, it there's is a lot indeed. of excitement. There's a lot, a lot of, of nerves. And, uh, that's what we're here for. Can't play hard in an Irish Senior Cup final. Not sure when you're going to play hard. You know, you and I were discussing that earlier on about the potentially. You know, it's all become a little sterile and mm -hmm. there's there's an asset. It's nice to see a wee bit of needle and a little bit of aggression and and that real competitive edge. Yeah, I talked about that actually in during one of the Inter Pro games. Uh, Barry McCarthy down uh, one of the games. I think in Pembroke. I watched them. I think it was on the on the wasn't live at the game, but I watched them going down to the pattern, giving them a few verbals. Watch a lot of Inter Pros, and I don't see much of that. You know, they're playing together so much now. Good friends, good mates off the pitch. I'd love to see a wee bit of, wee bit of rivalry, even if it's an NCU, LCU thing here. Just a wee bit of rivalry in the game again. Not going too far, but see a good contest here between a Northern Cricket Union team and a Leinster Cricket Union team. And we talked about that. I got a little bit of stick for raising it early that last year CIs win, CIYMSs win. Took the NCU ahead by one. Did Last it? year, 16 wins to 15 now in the Irish Senior Cup. Okay. With eight to the Northwest. So it's 16 to 15. Oh, I like that kind of thing. I like to hear and then yeah. see if Lancer can even it up today or can Warringstown take it a wee bit, wee bit further. You should get the NCU guys supporting Warringstown today and everybody from Lancer should be supporting Lancer. It's... You're representing your union, that's kind of what the Irish... You want to be representing your own club, of course you do, but if you're not in it, let's get behind the ones from your union, you know. Um. I was just talking there at, throughout the day to Andy Christie, who won the Irish Cup on a few occasions with the, that very strong Limavati side from, a, the, I think, in the 90s, the uh, noughties, yeah. Yeah, yeah. late 90s, yep. Yeah. Dagger and the boys. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that's just the one thing about the competition this year. Maybe a, it's disappointing me a little bit was the Northwest. They fortunately lost every game in the first round. And I'd love to see the Northwest get a, a real good run because, I mean, the last time Leinster were in the final, you're talking about Carlos Braithwaite. He was in that, in that final against Donovan, and it was one of the the famous the, bouncer. The famous bouncer. It's just going to come to it. Um, still talked about uh, in Donovan and and Leinster, the famous bouncer. Um, and, uh, no helmet in that day. We talked with Brian Closer and no helmet that day. And Carlos Brathwaite was pretty sharp. <laughs> pretty sharp. You know, that's some of your... Now, upon retirement, you know, you look back at those games when Warringstown or Clifford, we played at Donnemana in the home where you went up to Brady. Or, they're brilliant. The atmosphere, uh, the theatre of it, it's, a, it's certainly unique. Uh, they're unique Absolutely. places to go and play. Some very, very, very talented cricketers. That's what disappoints me a little bit that the, the the club sides can't get a run, get a run in the Irish Senior Cup, whatever it may be, because we're just talking about the unions get made. You can guarantee whatever Northwest team goes goes furthest in the competition, they'll be right behind them. The, the big thing, I suppose, you know, when you look at it, so many of the top players from the Northwest are playing their trade in club cricket elsewhere, mm -hmm. and you can't afford that player drain. No. Um, and I know there's a lot of Sterling working on. There it is, James McCollum, York by Peter Francis. Warringstown now in big trouble at 14 for two. Yeah, Francis has done the business there. He's, he's looked a class act that we thought. Just a bit of pace there and just fires that one through. Beats James McCollum's defence. And he's got so second wicket here. 14. Going for five, Bull Francis. And 14 for two now, Warringstown. They've got to do a similar rebuild job now. Big task now. Let's have a look at it again. Full ball from Francis. He's been, he's been absolutely excellent in his opening overs there. You can see just clipping the off stump. So two down. Brings Morgan Topping to the crease. Morgan Topping fresh off 150 in his most recent cup final and certainly somebody who would be hoping to be one of the next cabs off the rank in international cricket. A very impressive young batsman. And Warrington are going to need him to stand up today. Home side under huge pressure here against a very good 
Leinster bowling. Ta- Alan Lewis told us that he probably felt that the Leinster seam bowling and the Leinster bowling was stronger than their batting. And certainly on the on the basis of the evidence that we've seen so far, there they've made an excellent start. Yeah, he looks to be bang on there. As we've mentioned a few times now, the reputation of Francis came before him. He certainly started in a manner to back that up. So Topping's going to have to face it now. Francis and Morgan Topping. Classical leave. First ball. And that's now 15 deliveries. And I think every one of them has been pretty threatening. Well, certainly he's got his just rewards. He's looked threatening. He's asked a number of questions, both of the batters and the umpires. Mm. And there's no doubt that Warringstown are both literally and, and proverbially on the back foot. Big shout again. Looked a bit drifting. You always know straight away as the umpire walks his way to the offside that there's an indication that that ball must have been sliding down the leg side. What I like here is not just his pace, but the length he's bowling. He's attacking the stumps. He's not afraid to go full. He's going to say, if you want to drive the new ball, drive the new ball. Um, and certainly, if I were Joey Carroll and Saki Badur in the slips, I'll be very much concentrating here. Yeah, top class this. From Francis at one end here. No runs coming at all. And a low, low topping played one of the great senior cup final in the NCU innings last week. Speaking to a few boys, he did, did struggle early on. Found it hard to get going. Took him to get to the 20s and 25s before he felt comfortable. He, he admitted that afterwards that he wasn't timing the ball and I suppose you could say that about every batter. It's difficult to start, but he did find it hard last week. Once he was in, he was he was a class apart. That was a good shot. The man down there. And he's two will be quick. You make a very good point, but uh, you know I played a lot of cricket, and at no stage was your innings ever straightforward, and you had to be prepared to dig in, and we saw that earlier today. You know, again, you could argue that Warringstown are ahead of the game here because at the same stage, I'm sure Leinster were slightly less well off. But the point I'm making is that even under the pressure that Leinster were under, Joey Carroll and Gareth Delaney just dug in. They they sort of they, they took the heat and they got a little bit of momentum going. And then whenever Gareth Delaney got out, Joey Carroll stayed on. And again, he was 50, I think, off 89 balls. And then all of a sudden he got going. So. You know, I don't. I don't ever really recall an innings, even in my own career, where anyone's just gone in from ball one and timed it and got going. Yeah. Okay, very occasionally is that the case. So, you know, Morgan will look back on his his experience of the senior cup final and think, well, I struggled for the first twenty odd, but he, he ended up with one hundred and fifty. Mm-hmm. So it's mentally, it's taking yourself through that. Absolutely. False alarm from Belalazar. I hope we had just thought for a moment there he's pulling up. He's lost his run up. But I was saying a lot in the first innings, I think it's always about challenging the batters with different problems. So we have pace and away swing and right arm angle. From one end, we have slightly less pace, and left arm, lower arm. As you can see, he's a shorter man. They're, they're posing different problems to the batsmen. Um, so it's a, it's a complementary bowling attack. Really funny how sometimes batting can look really, really easy. And then 10 minutes later... Look like a minefield. So I mean, you know, we watched the end of the Lancer. I know it's a different time time of the game and the ball's moving about early, but wicket does look difficult at the minute. It looks hard batting out there. Batting does look hard. Uh, new That's ball. the quality of the bowling as well, I suppose. New ball. You've got to earn the right yeah. to score runs. You yeah. know, which is what after that difficult start, exactly what Leinster did. But we talk about complementary bats, you know, complementary bowlers asking different questions. But you only got to look at the England Test team and their openers. You've you've Crawley and Tuckett. One's six foot four, and the <laughs> other one's I don't know five yeah. foot four. Easy now. One's right handed, one's left handed. Yeah. One plays a certain way, the other one plays a certain way. So as a bowler, you're being challenged. That you know, so these are the sort of intricacies I think when it sits down to selection and when you look at your team strategy and the team execution that I think you've got to really give much more thought to. Very similar with the bowling attack here. 
mm-hmm. as you mentioned, mm-hmm. you know, different shapes. Mm-hmm. It's not getting the batter's not getting a line to pick yeah. a line. Up on the toes. Boda. Uh, you talked about his pace. That's brilliant running because the mm-hmm. Leinster side have adapt- adapted their field. They have a man at deep cover point. But Pat Botha has turned what arguably is a one into a two. Yeah, you look up look up the old Oxford English stitch me under Pat Bota and that is exactly <laughs> what he does. That is him. You'd see runs between the wickets like lightning. That is that is Pat Bota in a nutshell. Turns that one into a two. That's how he accumulates quicker. The boundary should get there. It does. Keeps it down to one. Good throw from the deep. Right over the sticks. For Hogan. They mentioned at the end there, Tony Bush was taking a few a few in the midriff, <laughs> half volleys, and you know, he was struggling to get up a few times. I just remember playing with Nala Bryan, and unless you, you hit his gloves perfectly, he gave you that verbal tirade or a stir. Or, you know, I think those standards are very, very important. I think Warringstown were sloppy towards the end of the runnings. Just that extra little bit. Even body language, intent, if you're hitting the keeper. Yeah, I was always told that first couple of overs, feel the ball in the covers or mid wicket, hit the keeper. Hit the keeper's gloves hard. Let them the batter show that you've got intent in the field. Just hit the keeper's gloves, even the sound of the ball hitting the keeper's gloves. Gives off a good impression in the field and say. We also believed that if the keeper got up to the stumps and you're firing the ball in, you were invading the batter's mm. space. You were just making them aware that you were there. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Lovely timing from Morgan Topping. Leads the man at backward point. No no sweeper on the third man boundary and that's the second ball one went through the slips this one's through backward point second boundary and we may well see a change in the field as a result yeah that's actually that's kind of the shot that Alan Lewis was talking about off the spinner or the batter has just let that Morgan Topping has just let that come on to him that extra little split second and then played it late and cut it behind the man at point and as you say there's nobody back there they've changed it up now Better ball, full on the stumps. Kept out. Completes the over. Six down. 24 for two. I think as the batting team, you have to hang on to the fact that, you know, even the new ball... They're still scoring at four runs and over. It's a difficult ground to defend. Just a case for me. Wickets in hand. Making sure that the platform is set. And being prepared to do the hard graft. Absolutely. And I think in terms of ability, these two are great. Just see this ball out. But also exactly that. They're going to turn the strike over. They're quick between the wickets. Talked about Boda quite a bit already, but Morgan Topping's sharp between the sticks too. If these two can start running well between the wickets, that will keep keep the scoreboard ticking over without the risk that Warringstown can't really afford to give away here. So you can see little singles and twos that we've seen in the last over. Just keeps it ticking over. Personally, for, for Morgan Topping, having scored 150 last weekend, a big score today. What you've got to do is start wrapping the door very hard and, and big innings under pressure and big games uh, certainly get the attention of those people who might be picking national sides. Nicely worked off his pad again. So for me, it would be a real personal incentive for somebody who I think has all the attributes to play at the very top level. I think it's a case of when rather than if. Um, no better opportunity today. Today, yeah. Well, the best thing I thought about him last week is he when the really good players manoeuvre the field when you see them the captain changes the field and then you've got the ability to hit the gap then he did that towards the latter end of his innings he was brilliant last week 
He needs to work on his interviews, though. We better media training. <laughs> not, not, not he's a man. Of, he's, he's a man of few, few words. words. Change, just not like just, just like yourself and myself, Ali. <laughs> a change here from Peter Francis. He's going to come round the wicket to Pat Botha. And the one thing I've seen Pat before, if he if he comes round on the angle, Pat's very prepared to whip and play that ball up over sort of backward square leg. If he strays in the wrong place. There you go. Quite over square leg. He's got that a little bit straighter. But just into the pads. A little bit of a half volley. And this quality. Not going to miss out on that. It's just that change of angle has actually helped the batter there. You can see. Lovely shot. Punched. Clean through mid wicket. And our boundary. To put that. Sticking with round the wicket. As you can see, Pat Bulta just open stance. And it's off the thick outside edge. Well bowled, Peter Francis. Press of this. Yeah, it's been good. Good little by play between the overseas players there. I like to see that. And a good contest, a real good contest between the two of them. Good atmosphere, isn't there? Good atmosphere on the ground. To be honest with you, Kelly, I was just thinking that. I was actually just thinking exactly that. That's Beautiful a shot. shot. Just lent on it. Hasn't quite timed it, so the ball's down the hill. Hasn't quite timed it. That's two. Good work. What I like there. There's two Leinster feet. You know, that, that, that was something that we prided ourselves on. You have two men chasing every ball, three men chasing every ball. So, you know, you're, you're, you're sliding, you're picking up, you're lobbing it next for it. That's very often the difference. That one, that, if that turns a two into a one or a three into two, those marginal gains, those small little one percenters of things between winning and losing. Well, we marked on that. Lang the Langstein fielders on the, the, the bigger boundary here, the two of them worked together, certainly for the first. 40 overs and Francis again looking for that Yorker. Topping's defence is up to the task. He keeps it out. And it's 33 for 2. But yeah, you, just talking about it there, I'll probably be going off the sample you bit of that atmosphere in a minute. I will this will be coming back in shortly. But just looking around the ground now. Good throng of people right round the ground and second in and starts and the atmosphere starts to build. You can hear the Leinster fans getting into it, and that'll that'll bring the Warrings Town people up. And it just starts the atmosphere. And there's nothing better in a cricket match when it gets tight into the last few overs. If it, you get the crowd involved, that's that's exactly what you want to see in a in an event like this. Well, as, you know, as a Warrings Town player, what you want to be doing is breaking this chase down in the little segments. You know, you'd be thinking to yourself, well, we'd be backing ourselves to get 120 off the last 20, or in fact, that you know, hmm. 140 off the last 20. So really what you're thinking to yourself here is now we need 80 of the next 23 overs. It's not, you, you, you know, when you break your chase. And, and, and the other thing about that is the closer the home team get to the finish line, then the more the crowd gets involved, the more the atmosphere puts pressure on the bowling side. So yeah. it's a very important here, as we talked about, that the Leinster bowlers now, whilst they're on top, that they keep their foot down, they stay on top. They don't let Warrington away. Oh, it's been spliced. And in actual fact, what's happened, the failure to score leg has mistimed that and misjudged that completely. He's moved backwards. And by the time he's realised that he hasn't timed the ball, Pat Botha hasn't timed the ball, he's really misjudged that. That should have been a fairly straightforward catch, the square leg. Well, when we heard the ball coming off the bat, you immediately knew it had been spliced. And you thought, well, that's that should be out. It's gone. It's lobbed up in the air. But as you mentioned, the, the fielder didn't. Didn't pick it up, didn't move towards the ball. That's a huge let off. We've just been talking about wickets. Mm -hmm. That's a huge let off. What we're seeing here is Bilal Azar is changing tact as well. He's going to come now round the wicket to the right handed Morgan Topping. Plays 
inside really well, solidly in behind it. Plays the ball late. What we see a sign of somebody plays the ball late, the ball lands at their feet when they play it into the ground. But you just wonder, will Leinster rue that misjudgment? I'm not even going to say a mischance, just a misjudgment. Definitely think that he thought the ball was, was hit better than it was and he was moving back to take a catch rather than move forward on, onto it. Yeah, it won't go down as a drop catch, but definitely, definitely a missed chance, no doubt about it. We were debating there, Louis, in the Leinster, as you can see, Garth Delaney here at mid-off, his left wrist heavily strapped. Thinking to himself, it can't be that sore given the way he dispatched those three consecutive sixes off Ross Allen early in the innings. Yeah, there's been a bit of chat on, on social media. I noticed that in, in between innings about he's only available for, for one game in the, in the ODI series against India. Okay. That's, that's what they're talking about, but obviously he was out there. And the three balls he pumped over our head here, he looked okay. Slower ball. Just looked to me like your standard left arm sort of orthodox off cutter there. Yeah, checked shot there. I actually thought that Morgan thought he wasn't going to play a shot there. And he just waited and checked his original shot. Played it defensively. What what I like. You always all the best players ever played with and against, you wouldn't have known if they were a knot or if they're on seventy in terms of their body language. Yeah. And you get that with both both the and topping at the moment. Good stuff from Azar though. Pretty tight from around the wicket there. That takes us to the end of the eighth over. Thanks to Cal McCallum there. I'd like to welcome Alan Lewis back into the back into the con box here as we bring up the batting card for Warringstown. Two quick wickets early for Leinster. One apiece for Azar. Nick and Adam Dennison. Nicking it through to the keeper, and then a terrific delivery from Francis to curve McCollum. It's both on topping, who are the not out batters at the moment. Alan, good to have you back. What's your been thoughts on that first eight over of the Warnings 10 innings? Well, there's no doubt that Leinster are up for the fight, and obviously it was largely led by Francis, who was exceptional early on, wasn't he? Bowl with pace, good shape. Kind of challenged every battle that was there. Just thought they might have given him one more. It was always the conundrum, wasn't it? How far do you go with him? Um, well, he's gone for four. Changed it up now. Going to bring one up a tail in. But he was, he was quick on the money, and threatening every single ball. Change it up here, actually. It's going to be Mark Tong. My mistake. Yeah, Mark Tonge. Again, a young bowler. He's done reasonably well for Leinster this season. And again, this is going to be, again, an interesting spell. Yeah, just something, something we were talking about when that early spell there from Francis. He was very economical in his action. Didn't waste anything, no energy. Smooth. Just with Mark here, you, you can kind of see there it's a little bit more all over the place in terms of his run-up. Let's see if he can hit his straps. No one there. Well, it's about lines really, isn't it? That left arm goes way to the lakeside quite early and again that leaves you somewhat prone for consistency of direction you doing well for Leinster though just breaking into the to the first team this year really he's been doing well for them fairly settled side he's, he's kept his place throughout the season well again 
this is something that uh, the coach Jared Chetty is very anxious as I understand that he presented to the club about you know he's in the club nearly five years now in terms of you know when he took over and you heard Bilal talking about the tough times and you know what he's tried to create and you know Tanj would be a good example of that young player take some responsibility just be one yeah I think really really good point that Bilal made about, about Leinster they have been through some really difficult times in the Union up and down through divisions it's a really good point for clubs right across Ireland doesn't always be a garden of roses sometimes you got to get through some tough times to get back to I mean you looked at the NCU particularly last year CIYMS won every tournament bar the league and we're coming into this year thinking they're going to do it again they'll just win everything they've got a really good side but this year not so much you know they're only really going Warringstown are actually the team that are going for so it can change it can change with one player or one ethos a good coach something like that well this is often the conundrum alley of whether you like it or you don't of relegation mm. uh, you know when you kind of seize on things like facilities grounds lots of different factors and you know it does tend to draw you into this short termism club as an example who've tried to build again in, in the south of the hills you know they went through a period of you know a number of overseas players yeah and I kind of think it's 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 a funny one because as you're trying to develop you know you either have a a doctrine that you're going to try and bring younger players through because you're going to ask yourself the question well are you going to bring in these coaches and it was you know it's something even and you're probably well aware of it, the impact that he had in the North Kamal Merchant mm -hmm. probably, the, so. probably the most wonderful coach of young children I think I've ever seen particularly the you know the eight nine ten year olds basics of cricket discipline respect that's he'll be disappointed with that Pat both and not to get that away just gonna say that not picking the gap. See the fielders coming on and off here. Left, right and centre for Leinster. <laughs> well, it's quite interesting, actually. That's Jai, the Indian chap that turned up. Played against us early season quick, but he's suffered a lot of injuries, and I think they just decided... Couldn't risk him today. Couldn't I actually risk him. the chairman pre, and he is quick. Through the air, possibly even quicker than Peter Francis, but... Just said they couldn't risk him if he broke down after two overs, you're stuck then, you know. So um, they decided to put him in his 12th today. Well, it's interesting. I'm glad they're putting a, an orange bib on him because he was down there at fine leg. He collected the ball. I don't know whether you saw that, Ali. Kind of going. That That's was what I was saying with people coming left, right, and center. I thought they must have. I'm going to count them here. And there was 13 or 14 different people on the pitch. So Gareth Delaney into the attack. Has bowled his leg spin very efficiently in the green jersey of Ireland, but it'll be interesting now today. The impact that he may or may not have on this game. And he already had a kind of clear impact short spell as he was at the wicket, but kind of gave Leinster that wee bit of momentum. Showed his international class. Yeah, and they're bringing the spinner on in that classic one over before the end of the par play. Do you want to go? You want to take me on? You have to be getting a little fine from me later. Wearing a number one jersey. <laughs> it's not his number. <laughs> Dear old me. Well spotted, Ali. Yeah, important the fielders back him up here. Can't let no balls like that go through. For easy singles. You want a ball at the same batter. Three, four, five balls and over. That's a top shot. That is a top shot. 
And Morgan Topping goes up the hill. Crosses the boundary. It's lent into that. Glass from Topping. Well, that's as good as you're going to get today. Classic aloft drive. Lovely bat swing. Full face. Finds the gap. Four runs. And he's a very impressive young player. He's done very well through the Interprovincial Championship to date. Big 150 against the Cowboys. Good running again from both that. Calls topping through. Yeah. He's been, he's been a revelation this year. We spoke about him. Although he back when the, when the draw was made in February, it was a big season for him. This was his step up. He's come back to Warrington. Tank. And uh, he's taken his chance. He's moved into the night setup last season. They gave him a little bit of a taster of it last season. Simon Johnson, the night's coach, basically saying we'll give you a few games to get used to it, but next year's your year. And this season, he's grabbed that position. That comes in at four. For his interprovincial team. He's been good all season for Warringstown as well. So it closes out the power play. Ten overs gone. And Warringstown moved on now to 43 for two. Well, the one thing, Ali, that's noticeable is his composure. Looks very calm at the crease. Stays very still. Gets himself leg side of the ball. Opening up that offside. And... Uh, it is something I've watched a good bit of him this year and a couple of the better innings that he's played. He has struggled, like everybody, I suppose, early on, but it, he doesn't give it away. He doesn't just say, right, I'm struggling here, I'm just going to throw my wicket away. He stayed in the game, particularly in innings he played for the Knights at Stormont. One over, the off-spinner came on and he saw that as his opportunity. Hit two fours down the, back, down the ground and just sealed it home from there. And played beautifully from there. So it's that flick of a switch that he's got um, yes, that he can do yeah beats the man float it up there a little bit all right to the pitch of the ball hands through it beats mid off and that's another boundary for Warringstown they're the sorts of one Zali Bilal as they are the captain like that sort of one admittedly with a dive being stopped or parried you know it's just another credit to your own total within a game and these are kind of moments that you well it's interesting now that he's come into a midwick position where he's got a wee bit of cover Peter Francis has gone down to long off and that could be a Quite surprised there. That's only ended up in, in a single. So, given these two, their reputation, I thought that would be a two call immediately. They only got the one. That's poor cricket, really, isn't mm. it? It was well wide of, mm. of long off. Easy to. Mm. I think so. Especially for these two. So a few field changes here. Obviously, with the left, right. Going to be a few about, but. Challenge for the bowler. I don't know whether you notice, Ali, and again, an aspect of Topping's batting that, you know, he's just pushed that into the offside, but with authority. Yeah, there's plenty of intent there. I always like to talk about a defensive shot. Even if you're playing defensively, you ain't getting through. You know, you're going to play hard, a hard defensive shot. Hit it back to the bowler. And again, same as you're talking about. He's hit that cleanly into the offside. It shows basically telling the bowler, you go off line, you go off length. I've got the game. Take you through the through the covers particularly here. Well he has a particularly nice bat swing. The full face addresses the ball virtually with every shot he plays. That's a really good sign. Is 
setting up nicely here. How are you just going to feel it? Yeah, you kind of feel these next 20 overs will be nice and quiet around the crowd. But you can feel it building towards that sort of last 20, last 10. It gets close, the crowd will get into it. It is into the gap, just one note. Inside the par plane, of course. And I've got that cover fielder. And Morgan Topping will get his wish to get rid of that jumper. He's been keen to get rid of it for a couple of overs now. Gets rid of the jumper. And the obligatory change of gloves. We never even thought about that <laughs> sort of carry on. You only had one for the season. Exactly. <laughs> Two seasons. Exactly. I'm amazed how, you know, I love one of these youngsters' kit bags. There's four pairs of gloves in the back. <laughs> Closing in on, on 50 here now. Wearing's tight. As Cal McCallum mentioned a few hours ago, I'll probably just break this down in chunks. See, <coughs> five over, ten overs, where will we be? And then maybe reassess towards the end. As we talked about, often in pretty much every cricket, mm -hmm. game wickets are key. Nicely bowled by Delaney. Delaney, of course, bowls. Yeah, he's that flat trajectory that he bowls with on a regular basis. And, of course, his bowling became a very valuable commodity in the international jersey. I don't know whether it's myself or whether it was just a preconception that I had. I mean, talked myself into it, but he always seemed the bowler. You'd, they were they were bringing him on when they were in trouble, you know. We'll throw the ball to Gareth, see if he can see if he can get us a wicket. He's better than that, you know. He's better. He's a better bowler than that, and you know he's a front line. But just looking at Aaron the last few weeks, the games rather that they've played, they do look to be going down five bowlers, sticking to the five and and playing their team around that. Well, I certainly wouldn't encourage seven and eight, but oh. it's a it's a hard ask in modern ODI cricket not to have the luxury of a spare. And again, probably you know you look at it in the Irish ca context, a Camfer, a Delaney, and again the one I, you know it always baffles me that every time he. Goes to play in a franchise tournament. Paul Sterling's bowling 20 balls in 100, 10 overs for whoever he's playing for. Doesn't bowl for Ireland. Very early. Very early. Well, he has no excuses now. None. Because he can decide himself. Well, occasionally they'd throw him the ball for the first over and say, right, off you go for the first over. But if he can't bowl himself... Come back yourself. <laughs> Just talking about the very man, Paul Sterling. He's turning out for North Down today's club side. They're playing in a very important game at the Stonians. Last to look, rain had come. I'm afraid he's only going for seven. He got seven today. And, uh, his club side are 63 for three, and he's gone. So. Not a great outing for the Ireland skipper today for his club side. He's been searching for a bit of form, hmm. really, Ali, hasn't he? A little bit. A little bit. Um. But, of course, you know, over the years, there was just that nearly, well, let's call it reliance to a certain extent. And, obviously, you know, the players have now as invariably it happens, come to the fore. Probably most notably Harry Tector. It's quite interesting after that outing against Gloucester. I have a few friends over in Gloucestershire and they 
kind of game. When can we get more of Harry Deck? Yeah. And well, obviously Curtis 200s. I think they're playing tomorrow. They're playing against yeah, each other. I think other. they're playing tomorrow um, in Gloucester. I think they're playing Somerset tomorrow. That'll be a good good bit of friendly rivalry, I would say. I see those two getting stuck into each other. Well, as I understand, they were having lunch <laughs> together today, Ellie. Oh, really? Yeah. That's the first real errand shot from Topping. Since he's come to the crease, he's been very circumspect, watchful. And it's quite funny, this is the type of role that Tonge has been playing for, like this kind of holding role. You know, he's certainly not going to challenge you for pace, or but he just tried to bang out kind of that type of length there, Ali. And like what you said earlier, you know, you you just look at it. He's done a he's done a good job for his club this year, and you know has retained his place on merit. Well, absolutely, just coming in, always a spotlight, and a young player coming in. They all coming through the club. They always want them to do well. But you gotta you gotta keep your place on merit. They can't just pick you for sentimental at this level. So he's been doing well for them. He's fought back very well. His first over, a little wayward, but back on the mark now. Just that quiet period now we're going through. We're in that sleepy phase. Sleepy Ali. phase. I can see your <laughs> eyes closing there, Ali. You're just getting a little bit, the voice is getting a wee bit weaker. You haven't been lifted. <laughs> there hasn't been a moment. Yeah, but I do think what you mentioned earlier on. We speak a little early here, but I do, I do feel we could be in for a really classic last, last ten, last twenty here. <coughs> I certainly hope so. Building and the, and the atmosphere's building here. It deserves it. The day, yeah. the day has deserved it. Warrington kind of put on a, a really good day here. And a good crowd in. And obviously, you'd expect. Oh, that's a good shot. You'd expect good local support, obviously, and incredibly, you know, I've been, you and I did that draw hmm. in February, and I kept being asked at the end of the season, was there a weight in the Wearingstown ball, or what was going on? <laughs> five, obviously they're hosting the final today, they had, no, they had nothing they could do about that, but four home draws. Four home draws in a row. Funny, I got the same talk when did I went that day from my club, because I drew them away. <laughs> any chance of a home draw? I'm not doing any more draws. They're done. <laughs> That's my drawing days finished. Will you ever forget that? It's the, most, the first round is the most complicated draw system. <laughs> panic. It's always a panic. Panic, yeah. Panic. panic. Oh, no, panic. Yeah. It was so funny. But I have, to, I have to hand it to Chris Griffin. He is the master of where he's things go and his spreadsheets. He's... <laughs> From you, here, you've got to go from there. And you don't argue with Chris No, you Griffin. definitely do not. Definitely do not. The big unit from Australia. I'll tell you what. See, that's the line, really, Gareth needs to tune in on. Just in on the pads. You know, forcing to hit a wee bit on the leg side. Don't give him that room to hit away on the offside. Yeah, a really good point, Ollie. Just watch both that ball and he was all three method, methods of dismissal. Bold LBW and caught. Gareth Bold might say the off stump, taking away a couple of you're really only looking at a mistake. Possibly. Bull on the stumps and increase your chances. Well if you think, Ali, he's hit backward square on four occasions. And again, it's this business of just waiting that little bit late, literally taking it out of the keeper's gloves. There's a massive gap. There. Huge gap. Actually, well played in the end. Morgan Topping, he was going back, and I thought we were going to see that that late shot, but it was a little bit straighter than he thought. He kept that nice straight bat you were talking about, played through the line. Was probably just looking to hit it back to the bowler, but managed to get a single. And takes the strike. And again, what Kyle was talking about to the right-hander topping. Mid-wicket mightn't field the ball here today. 
you know, bring him over. Massive appeal. Could be quite interesting to see that again. That yeah, wasn't again. the length for sweeping. That reverse sweep automatically brings an appeal as soon as it hits the pads. Let's have a look at it. Make up your own mind here. Cawthorn says no. That's pretty good. Oof. Well, you see, Bolt has played clever professionally there. He's got himself the pad outside the line of off stump. Second step. Exactly. Exactly. That's a very good shout from Gareth Delaney. Alert. Michael Hogan kicks the turf. They know the big wicket this is. Thought they had him last ball. A bit of a leading edge there. Well, what's quite interesting too, Ali, at the end of the 14th over, that comment you made where they didn't run two, mm. and both has just been that little bit lethargic. Been a little bit becalmed here. Yeah. Has, yeah. And, you know, that wee bit of sense of purpose, that wee bit of energy and I've noticed also and it's obviously a tactic they do and I like to see it by the way the balls coming back into Hogan all the time you know yourself as a batter it's it can be quite annoying you mentioned that actually during the, during the Francis spell earlier yeah. the doors hit the keepers gloves mm. the sound of it hitting the gloves and, and things like that just intimidates the batter a little bit but yeah I think that's been the chat around Morningstown that Bolton needs to sort of impose himself a little bit more on games so yeah, he's become a little bit, a little bit becalmed. Not speaking too early here, but it's getting a little bit, a little bit windy here. The cloud cover coming in a little bit. Well, of course, don't forget, Ali. After 20 overs, went to DL. I think it's 10 actually. Is we're it on, 10? We're already into DL. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think okay. we're already. I think we've got a game. I think it's 10 today. Wow. Would you believe I was chatting earlier on twenty six for none off ten was the would have been the score. Twenty six off ten. Incredible. So yeah, it's gonna be a factor. We hope it isn't. We really, really hope we get the full the full quote in. And even a shower, half an hour would be we've got half an hour spare, but But we hope the rain We'll stay away and we get we get a full game in here because it's shaping up to be a belter. Okay, a nice shot from Topping. On the up. And then the covers. Well, interestingly at this stage with DL and obviously it's not there on the board. Wellington would need to be at 72. The end of the 14th. And it was, I was only saying to Kyle when we were on air, like, we played a game against the Hills there two weeks ago. We got 260, some similar score. And rain came. And they lost four overs, but we only lost seven runs. I just I couldn't <laughs> understand. Now, admittedly, there were four wickets down at the time, but I just said to myself, and that's kind of scooted off by a thickish outside edge by topping. It's a mystery. It's I've a always mystery, found it a wee bit of a mystery. Yeah. And it was quite interesting because, as our Balal, as I was saying, we find it easier to control. Duckworth Lewis, even though that sounds strange, and people always talk about, well, when you're the batting team, you can control it, mm. but the minute you start getting behind, it does things to your head. Well, you've got to catch up. And... It's in the air, he's got plenty of it, though. And it has gone all the way. He's got more than plenty of it. Initially, there were shouts to catch it, but it off up in the ring. Just in that full face. Beautifully timed. Full face of the bat, clean through the ball, that bottom hand, the full swing through, clean shot from Morgan Topping, goes for six, I'm just looking at, I was just looking at, started that over, he was 20, 20 off 40, you can see the run rate now, very close, he's talking about Duckworth, is behind the rate and 
on Duckworth, but if we look at, at the Worms, not a great deal in that. Those extra couple of wickets, maybe. Those could be key. Extra couple of wickets have been dropped by Leinster, but you can see the partnerships them for them going forward from now. So as we've been talking about, very, very tight game here and hard to call from the outset of this innings. I don't think it's any different now. Very hard to call which camp you'd rather be in. Well, I don't really think you can call it just at this point, can you, in the sense of, you know, Waringstown, you know, they're going at a reasonable pace. And again, you know, all really they've got to do is just keep this straight rotation going. I think that's the most important thing. Minimise dot balls, low risk. It sounds the most ridiculously easy thing to say, but just bat. Yeah. Just bat. It sounds ridiculously easy, but the hardest thing in the world to do at times is just bat. Yeah, well, it was funny. When um, Hansi Cronje was with us in 97 for Ireland, he talked about, which we'd never talked about before, middle periods of games. He says, I've seen more games of one-day cricket lost in this period. And again, it was at a time when we played against Middlesex. Decker had gone off. He 120 odd for two, and he turned. He said, "I want six singles this over." Mm. And it's amazing how it changes your mindset, Ali. Yeah, amazing. Again, that's a good single there. It is a good single. I'm just going to say that, Joey Carroll. I feel like he's too quick. We've mentioned a few times now. Those are important. Those ones and twos. Ray over as we talked about just bat. You've got a bat with a purpose. Taking ones and twos. Vital for Warringstown. That's in the gap. It's quite funny actually. I've noticed you know, Leinster, particularly with fielders on the sweeping boundaries, you know, they're single, effectively defenders. They're on the edge of the circle. It's, you know, they're effectively giving one. Backstops, really. Yeah. yeah. Like it's... I think that could be a huge part of this game, mm. in this middle period. If I watch back to whenever Pat Boda was bowling at the wearing end, I commented that a few times on the on the Warringstown fielders were really in close, trying to stop those ones because they knew he was going to bowl stump to stump. So it was only going to be defensive shots, edges, stop the singles. And as you say, I would say the Le Leinster fielders at the minute are a good 10 yards behind where the Warringstown boys were. No bowl from Delaney though. Although we're talking about it, there were only three, three of those singles off the over, but no risk for Warringstown. 16 gone. It's 67 for two. 16 overs have been bowled. Where is Sam? 67 now for the last of two wickets. So that run right just creeping ever so slowly. Leinster will be trying to get that up around sixes, sevens, as quickly as they can. Yeah, as so we, we've talked about it a few times, and I've obviously seen Warringstown quite a lot this season. Let's go back to that in a second. Good take, Morgan. <laughs> a very late appeal. <laughs> very, very late appeal from the keeper. Must have hit something. He gave it away. But yeah, I've seen Warringstown um, a few times this season. And you do kind of bat that way to to let Greg Thompson come in late. And his boundary hitting is, is huge. If we talked about it in the first innings, every mm -hmm. team's kind of got one at the minute. Greg Thompson plays in different areas with his hockey um, skills. Plays in different areas. And difficult to bowl out at the late, late stages of an innings. And uh, Warringstown... Um, Warringstown will play that way with knowing that he can come in and up a run rate 
at any stage. Throw in Graham Hume as well. You know, obviously doesn't bat that high for Ireland, but he can bat. He can hit a ball and he'll come in as well. So pl plenty still in the hutch for the for the Warrings Town side. Yeah, and that's obviously why this tactic now that they're employing. Just drag that runs required total down. She say for kind of precisely that. But Leinster won't be unhappy with where they are either, Ellie, no, no. at this point. I think they've bowled with reasonable discipline. Obviously that misjudgment as you called it when you were on commentary, which whether it does prove vital or otherwise, but we'll Obviously, no, in a couple of hours' time. Just the one. Just ticking it over this over as we talked about. No risk cricket at the minute. The wearing's tight. Sort of feeling each other right here at the minute. I was only saying earlier to our viewers, fantastic to see Carlos Braithwaite here today. Obviously was part of the winning side in 2009 and uh, always consist consistently stays in touch. Oh, no ball, free hit. First one of the day for Alan. Been pretty good. The extras today. That's a free hit. And they've taken the single, so that gives Papo a free dig at this. And that can just change an innings. I've, I've seen it before when we talked about it, you know. The course, minute he's, he's quite happy to knock around ones, but this is a free one for him. Of course, you'd know Papo the very well. Know him very well. Mm. How many years was he in? Four. Four he was in my club for four years, and just a. <laughs> Get the use of one, but I'm just a model professional, you know, a real, real guy bought into the club. Loved his coaching, and all it's easy to throw away that sort of thing. The professional coaches, but you know, he was he, he really enjoyed his time at Carrick and uh, just bought into to the to the Northern Ireland way. He loved them, got the, the humor of the panther very quickly, which you've got to do, I think. And uh, it's very well bowled. Really well bowled. Well, that free hit. I've been in that bar often. Mm. Ali, you'd need your wits about you with the humour <laughs> in there. Yeah, but on a serious point, it is it is important for mm. your professional to be part of it, not aloof from the players and just be seen as the professional. You know, the better ones kind of integrate with the club and, and, and buy into the to the humour and the banter. And Pat definitely did that. I think he's doing that here as well. He's got the hold of that. I think that's going to be a four. It's a bit short. Picks up the boundary. And again, the extra ball goes for the boundary. Absolutely lovely. I've been passed by the Irish captain and chuckles money. Obviously up supporting your club today, Captain Laura Delaney. And uh, Ali McCalmont has taken a wee rest, a deserved rest. Evenly poised, Kyle. 76 for 2 from 17. Yes, Lou. I've just taken a call from the BBC to give them an update. They asked me who my money was on. And as, as we said in the Leinster innings, you know, Pat Botha and Morgan Topping are now set. I think it's absolutely imperative that they bat here for the next 15 overs. And if they bat for the next 15 overs and set it up, I would say Warringstown will be in the box seat. But it's... it's it's going to be a good finish. If the weather stays away, I think we could be all set for a very exciting exciting finish. Absolutely. 
It's been a very good contest. And very good quality of cricket, I have to say. And I think it's a measure of the club game in Ireland. It's where we all started, Kyle. And it's a great day. Sadly. And now... That is the end of Pat Botha, just as we were talking. An ill-judged sweep. And well taken round the corner by Joey Carroll. And he'll be very disappointed with that, Kyle. Yeah, Pat Botha. A free-flowing, free-scoring player, but always going to give you a chance, particularly against the slow bowlers. Uh, disappointed walk up back up the hill for the Warrington overseas. And that tips the game very much in the Leinster favour, in my opinion. See Gareth Delaney. Doesn't spin it a huge amount either way. Bowls good areas, but he's just got it high on the bat. And the ball is lobbed to Joey Carroll, who makes no mistake at 45. And then comes Graham Hume. Warrington's number five. Is this where he bats for him? Wellingstown most weeks? I think Greg Thompson likes to stay and hover about number six, so Hume will come in and he'll knock the ball around. He'll look to potentially hit strong on the leg side. But don't underestimate that, that wicket. That's a, you know, a dis you know, disappointing to have got 30 and out for Pat. Well, you talked there about Gareth Delaney. We could see from the replay that just a little bit of extra bounce when you're playing that horizontal bat, and he wasn't l really that low. I... I I don't, I don't think that Pat was trying to keep it down. I think he was trying to lift it up over a backward square leg. He just hasn't time. He's got it up near the sticker of the bat. And unfortunately, that's his demise. So the Warrington innings very much following the same sort of course as the Leinster one. Uh, you know, obviously, the dismissal of Pat Botha for 30-odd, very like the dismissal of Garth Delaney. The key thing here is, can Morgan Topping replicate what Joey Carroll did? Can the Warrington lower order replicate what Peter Francis did. Can Greg Thompson replicate that innings? A fabulous innings. Uh, Peter Francis at the end there probably tipped the scales in the favour of the Leinster side. I've been impressed with Topping. He's a very good player. I per you know, I think if you speak to anybody in the system, I think he, he has all that it takes, all the shots. So how are we going to mind him in the system? Well, the key is going to be getting opportunity. You know, I think the the, the absence of Wolves tours uh, have certainly hurt the development of our, you know, when you look at the current first choice team, Harry Tector, Lorgan Tucker, mm. Mark Adair, uh, Ben White, uh, etc. All went on the Wolves tour to Sri Lanka. Uh, so I think it's imperative that Morgan Topping is tested at a level above into provincial level um, because he's done very well. You, yeah, you've only got to watch him bat here to know that he has all the attributes to succeed. He's just got to be given the opportunity to get mm. comfortable in that environment. But they're only playing six fifty over games and three T Twenty festivals this season, mm -hmm. and I just kind of think that, like you're absolutely right. I think the the whole aspect of the Wolves system is the one where you can play superior opposition in kind of in better cricketing environments. And I think, you know, certainly looking forward, you know, just with the depth again, and I'm, you know, this whole business around, you know, because. Probably the Irish team, when you look at the Josh Littles, the Harry Tectors, the, who are multi-format players, who are getting all that exposure all the time, that, you know, sometimes within that process, you know, there may be, may be a break required and people can, you know, talk to the cows, come home about that. But I'm, I'm just more concerned about, you know, the quality and the ability of players like Topping, who I'm, like, again, you just, you're immediately impressed. Well, look, and where is he going to get that? you know, cleared opportunity. Mor Morgan took it upon himself. He went and played club cricket in New Zealand last winter and he's certainly come back, you know, having grown and developed both as a young man and as a cricketer and he's had his best season by a long way for worrying sign as a result. I suppose what we're really saying is our young cricketers have to be given opportunities to play overseas. They have to be given opportunities to play in different environments, different climates, different pitches to, to get to understand what it takes. But Morgan Topping has, you know, you just need to look at him. You know, in, he's got 32 today, very solidly. Hits it very strong down the ground. Plays well off front foot, front foot, back foot. Plays spin well. Um, so from my point of view, yeah, he, he's he's got to be given opportunities. And I'm sure he's one of many 
that are that are who, who are the next calves off the rank? You know, I was speaking recently to Gary Wilson, who's talking about seven or eight players he's worked with who he thinks of the capacity to play up. Um, and it's really important that we grow those numbers, both in terms of our batting and our bowling. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at opportunities to play at franchise cricket in other countries, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, um, you know, Caribbean Premier League, etc. And I think the better the better we become, and the more exposure our players get, we've only got to see. You know, there's there's the new American, the Canadian leagues, hopefully the Euro Slam maybe here, or if we can think out of the box and get something going here at 50 over cricket, instead of playing inter pro here, can we play against the best in Scotland, the best in Holland? I think we have to... Well, certainly that would be something that we'd be anxious to look at, because in a sense, as I say, the number of unqualified players playing in an interprovincial system, I think the you know, it's quite funny, again, in the women's format, you know, they have a number of the overseas players playing, but, you know, the Irish players themselves getting, you know, pivotal positions in where they're going to perform themselves. Um, so it's it's going to be very interesting moving forward. And obviously with the new round of financing and all those sorts of things, but I think fundamentally... You know, the, the whole blueprint of Irish cricket is the Morgan Toppings of this world. You know, where Graham Ford brought Tucker, Tector, Camper, you know, those sorts of things that that involvement of these players is going to be so vital. Well, we spoke earlier, Lou, like, uh, you've only, our under 15s just went to the festival, I think, at uh, Barnard Castle and played North Hants and Cleveland and all these other, And our, our best under 15 cricketers won the tournament undefeated. You know, your Rob O'Brien's, your James West's, the sons of and the, right. and the family of um, some of the greats of Irish cricket. Um, so from my point of view, at 15, 16, 17 years of age, our players are every bit as good as these others. Where we generally have have struggled is to try and get enough opportunity for those players to play from 17 to 20. And that's where the accelerated progress. And like, bottom line is, anybody who's close to the Irish cricket will know how hamstrung we've been financially. Um, it hasn't been easy and tough decisions have to be made. Uh, but just because there's more funding coming doesn't mean that we waste it. We've got to make sure we get bang for our buck. We've got to make sure that we have systems and processes in place to accelerate the player pool. And listen, I have no issue with non-qualified players playing so long as potentially they raise the standard. And some of these other guys you're trying to qualify, I have no issue with that either, so long as... There's, there's, there's thought given to it, and they're, and they're not taking the place of our best young talent. You know, they have to be significantly better than our best young talent. Well, there was an interesting one actually. I've only heard recently Zimbabwe are bringing, they've linked up with Pakistan, particularly to bring some of their younger bowlers to play in their first-class system, not batters, mm-hmm. bowlers, so that you know their own batting becomes more accustomed to play that level of bowling I thought it was a very innovative step in one sense Uh, and again you know in terms of when our professional players play I think we should be trying to play a little bit more during the week because they're paid to play cricket and then you know how do we keep you know a topping a young lad in the system who's clearly got the clearly got the ability to go higher from what we've seen over the course of the last year in particular and as you say you know, the Wolves program underneath that, but, you know, maybe narrow things down a wee bit and let's push on quality. It's something that uh, will be very interesting to see what emerges over the next number of years. That's nicely bold, but again, just you can see how effortlessly Morgan Topping just, he just times that ball through the, for a single. Although I don't think Garth Delaney was over, overly impressed there with his skipper at, at extra cover. He threw the head up there. He can be a bit grumpy at times, Gareth, in his own little way. Can he? A few arms in the air, yeah. He strikes me as a really but, well, you down think, earth, you quiet, think, level head. Well, I think when he's amongst his own, he's a bit, a bit like you when you were playing club cricket. You get a bit antsy. Oh, I would, I would say <laughs> I was antsy. antsy. <laughs> I think that's doing me credit there, Louis. Oh. It's nicely bold. What has impressed me here with Garth today has been the consistency of his line and length. You know, he's in a sixth over, he's only going for 17. But he hasn't bowled any bad balls. He, his consistency of line length's been really good. Well, it was interesting because we were 
having the conversation that we had, and he's bowling to the right hand. I said, Midwicket will not feel the ball for the afternoon when Gareth. Now, I know that's an easy thing to say, but get Midwicket over on the offside because Morgan Topping hit square cover four times in a row, and really, you know, to, to balls that were that little bit short, he kind of didn't profit on any. Warrenstein mustn't panic here, Lou. They're, you know, they're, they're still going along at four and over. Very, very similar to the stage that Leinster were at. In fact, a score comparison would be interesting. Uh, Duckworth Lewis, after 20 overs, three down, would require Warrenstein to be, I dare say, a few spots of rain just falling. Although the, all I can see is blue sky above me. 106. Okay, so behind the game I would say that's probably a fair assessment given the, the nature of Peter Francis's innings and the runs scored off the last five or six overs from a Leinster point of view But you quite rightly say Gareth Delaney's put in a very good shift here But no need for panic for Wearingstown you're absolutely right Kyle as we saw the destruction in those last five overs. There must have been 60 runs scored in those. And we talked about that. You know, that innings of Joe Carroll being so important for his team because it laid the foundation. And obviously Francis's innings was superb. Where I think where England certainly could be better is we, we hit the ball for once. We, you, you seldom see the ball dropped and run. That subtle day of just knocking it and run. A defensive shot into the gap to run. We generally tend to hit the ball, we force the ball. And right on cue, Morgan Topping has made a liar out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good, you know, for me. Nice. Good. Forward defence. Take your single. Risk free cricket at fours and five and over. Throw the odd boundary in there and all of a sudden you're you're just chipping away ten runs at a time. Just wonder when Graham Hume will look to go over Cow Corner. There's nobody out there. Pulls it very flat. Saki Bahadur. Bahadur is a good bowler. Varies his pace and he can throw this real quicker one in on occasions. Like there's that just that little bit slower as you could see. I have to say, Michael Tong has been very tidy behind the stumps for a tall fella. The one criticism I have is his left pocket is flapping out there. It's a bit annoying, is it not, Louis? Would you not I, be a neat and tidy man? I was a neat and tidy man. Michael Hogan. <laughs> and of course, you're thinking of Mark Dunge. Oh, is that? Yes. Michael Hogan. Michael Hogan. Yeah. But he has, and it was another thing we were just squirted away. In the height of summer, Louis, you don't chase that. No. At Warringstown, that's four. <laughs> Given the rain that we've had, to the third man. But you'd be, a, would you be a stickler for that? Yeah. Would you? I think you need to. I would be a stickler for that. I would say. Oh, look, he's listened to me. The pocket's gone in. Well done, young man. Outstanding. <laughs> but but in all, all joking aside, he's been very tidy mm. behind the stumps. He's tidied everything up. All the throws. Good hands. Very good hands. Well, the other interesting thing Leinster have done through it. I've got the ball back into Hogan. Got the ball into his gloves. Good shot, Morgan Topping. Just rocked back, pulled it over wide mid on for a much needed boundary. A ripple of applause goes around the lawn. We saw a lot of that from Joey Carroll. When you bowl that back of a length, it just tends to sit in the pitch a little bit, gives the batter that time. You'll see the length that it's a wee bit short, just rocks back all the time in the world, muscles that over towards wide mid on. A wee bit of a drag down, really, wasn't it? I'm sure it would mean something that, you know, you push from, as a spin bowler, you want to bring the batter forward, forward, forward all the time. And that one that you just slide through, they misjudge and go back and get bowled. And, you know, that must that must have been the type of situation that probably as a spinner gave you most pleasure, I would imagine. 
well, the, the great John Solanke, who was the man who started me on the off-spinning route along with and Garfield Harrison played a large one. He said, be hit in the V. Be happy to be hit in the V. If you're being driven, you're bowling well. Yeah. Don't be pulled or cut. That's mm -hmm. bad bowling. Be hit in the V. And for me, the greatest joy was when you managed to get one just to drift, entice that drive and to spin one back through the gate. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. The only other one I enjoyed more was when a left hand, or anyone was on, and you got them onto the back foot, and then you just whipped in that little arm ball, and you pulled them leg stump. That was another joyous moment in the life of a of an off spinner. Yeah. It was interesting. That's a poor ball from Gal Delaney. We were talking earlier about influences. A man who 70 today, Bobby Rayo. Oh, uh, yesterday. Yesterday, was Yesterday, it? the Yesterday. great Bobby Rail. Bobby, happy birthday if you're watching. Yes, Jimmy. Jimmy was a great influence in my own career. What a man. And uh, just about the psychology side of batting, I spent a whole winter about, you know, either coming down the wicket or sweeping, slog sweeping, and it was tremendous, tremendous uh, influence because, like, obviously, during that period, specific batting coaches were something that you never had. Yeah. You know, I never forget a, an interprovincial game when I was a young off spinner playing at Eglinton against the North West, and Bobby batted with Stephen Smith. And it was only when I reflected on it later that Bobby played me more mentally than anything else. He toyed with me. He made me bowl the ball exactly where he wanted me to bowl the ball. Um, but what a what a quality individual, what a quality guy. And if you're listening, Bobby, uh, you don't look 70, mate. Um, we we all think the world love you and happiest of birthdays and we hope for many, many more to come. Jimmy, you haven't signed the book for me either, my friend. You told me you were going to send me a signed copy. <laughs> oh, funny shot. It's a drag down. Morgan Thompson's going to pull it, but he just stayed with it and under it and it's gone to short fine leg for four. So Warringstown haven't dug in for a little while now. Just getting there just desserts. A little flurry of boundaries coming. Morgan topping into the 40s. Is he a drag down? He's going to pull it. It's dead down a little. And Morgan Topping's watched that very nicely and controlled that to the fine leg boundary. And there's Clifford Morrison feeling it. Pastor Clifford Morrison. Rings town through and through. There you go. Getting leg side of the ball. Full face. Lovely. And again, you made a comment. I've just looked up at the scoreboard and he's 48. Mm hmm the best players I ever played with. You looked and thought, they're 20. He hasn't played a shot yet. I know. And they're on 20. I know. You know, and that's the sign of a, of a class act. The Warringstown 100 up. I, I know, sure, I think from memory, I'd be interested to see the worm, if there was such a thing. Because I think Leinster were at 25 overs, just about 4 and over. So I do think Warringstown are probably slightly ahead of the game if you went comparably but that doesn't take into consideration uh, Peter Francis's innings it's nicely played by Graham Hume now I've got a question for you oh good so you're the skipper to Leinster Francis has bowled four overs and you're going to break him into spell give him another two well, would you try and search for a wicket right now this was always the dilemma as captain with the new ball, they go five, because if you go five, generally you then have a two and a three over spell in it. If you go four, you have a three and a three. So for me now, or, is it... Or you have a two, three and a one. Possibly. So we're having a look. Yes, you can see there's the worm there. Uh, Warringstown are yeah, just ever so slightly ahead, but just look between overs 45 and 50 at that. It's like Mount Everest there, Lou, isn't it? The way that... that, that and there was a, you could just see the little downward turn before the wicket. And then a great little spell that took Leinster up to the 259. But this is, if I was in the Warringstown camp, I'd be saying to myself, you know, we're, we're very much ahead of it here. Greg Thompson is very capable of doing what Peter Francis did, and some. Um, so, it's, listen, it's, it's a wonderfully poised game of cricket. I've just got this sense, and I've a real hope that actually it becomes a nail-biter. Couldn't agree with you more. But if you're asking me what I would do, I think now... I'd have been tempted to give Peter Francis a wee run just before drinks. A 
that's why I asked you the question, and I'd agree. Well, I'm just thinking he's got six overs left. What you want to try and avoid is, you know, you have an opportunity to come here. If, if you can get rid of Morgan Topping, you know, you're very much ahead of the game. A lot of they're, they're a very enthusiastic opinion very, side. It's one aspect, actually, I don't know whether, and I say this against my own club, some of the level of appealing is, to my mind, unacceptable. Like running at umpires from slip. <laughs> I just don't like it. Well, f for for me, it's the guys that, that's muscled off the back foot, well-fielded Peter Francis again. It's the guys that sort of deep square leg and mid-wicket and cover who are jumping and running towards it. I'm thinking, you can't possibly tell from there. I have no issue with keeper and bowler, maybe mid-off, mid-on. But if you're a deep backward square leg, it would query your necessity to jump up and down. There's that quicker ball you're talking about, Luke. And that's very good from Hogan there. Because it's one area I've kind of been critical of Leinster. Their fielders, you know, Skipper Balal, he's on the edge of the circle. You know, you've got sweepers behind you that are there for a reason. And there, look. For me, however, extra cover and mid-wicket are your key fielders mm -hmm. as an off-spinner. You have to have your two best fielders there. Correct. 45 extra cover mid wicket because they're the three guys that I expect the ball to be going to the most. And I'm looking at Leinster at 45 now. I don't believe it's one of your better. You know, I would want to see Joey Carroll um, more in the game. I'd want to see Gareth Del Gareth Delaney's mid off, mid on there. Peter Francis mid off. Yeah, for me, I wouldn't be feeling under too much pressure to be dropping and running the extra cover in mid wicket at the moment. Well, I'm going to go back to Jimmy again. Go on. Jimmy, talking about fielding, I don't know whether you remember playing the game, but when he made his debut, he says, Louis, I want to field at point. I'm going, Jimmy, point? Yeah, you just leave me Was out. that against North Hans? No. You, mm, I thought it was up in Scotland. Okay. okay. I said, Jimmy, are you, are you, being, you just watch, he said. You just watch. <laughs> then he told me afterwards, and it's something I always took when all I watch is the feet. I watch where the feet go, and I know where the ball is going to go. And again, you think if you were like when you were bowling, you wanted your best fielder at mid wicket. They anticipate. Mm -hmm. They anticipate where the ball John, is going to go. Listen, we played with John. D Do you remember John D. Rhodes played for Ireland yes. against the Plasgo and South African Academy, <laughs> and John D. Rhodes fielded at mid wicket. I promise you, he saved me twenty runs every game. Instead of getting one for fifty, I was getting three for thirty. <laughs> I've never met a guy who moved like it at yeah. mid -wicket. and as a bowler it gives you the confidence to go up and be driven because you know his radius his span that he stops <laughs> is 10 yards it was remarkable 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 slow left arm and in actual fact it's so Fabulous 50 that from Morgan Topping. Really was full of class, full of lots of gorgeous shots. And it's on these occasions that you want to do these types of things. I said that the Ali McCalmont, he's fresh off 150 in, in our local Challenge Cup final. And if you're wanting to knock the door down of the national selectors, yeah, another big score in an Aries Cup final on top of the performances he's put in for the Northern Knights and all of a sudden you know your people t stand up take notice <clears throat> well I remember someone being picked for Ireland on the back of one of those it was an all Leinster final between Clump Taff and Marion and Andrew Pointer played the most sublime innings with Phil Simmons mm -hmm. in the crowd and he had <clears throat> a great two years that level I saw him win a game on his own in a T20 match in Sabina Park I think this is Dev Raniola, is that it right? It is. That's exactly it is. who it is. Yeah. Graham Hume has got inside that and beat the man at short 45. But quite light the way he bowls. He bowls it slowly. Bowls it slowly. Only thing I think he's got to do particularly, and again, homework being homework, that is a go-to shot for Graham Hume. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see him trying to cut me offside. And again, with that type of pace, he does turn it. It's more difficult. 
I would be wanting to try and then slide one under the bat. You know, if I knew Graham Hume's coming across and showing me his middle and leg, I'd be wanting to go full and just try and get it under. But then that runs the risk of seeing what's just happened. It's an under edge and it goes for four. Well, you can see what he's doing. He's kind of shifting to off stump. There he goes. Look. Again, just push him wider and wider, Kyle. It's not but, a bad over to start with from Ranola. But again, Waring Center going here at 4.6 and over. Run rate's only 5.7 and 6 and over at Warringstown is is no stress. no stress whatsoever. So for me, you know, there's there's still 27 overs left. If you were to say you need 100, and, there were 26 overs left. You know, Warringstown need 150. You know, Warringstown would back themselves to chase 150 and 20 overs nine times out of ten. So it's about the discipline of setting the chase up and then making sure that your middle and lower order can see the game home. Hopefully. From a Warringstown point of view, <coughs> your middle and lower, middle and lower are not required. But, <coughs> but certainly, I do believe, it, without putting too much pressure on Morgan Topping, has a huge role to play in this. I've always liked that, Lou. I don't know about you. you you've just knocked one to the long on. It's a saunter down the pitch. You know, it's almost like I'm just going to parade oh, down the wicket here. I have a go at my own daughter about that sometimes. <laughs> the sauntering business. Like... <laughs> Just get down the other can end quickly. I, can I ask a question yeah. in relation to that? Yeah. Now, I have two seven-year-old daughters. Oh, do you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you and, do? Uh, yeah. Yes, I have, I have twin girls. And I'm trying to think about the reaction that you would get from Gabby. Would Gabby listen to your daddy, or would she Would she say, hey, enough? I'll tell you what. I probably dealt with it all the wrong way in the beginning. But gone. And that is a very soft dismissal, Kyle. Graham Hume is gone. And he's just basically I don't know how what way to describe that shot. He's just picked out mid off. I don't know whether I don't believe he was trying to hit it over the top. I think he's just tried to beat him. And he's just found that man Peter Francis can't keep him out of the game. And that's gonna take us now to drinks. I don't know what way to just and again you have to commend Leinster in the sense they've been playing long on and long off back but they kept mid off in and Francis took simplest of catches and it's really now that come at the hour skipper comes in he's had a difficult day so far the skip he's dropped a catch he hit Johnny push on the head with a throw from the boundary. <laughs> but uh, he's a fighter, as you said. He's a straight fighter. And he's a, a one, and he's a wonderful striker of a cricket ball. If there's a man you want coming in in this situation, Greg Thompson will be very high up my list. The one thing I'll warn all our viewers, he doesn't believe in the fact that it's, it's going to be worth watching. Uh, and if Greg Thompson bats for 15 of these 26 overs, Warringstown will be significant closer to the target. Are you suggesting it's a word we can't use on commentary or bust? Yeah, it's, it's all duck or no dinner, I think, <laughs> is what we would have said back in the day. He plays remarkable cricket, um, finds the boundary with remarkable ease. And when he's playing really well, when he's not playing so well, he goes straight to the sweep and the reverse sweep. When he's playing really well, he bombs it down the ground straight. And at the minute, he's just scoring 360. Um, 26 overs, a long time. Now, this would be another reason why, on the basis that the wicket's been taken, with the skipper in, I'd be bringing Francis on, and I'd be saying, Rinaldi, I don't want this guy to settle. We know he's a good player of spin. And let's see how you get on for certainly two overs. Mm -hmm. Because, as you say... Having only bowled four, there's complete flexibility. But the only thing I will say in relation to that, and I, I agree 100% with you, uh, we were playing CIYMS, or sorry, I should say Warringston, we were playing CIYMS here in the league. Apologies, folks. Um, and they came hard. They brought back Ed Nuttall and a few other seam bowlers and really attacked Greg Thompson, and he took it on. And again, he scored... He scored, you know, 60 or 70 out of 30, 30 or 40 balls again. So... Um, there's no doubt at 111 for four. Leinster in the box seat here. Mm. Um, 
where Einstein probably will be sitting thinking we need a partnership here. You've still got Ross Allen to come, you've James Cameron Dow to come, but certainly throughout the season the reason for Warrenstein's success yeah. has been the runs of the two men are at the crease at the moment. Well he's top of the log as we know and everything and I just want just a quirky question for the for the crowd here. Have you worked out what our announcer's favourite song is? I think I've heard Sweet Caroline five times. <laughs> yes, yes. It's the Northern Ireland football anthem at Windsor Park. Oh is it? Yeah, Sweet Caroline. So I thought it was We're Not Brazil, We're Northern Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, there's a repertoire. Oh. My, my son is at me about going to the San Marino games. where Northern Ireland plays San Marino. I've taken Matthew to watch the Northern Ireland football on three occasions and I've yet to witness a goal. So uh, maybe against San Marino we might manage you it. You might manage it. Get one over the line. But I see Peter Francis warming up at mid-off. So perhaps the Leinster captain has heard us. Well, it was actually intriguing and, again, talking things, ashes, but just the whole tactical battle that was on. You know, you were consuming nearly every moment, every ball, who ball this and who. Stokes has kind of been tremendous, really, as, as captain. Although I was, you know, any regrets, Ben? And he gave it a one-word answer, no. And I thought Michael Hatton might have teased that one out. But really? Declaring at Edgbaston? I don't know what you thought of that. Well, I wouldn't have done it, but uh, <laughs> it's not, you know, the game has moved on. This is what I really respect, Greg. But, you know, he just, he has an, an enormous belief in his own ability. And you see, from ball one, there we go again. He's going to the sweep, first two balls. He just backs himself. You know, I'm very often I'm supposed to reflect on my own career and I wish it back myself more. Um, but I watch Greg play. He just backs his eye, backs his ability, and like I say, uh, you know, he's very good. He, he's very capable of of taking Warringstown to a win from this position. But that would be incredibly special in an All Ireland Cup final. It's very different from your. That's very well bold. Very well bold. It's interesting that Bahadur is the bowler. It was at this stage that himself and Joey Carroll just consolidated the innings for Leinster. Greg Thompson off the mark with a full bunger swept to deep backward square leg. Not really timed that. That could have. It's a funny field, you know. He's bowling just goes show. He's bowling with only one man out in the lane. No, he's now. Peter France going to long on, no cow corner in place, and a deep forward square. So, if Greg Thompson gets anything on the sweep, it's going to go for four. So, yeah, I would imagine Greg is still going off, to, going on the off stump to see the sweep. Oh, and he's parried it past the middle wicket fielder. Good over from Sakib Badur. You kind of feel. Kyle, that this is the partnership, really, for Werringstown, isn't it? Yeah, in terms of the season thus far. Uh, no, in this match. I don't want to downplay the quality of the... And, you know, Ross Allen is very capable of scoring. James Cameron Dow is a test match 50. You, James Mitchell, whom we played at Leinster last year, now, albeit we were well beaten, got 30 or 40 at a run okay. of ball. So there's enough down there that can then give it a clip. Mm. But certainly in terms of realistic chances of getting up over the line once any of these per are out or you would imagine that it's going to take something extraordinary as opposed to something that you would anticipate mm. I don't want to downplay no uh, so I'm more Renolia. I'm more working on your local knowledge and judgment than anything else all I'm going to tell you here is if Greg Thompson bats for 10 overs Warringstown will be winning this game okay will be in a winning position okay. if he bats for 10 overs. Okay. Given the fact that he scored almost a 1,000 runs this year at a strike rate of 150. So if he bats for 10 overs, he's going to score 50, 50 oh, or 60 yes. himself. In which case, you would think that... So 
it's a bold statement. I appreciate that, and I'm, I hope I'm not setting him up for a fail. But just given the way that he's played this season and, and the history that he has in big games, um, that's a possibility, Lou. I wouldn't put my money on it now. No, but still, you know, requiring a, a hundred and forty-four from twenty-five overs, it's not insurmountable if you bat sensibly, is it? Not at all. But as I said, Louis, the game's changed. You mm. and I talk about if you bat sensibly. Batting sensibly for us will be just knocking it round. And these guys will play their shots. Mm. They'll look to score quickly. They'll look to score boundaries. And that brings within itself an inherent risk. So it's going to be an exciting watch. Had a great chat with Laura Delaney there just at the at the interval. Great. The girls are away. The ladies' team are, or should I say the women's team, are off to the Netherlands tomorrow. That's right. Three T20 series. Is what they're playing there. Great to see the progress that the women are making. Yeah, the one of the areas that's just the, the catching. Obviously, I've watched a lot of it. You know, they've they've got themselves into really decent positions, and it's nearly the understand like they had a, Australia fifty. 50 odd for three. Arlene Kelly bowling. Lovely wears. No slip. Deep square leg. Gamble. Mm. You know, take some chances. You haven't been in this position. Yes, we know what's this. You know, just little things like that. And then, you know, some drop chances in the West Indies. Certainly they deserve to win one of the games mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, shot. Beautiful shot from Morgan Topping. Two more to the total. But there's no doubt to to the neutral observer. Look, it's great to watch. You know, you're watching the games on BT Sport, or should I say TNT Sport now? Mm. Watching, you know, you know, Gabby, Laura, all these young cricketers, Amy Hunter. You know, there's massive kudos and massive progress being made. Well, in three of the World Cup games, forget the performance again. That can happen. T20 game, but in three of the games, they were in great positions. Two down. I think 84, 86 against England, 116 for two against the West Indies. You know, just examples there, and it was, you know, the, that ability to, that we saw today of you know, someone who can hit the boundaries at the end. Because mm -hmm. if you even look at the 100, and I know it's only so, but... Oh, yeah, there he goes. Peter Francis immediately at mid on. Sending a message to the captain, the shoulders are whirring there, he's like a Dutch windmill. And I have to say, wonder will. Well, I think you're going to find he's going to come on the end. He obviously chose to bowl, but that's just floated up and again. And he's, he, he didn't premeditate that. <laughs> or would think you think he's a wee bit of a premeditator? The, the, the big joke here in and around Warringstown would be that, you know, obviously John Solanke coached me, you play in the V. <laughs> My V was between mid off and mid on. Greg's <laughs> Tom, Greg Thompson's yeah. V is between fine leg and third man. Third man yeah. But that's what makes him such a unique. But like I say, he's so much better than that. He hits the ball hard and straight, he hits sixes straight. He's just such an incredibly difficult guy to bowl to because he's unorthodox, but he has the best eye. Obviously, a hockey player. He's an incredible eye. And, you know, the Warringstown supporters here will hope that he's at the crease here for some time to come. Well, I'm going to leave you now and just go and possibly enjoy that for the next few overs. And I'm going to pass you over to King Ali. <laughs> Ali McCalmont. Thanks, Lou. So, lots of conversations here. We conversation between Gareth Delaney. Bilal Azar and Peter Francis and it's not a surprise to see the, the Aussie fast bowler taking the ball from the winning end. He's had a significant say in the game thus far, Ali. 70. Had more than a run a ball with the bat. Uh, the wicket of James McCollum troubling all batsmen and no doubt Leinster are going to throw the ball to him in the hope that he will significantly impact the game again. Absolutely indeed. I think this is the a real key moment in the game here. As you said just a moment ago, you could see he was telling the captain, bring me on. I can win you this game in the next couple of overs. And very similar to when Warringstown turned to Graham Hume towards the end of the innings. This, this is the key bowler 
for his team. But Warring's kind of enough experience there as well, out there in the middle. I know Morgan Topping's a young boy, but he's an experienced cricketer now. Yep. And they should know the game here, know exactly what's happening. There's one thing I loved about this, and it was a criticism I had of my own former club mates. You were there, it was against your beloved Carrick. Hmm. But the ball was disappearing all over the place when our spinners were bowling. What I wanted to see was the seamers who were patrolling the boundary, warming up, sending messages to the captain, going to the captain saying, give me the ball, I want to bowl now. We didn't see that. Whereas what we're seeing here is obviously there's a, a little bit of a quick flurry of runs. You know, the guys have put on 17 in a relatively short space of time. Greg Thompson, 12 off 8 already. Peter Francis straight away warming up, sending the message, give me the ball. I want the ball. You could see him. You could see him as soon as that boundary was hit. He, he started moving his shoulders and telling people I'm ready. And a lot of, a lot of crickets about that, showing your ability, not just when you've got the ball in your hand or the bat in your hand. Keenness to get involved in the game. I've seen a lot of good things from Peter Francis today. Bat ball, even his body language as well has been good. Uh, if I'm the Warrington captain and Morgan Topping, I'm thinking to myself, we know exactly that Leinster are gambling here. We'll we'll be able to play out this at two or three or four and over for a few overs, and we can pick up the pace. You know, the re required rate's still only 5.5, uh, and given the circumstances, that's not insurmountable at all. Yeah, that's kind of my point about these two out here. They're experienced players, and uh, they know the game. So let's just take a look at this guy. We don't need to go gung-ho. Take him on. The other thing, having spoken to Johnny Bush there while I was off commentary, was that he said that after 15 overs, the ball just did nothing. Mm. The ball died, the pitch died, it became very much a feather bed for batting on, very batter friendly. And even in the first few balls here... Kind of seen that a wee bit. You know, yeah. there, it's certainly, you know, it's not zipping on like it did with a new ball. It's in the air. Just drops short. Nearly the kiss of death there. Very Nearly the prefer so. people commentators. <laughs> Nothing happening here. Nothing the ball's happened. going soft. Chip at the mid-wicket. That'd be lovely. <laughs> um, when he's got away with it there, just didn't get on it. That could be what you're talking about. Maybe a change in pace in the in the deck. This is where Francis will use his knowledge and know-how. First four or five over, zipping through, hitting the keeper's gloves. Now he'll be looking for the maybe Bolo's Yorker slower balls. Change up his his repertoire a wee bit. Can Warringstown counter it? There we go. Shorter ball, which we didn't really see in the first four or five overs from him. Well controlled by Thompson. Umpire Rooley Black signaling one for the over. I haven't seen too many of those today. Graham Hume's been the only one that's bowled a few bumpers. Joey Carroll also going through it. A little bit of a warm-up. Could be seeing him from the Clare Road end. Well, very interestingly, Ali, after 26 overs, 4 down, Warring's time would require to be 135 according to the Court Lewis. Currently 130. Let me just check after 20. Seven overs, they require to be 130. So they're currently eight runs behind on Duckworth Lewis. Thanks for one back at you here. Oh, because although they may be eight runs behind, the comparative score right now was 103. So they are actually 27 runs ahead with the same number of wickets fallen. So although Duckworth is slightly behind, they're way ahead in the comparison. So, and as you've talked about a few times here, you know, Greg Thompson, if he's still there, He's got that ability to catch up. So again, we we're talking the last time with with Alan there. Just bat, just bat for a bit. You know, take your ones and twos. No risk cricket. I think that's where that's they were excellent. Didn't play any high risk cricket through the middle overs, and then reap the rewards towards the end. And I think the Rings kind of got to do something similar. Joey Carroll about to take the ball at the Clare Road end. I'm laughing here because he's warming up and he's near put the ball through. Peter Francis at mid on. I wouldn't be grateful for that for him. Having played against Joey Carr last year, strong man, very much a shoulder bowler. Will sort of you know, just comes out at a gentle pace, but a strong body, strong action. Look to hit the deck.
hits the bat a little bit harder than you think. Mm. Something new though, new bowler. Gonna take a look at him. You may have played against him a few times, but something new today. As you say, sort of humbles in there, and then big quick release. Seems to me to be struggling with a little bit of crump, doing a lot of stretching of his hamstring, not moving very freely. Like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even playing. <laughs> Just in a little bit dark. Checking AccuWeather here. No rain in the forecast. A fairly decent run through there after the delivery as well. <laughs> it's just, he, can't, he can't stop. He just can't pull up. In the leg side. I throw one at you here now, Kyle. Go on. You know this guy. At the striker's end at the minute. Played with him. Known him as a character for a long, long time. I just get the feeling he might, he might pick a fight here. He might just pick a fight with something. Maybe something will happen, or he might just create a wee bit of. Yeah. Seen him, seen him doing it before, and just motivates him a little bit and. Yeah, what do you think? He's been known. <laughs> he's been known, and in many ways, it, it does take sometimes something like that to get players going. I remember sure. playing against Scotland. Dom Joyce, I think, was on debut, and Bruce Patterson uh, was was a fiery opening batsman for Scotland. But again, he was really struggling. And we Dom said something, and Bruce blew a, blew a fuse. <laughs> but having spoken to him after, he said that the reason behind that was to try and get him going. Yeah. It's been spliced. Got lucky again. Just over the mid wicket fielder. And in the gap. Gets one. Come a little bits of fortune going Warringstown's way in the last couple of overs. Ball not coming on as we talked about, maybe just as well as it was earlier. Just from my point of view, Warringstown have to keep calm under pressure here. The the run rate's gonna be six and over. It's five point seven three at the minute. You know, you'd be telling yourself you could score you know, Leinster scored, I would suggest, almost 100 in the last 10. So whatever Warringstown get in the next 13 overs puts them ahead. So uh, it's just important that they dig in. They keep knocking the ball around, trying to find the boundary occasionally. Beautiful. Yeah, he's looking a class apart at the minute, isn't he? He really is looking and playing on a different deck. His timing's good. He's letting the ball come to him. He's just looking real good at the minute. But he needs, he needs to... Exactly as Leinster did with Joey Carroll. Somebody play around him, stick with him. As we talked about earlier, 20 overs were coming up to towards 20 overs. One, 120. It should you be take a that all day long. It should be a cakewalk. Mm, you, you take know? that all day. And flick that into the legs. Fielder comes round, does well in terms of pace. Releases the ball quickly to keep it down to one. But again, 120 off. Off 20, he would say, as you say, a bit of a kick walk. But it's a final. It's a final. It's a final. And that doubles the score nearly. Correct. Everyone. Correct. And um, really, with four wickets down, the game is so evenly poised. You're only a wicket or two away from being very much in the ascendancy. So, look, um, as we've said before, it's gearing up for a really yes. special occasion, a really special final. Leinster will be hoping that Peter Francis deals with that now in the next over or two. Uh, Greg Thompson and Morgan Thompson will be looking just to, to, to take the score along and to set a platform for the lower order. But again, we were on we were on just at the end of the last innings in terms of little battles within battles. Here's one here. We're only 28 overs into the game, but there's a real battle for this next couple of overs here. There's Greg pulling away there. Francis against Warringstown here for the next couple of overs, maybe. Huge part of the game. Who comes out on top? May well decide the rest of this game. Well, ball well played. Just another thing about, about the day itself. 
Just walking around the ground here. Great to see the nets are in full action here. A lot of kids playing little touch cricket games and and the amount of shouting that's going on around it, that's out, that's not out. It's like, who's going to umpire? And just fantastic to see both. And it's both Leinster and local Warringstown kids as well. Great to see them sort of using the nets and playing cricket. Yes, they're here to watch the game, but go and play a bit of cricket, and this could be you. And in a few years' time, you could be out there representing your club. And it's good, to, really great to see. Well, there's no doubt the game is alive and well. And big occasions like this do all the try and to get even more interest in the game and a good tight finish. Uh, an exciting game of cricket will certainly not do it any harm. Not do it any harm. No. I'm guaranteeing about 10 overs time if we're still looking in the same situation. The noise will ramp up and the kids will start <laughs> pl- stopping playing cricket. They'll be out watching every ball. And comes Francis again. Yeah, that's good cricket. Good cricket from the bowler. A bat inside. Ends up with just one. But you can see, you can see Warring's time just taking a backward step here, saying, let's just accept that he's a good bowler. He's going to bowl on a length. We don't have to take any chances. He's only got 10 overs. So he can't bowl all day. Well, he's halfway through his sixth. Yeah. Over. And. You know, what's impressed me with him, whilst he probably hasn't posed the same threat because of the situation on the pitch and the ball, he's got great control over his line and length. You know, he's he's still creating pressure in other ways. A chance of a run out at the far end. That's good running. In the way through. He was okay. early through there and that definitely shows you that there's not the pace in the pitch that there was ball has just died a little yeah, bit a little the pitch. bit you know start of this innings Francis was hitting hitting Hogan hands above his head thud of the ball into the keeper's gloves not so much now who's your money on Ali <laughs> you're the neutral I'm the neutral let me get through this ball. <laughs> <laughs> you sitting on the fence, are you just no, trying no, to just tell let it? Let me get through yeah. this ball. Let me get through this ball. Okay, right. Well, the game here tomorrow. Big, big game here tomorrow. Your old side. Cliff Mill. Your old side. Cliff Academy. Cliff Mill Academy are playing Dariaki in the National Cup. Doing a bit of work at the game tomorrow, so I'm not going home. I'll see you there. I'm going to be staying in Warringstown tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be staying in Warringstown tonight. So, on that basis, I might, might just sit <laughs> slightly on the Warringstown side. Can, just oh, you just got, I thought you were going to say, yeah. No, I'm, no. I'm, I'm reading into that that actually you think Leinster in the box seat here, but you're afraid no, to I say don't, it I don't in case the locals lynch you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they may well do. Yeah. That's not the first time it's happened in the last week that the locals were going to lynch me. I was getting a bit of that last Friday. No, I do think I do think Leinster are probably slight favourites on the basis that they can win the game in two balls here, really, or certainly go a long way to winning the game in two balls. Warringstown have still got a lot of work to do. I'm not saying they won't do it, but they've got work to do, and Leinster can change it in a couple of balls. So probably they'll be slight favourites. This guy keeps going playing like this, though. Nicely fielded. Irrespective of what I think, it's a good game of cricket going to be a good game of cricket and it's been been like that all day we worried about the weather but it's held off and it's been it's been a great great contest i think it's important to pay homage to the ground staff because without the conditions and the, p- the pitch they dictate so much of the game and the fact that we're enjoying such a good game of cricket a lot of we should pay tribute to alan nelson good shot from morgan topping he's just steered that round the corner it's only one again joey top jo- i was going to say joey top my wife teaches a young lad called Joey Topley. 
Uh, well, he'll be delighted to have a mention. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just testing out the middle of the pitch. No pace, ball struggling to come on. Again, just looking at Greg's mannerisms there, he's doing that, counting every field, that's just what he does. Every, every ball, he's counting, he's looking around. That's what he does. Mm. Now here's a question for you. Greg goes round and he points and he counts yeah. the fielders. Would you count the fielders and look at the fielders, or do you look at the gap in between them? Well, there you go. Don't think of an elephant with pink spots, <laughs> first thing you think of. You know? So you're looking at the fielders, you've got to be looking at the gap, surely. Mm. That's where you want to hit it. Visualisation, bit kind of, of philosophy of there. That. Bit of philosophy there. <laughs> <laughs> Visualise what you want to do. Greg Thompson looking to get mm. after Joey Carroll here, but he's becalmed. Joey, like I say, he's a shoulder bowler. He hits the ball a little bit harder than you think. Bowls the ball hard into the pitch, and just pressure. You just get the impression here, pressure is building. Something's going to happen. Something's got to give. We got balls here, and you can see, in the over, and you can see. Greg Thompson coming down the track, trying to meet the ball. Now, he's moved long on back, brought 45 up. Greg Thompson may well look to get down in one knee and sweep him. I've seen it a lot. Just tucking him up there. It's well bold from Joey Carroll, to be honest. He's tucked mm -hmm. Greg Thompson up there. The rate's up above six for the first time today. Mm-hmm. But again, there'd be nobody with nerves in the wearing sign camp chasing 120 off 20. No. Shouldn't be. As we mentioned in the first innings, the 20 over game now has given you that platform to know exactly what 20 overs you can get, what you what you can get if you're going gung-ho, or just playing a simple game. So 120, well within reach. A little bit of hesitation again. Safely home though. Three off it. Decent stuff again from Joey Carroll. He's holding up an end here. Here's the worm. As we were saying, Warringstown still ahead of the game. Four wickets down in both innings. Warringstown probably, I'm trying to work that out. Well, we'll say a centimetre ahead. A centimetre ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty big in worm terms. That's right. A centimetre and a worm. Term. <laughs> Peter Francis is back out of the attack and this will suit Greg Thompson back to back to the spin back to the spin of Saqib Badur so yeah two overs for Francis just bowl those two in between so he's he's had six and obviously and so we'll be relying on him to come back what's that quite a bit in cricket these days where you kind of get too reliant on a quick bowler you think he'll he'll come back and clean it up for us he, he, he does not sometimes it doesn't happen you know you rely on him too much and any bowler can go at, at the end of an innings well we saw it in the in the Warriors time bowling innings that Graham Hume bowled five with a new ball and then came back and bowled a further three. And I think, in hindsight, it left him very short for for those death overs. And they paid the price for that. Yeah, they were one short, I think. That's down the wicket and launched. And that's a mighty blow over the side screen, straight as you like. Umpire Roly really Black raises the hands. Morgan Topping effortlessly moves to 65. Well, you mentioned the word effortlessly. I think it was an effortless shot. Just look at that. No, no need to brute force to give that a bit, of, a bit of heave. He just plays through the ball and it sailed over the side screen. Just beautiful timing. Absolutely beautiful timing. Effortless swing of the bat. And again, the problem there for is that that ball sailed over the side screen, and that might require new balls, please. I think it might. Or no, we have actually retrieved it. It's a good effort. It's a real good effort. We're into the trees. Cleared the sight screen easily. Glass shot from the man in form. A 
and I said at the start of the innings, what impresses me most about him, you look at his body language, wouldn't know if he's on 65 or 165 or 6. You know, it's just next ball. Quicker ball. Yeah, he's actually got that, he's got a really good temperament about him. A lot of young players trying to make their way in the game. I'm going to make a prediction here, okay? Mm -hmm. Looking at the field, the way that it's set. One man you on the offside. Sweep? <laughs> I would suggest you'll, you'll see the reverse sweep coming out here. Okay? Yeah. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? The reverse sweep has come out, but he's dragged it. Instead of getting it down to where he was trying to hit it, he's dragged it on to his off stump. Someone would say an unlucky way of getting out. Shot was on. It was called. Renowned for it, but he's dragged that back on to his off stump, and that's a huge moment in this game. Skipper has gone for 17. And the fifth Warringstown wicket has fallen. Just saw the field. I would back Greg Thompson all day long. But what he's done, he's got into that position, he's went to reverse sweep, and what he's done, he just dragged that ball back onto his off stump. Very unfortunate. And it makes you question, is actually today your day? Oh, a little bit. To see, you just see that again. He just hesitated a little bit. Just as he was playing the shot. He just hesitated a little bit, and maybe he was through it a little bit quick. And ended up possibly getting the back of the bat, pulled it back onto the off stump. Yeah, a little bit unlucky, you know. Dragging it on at any stage, any drag on is a little bit unlucky. As you say, the shot was on. He's he's well known for it certainly throughout his career. Can't really blame him from playing. It's one of those ones a lot of boys would say, "Why are you playing that?" But that's that's a shot. That's, that's a place it. Week in, week out, and if he hits it for four, everybody's clapping and saying, "What a great shot!" So, listen, he's he's played it wonderfully. That's a big big moment in the game, Alec. Certainly, that's is. a very big moment in the game. Warringstown talisman and captain. Now going to sit impatiently. Ross Allen, good player, opens the batting, has opened the batting, batted in the top order, will be a good foil for Morgan Topping. And it's important now that he comes in and just plays risk-free cricket and gets Morgan Topping on strike as for as many balls as he possibly can. Exactly what Leinster wanted, though. They needed to break the partnership because the longer it went on, I think we talked about it, it's okay saying scoreboard pressure on the bat and side, but as the total gets closer, pressure comes onto the ball and side. They've got to take wickets, and they've got one there. Quicker ball. Quicker ball. You've been here a lot more than I have this season and seen Morning's 10 a lot more. He had a lot of batting, Ross. He's, he's hasn't sort of in and out of the team, but a little bit of injury as well. and Hasn't played a lot and hasn't had many opportunities, so... From that point of view, um, you know, haven't seen as much of him. He has got mm. runs for Warringtown in the past. He's got a, a number of good scores, so he's very capable. We can certainly bat. And James Cameron Dow still to come saw the side over the line against Civil Service North in a nail biter earlier in the season. But again, I'll go back. It's an Irish Cup final. It is. The pressure goes up significantly, mm -hmm. and Morgan Topping hopefully isn't feeling the burden of that pressure. But you know, I would suggest that. You know, yeah, he'd have liked Greg there for a bit longer just to help him out a little bit and just he would have. keep him captain at the other end is a big thing as well yep. you know? Joey Carroll's going to continue from the Clare Road end another great shot beautiful shot behind point feeler has got a bit of work to do he does it down there on the square boundary back for two though again plays it under under the eyes. And irrespective of, of where this ends up in the next 19 odd overs. Got to be impressed with what you've seen here from Morgan. I know you've seen quite a bit of him, but he stood up today. For me, you will see him wearing the Green of Ireland. I have no doubt about that. It's a question of when rather than if. That's the thing, unfortunately, he's a number four. And there's one or two. There's one or two wearing the green shirt, number four, five, and six are pretty decent at the minute. Well, the, the other thing about it is what he does, he has the ability to clear the rope. He has the ability to, to play all around the ground. So I think he's adaptable enough to play in a number of positions, but he's just got to be patient. You know, thankfully, the Irish side and the batting in particular, 
The batting's very strong. It's the stronger of the two suits, I would say. Um, and certainly at this moment in time, you just got to be patient. You've got to keep knocking that door down, and when your opportunity comes, you've got to grab it with two hands. Very much so. Ross Allen about to face up to Joey Carroll's first ball, coming round the wicket. A Leeds United supporter, Ross Allen. Would you believe that? He's got to get something from today, then, doesn't he? <laughs> hey. Leeds United supporter. I was going to say, he's not old enough to be a Leeds United supporter. You've got to be in your <laughs> at least 50s to be supporting Leeds from the 70s. <laughs> he's too young. From Rip. Required is exactly six and over. The key figure is on the scoreboard is the wickets column. Absolutely. Warringstown five down. 111. Nelson required for victory. Needless to say, <laughs> I have one foot off the ground. Cross <laughs> leg. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go back to one I heard a few years ago, and you probably know a lot more about it from when Eddie Burrell came in with Ireland. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he used to say about this sort of situation, how many 50-over games are won by nine wickets? Very, very few. So your guys are getting nine. they got to be able to bat. Well, Eddie, you know, I would go as far as to say, I think when you say you love the man, wouldn't be an understatement. He was just the most amazing coach Um the best man manager I ever played under. If you're listening, Eddie, I hope all's well with you over there in Hampshire. But he dropped me down the order and he had the conversation. He said, You know, Kyle, he says, Games are games are won not by number three and four. They're they're won by number seven, eight and nine. And I always remember thinking, You're having me on <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, the truth of the matter was that I did feel when I played there that you know you're invariably going to go in to see the team over the line, yeah. um, and you're going to be involved in in, in in the close things. You have to prepare yourself that way. So um, you, you're at 100 percent right. Chasing 260, you're not going to win it. Two down, beautifully driven square by Morgan Topping. Invariably, if Warring Sun get over the line, it's going to be. Yeah. An absolute nail biter here, and it might be one nine, or two. Ten, I, 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 I dare say, in. if I was sitting up there yeah. in number eight or nine, I'd be thinking, oh, "I'd be biting my nails." Um, cause <laughs> come, I know on, it's, come, it's, come on, Morgan! Come on, Morgan! Come on, Morgan! Come on, Ross! Dig in, you know, because you do invariably think it's going to come down to small moments, and we've seen one of those already. You know, you've seen the dismissal of Greg Thompson, which is pretty unfortunate, but arguably Graham Hume and Pat Botha, two dismissals that Warrington might look back on and rue. Um, but Saki Bahardai has two wickets in the column. You're looking to add to that with Morgan Topping. As he bowls from the wearing end, just very easily played down the ground by Morgan Topping, who's now moved into the 70s. 71 off 85. Been talking about sort of the difference. Games like this, a cup final compared to a run of the middle league game. And I do find that what you've just said there is exactly it. You always look back on days like this. Right. At, the end, at the end of a game, you always look back on ifs and buts and maybe moments, you know. Could be done that, could be a Brazil league game. You just go and have a beer and forget about it. These, you always look back. Oh, if we'd have got that, if we'd have took that mm -hmm. catch, if we'd have... So, what I'm really getting at then is if you can have those thoughts while the game is going on and create the moments while the game is going on, not think, well, I'll think about those later, do them now, and we're in big moments at the minute for these two. This is very good bowling, just changing it up. Ross Allen just struggling to get himself going at the minute, one off seven. Not much foot movement, I'd like to see a little bit more. Into the ball. Yeah, I don't want to get frustrated though. 
four dot balls. He's got to stay there, irrespective of the scoring rate. He's got to stay there. All the fielders on the edge of the circle, happy to give him a single. And he hits it to the edge of the circle and waits. Picks one out. So there we are. End of a good over. And all of a sudden that run rate just creeping up, 6.35. Ross Allen has a key job here because what he mustn't do is add to the pressure for Morgan Topping that he thinks to himself. So there's, you know, there's not the rotation of strike. It's very, very important here that Ross looks to rotate the strike. So there it is. There is the Warringstown card so far. Again, very similar to Leinster, two early wickets and a rebuild job. Just key wickets in, in the middle there of Hume and Thompson. Now you're looking at that guy at number four now, 71. Not out at the minute. He holds the key, holds the cards. Stage is that one. Down to third. The difference in the cards that we just looked at there, you know, you had Morgan topping 70 playing really beautifully, but numbers, you know, numbers five and six contributed significantly in the Leinster innings, mm -hmm. whereas the two Warringstown players have just got in and got out. Um, that in itself puts pressure on Morgan Topping. So again, this is a key partnership, absolutely vital. I'd be looking at Ross Allen, I'm looking at uh, Bilal Azar here as a backward point. For me, he's been a weak link in the field today. I'd be looking just to drop the ball to my feet and get Morgan Topping back on strike. He's not the most athletic and mobile of movers. <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned some of the rotation strike. We, we actually talked about it earlier when the beer came in at the end of the Leinster innings. He, he didn't chew up balls. He got Francis back on strike every ball. Mm -hmm. Granted, it was the last four or five overs, but it's a similar kind of process at the minute for Ross Allen. He doesn't want to put even more pressure on, on the guy at the other end to hit big shots. And I know we'll just wait after this ball. Everybody will focus on Peter Francis's finished his innings. What impressed me the most was when he came in, it was at a very crucial time, and he scored a run of ball from the very outset. Mm -hmm. He hit the ball strong down the ground, but at no stage, at a very crucial time when there were five down, did the, did the run rate stall. What we're seeing here at the moment, I think if we looked at the worm, is that worm is on a downward trend. It's very important that that, that worm doesn't stop. The score must keep ticking over. There's a few nervous-looking players mm -hmm. on the Warringstown bench. <laughs> There's that shot you were talking about. It does get off strike. Yeah, Mid two from 12 now. And a big moment maybe. Mark Hawthorne with the arm outstretched, signalling a no ball. Oh. So that will be two and a free hit to the Warringstown Danger Man. Absolutely. I mean, there were, was one earlier, and, but there's been very few and far between extras today. Wades have been good and, and just the one no ball so far, but this could be a big one. Keeper coming up. Can't change the field, of course, because it was a single taken off, off the no ball. I don't see the point in the wicket keeper coming up. Not really. Because he can't be out stumped. No. So, from my point so of view... he can just walk down the crease. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll just dander down the crease anyway. There he goes. Come on, I must have heard you. He's going back. Yeah, I don't, see, no point in that. I don't see the value in that. Um, the question here is, I see, because it's a new batter on strike, they can afford to change the field. The field is... I would imagine he's going to go straight and full here looking at the field or whether it's a double bluff. Morgan Tommy looked to target the leg side. And he's hit that very hard, but he's picked out the man at straight extra cover on the ring. It's the second one today. The two no ball free hits have both been dots. It's that change of field again. Long on, comes in. The other one. Of course, just the four in for topping on the ring. Oh, another pull out. Uh, doing a bit of counting here. Yeah, five men in the circle. Right, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. Peter Francis okay. has snuck okay. up at mid on. Yep. Interesting. All fielders are on the on the boundary. There's a single here. They're giving Morgan Topping a single. Shot. Beautiful shot. The sound off the bat is just so clear from topping. Wow, 
last ball of this. 34th over. Carroll going to bowl to Ross Allen. Taking it on. Man out there. He's coming in. And he's taking the catch. Another wicket falls. Yeah, the cheers from the Leinster support. We get it going, Ross Allen. Took on the short ball. You gotta say a good bit of bowling from Joey Carroll. He's been bowling length the whole way through his spell. Little bumper there. Ross Allen takes it on. Tristan the Beard does the rest. Comes in from the square leg boundary. And takes a good catch. Great catch, Tristan De Beer. And what you're seeing here probably is more experience in the seam bowling attack. You know, uh, you know Waringstown have young Ben Snell and James Mitchell. James Mitchell only bowled four overs. You know, they relied very heavily on Graham Hume. Whereas Bilal Azar has been able to go to Peter Francis and Joey Carroll, two experienced seamers who bowled cleverly to their to their fields. Um, I don't think potentially looking back and reflecting, Greg Thompson had that privilege. But that's a, it's a disappointing end for Ross Allen. It's a bit of a struggle today. But it does bring to the wicket James Cameron, though, who has been in very good form. Their coach. He, he does bring a lot of experience. And, uh, yeah, we say it every, every wicket that falls here at the minute. It's a big partnership now. It becomes more and more important as each as each one goes. And the, and the pressure does. Just those weights just keep going on. Morgan top and shoulders at the minute. No doubt, these are probably the last two recognised batters in the Warringstown side. Johnny Bush would have batted up the order in his heyday. And yet another dummy. Dummy delivery. Time for Morgan Topping to long off for a single. It's the full toss. James Cameron Dow coming on to strike. Morgan Topping moves to 73 from 89. 74, should I say. He's a boundary away from becoming Warringstown's top scorer or joint top scorer. Greg Thompson scored 78 here at the lawn against Merriam. So that's Warringstown's top scorer in an Irish Cup final. So perhaps he could add that to his 150 last week. <laughs> it would make it a fairly successful period in his yeah, career. It would be a good eight days for him. I must thank Ger Siggins for providing me with that information. The beauty of WhatsApp these days. Ger's been coming up with a few crackers today, as he always does. What I've been impressed with here with, you know... The off spinners bowling now, and as soon as there's a wicket, you've mid off, mid on up straight away. Whereas Warringstown left the field back all the time. It was very easy for the the new batter to, to rotate the strike, but they're not going to make it easy. You've seen with Ross Allen, couldn't get off strike. James Cameron dies on. They're going to try and dot up that and build the frustration on on Morgan Topping. Yeah, it's a good bit of work from from them from Leinster, just putting the squeeze on. That's over the top. Can he get up to it? He just can't. Francis down there. Can't get up to it. Good shot from James Cameron, though. But again, you know, that's very proactive captaincy from my point of view. Really good captaincy. It's very good bowling. But or, he, he's taking the pace off. He's varied his pace. He's changed. If you look, he bowls a very round arm delivery. He bowls a quicker ball. Just asking questions. Nothing. You know, he's bowled 7 over 2 for 30, mm -hmm. but he's threatening. Yeah, so that's the last ball of that over, and we're going to get a single on the misfield. Oh, so there's a double, uh, there's a double teapot there from the bowler. <laughs> not happy. Saqib's not happy. This will be. Um, you're going to leave us now, Cal. With my last stint with you today, so it's been a pleasure to have you with me here today. Well, Lewis is going to come and join me for the next seven eight overs, and then it's going to be Louis and Cal will return for the end of the game today. 
Oh, big, big moments there. In that last little stint. It seems like a long day, Ali. They're all long days these days. <laughs> They're all long. I just looked at it. It's seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock, it is. We started at 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we had a bit of rain. We had a rain interlude, so we it's had the half, extra half, half an hour, hour, to be suppose, fair. But it's like golf. It's taking it's five and a half hours for a round of golf these days. Oh, that's, that's a great a shot from Topping. He's latched onto that, and it's quite interesting. That misfield. Yeah, these are the sorts of things that can induce moments, but that is a cracking shot. Picked up the length early. Watch his balance. Just watch his balance as he plays this shot. Yeah, no movement. Head steady. He just plays through the lane. That takes him to that. 79, Kyle was talking about. Ranks Times highest score in an Irish Senior Cup final. Now he belongs to Morgan Topping. As does the NCU Senior Cup final at highest score now. So he's racking the, racking the runs up at the minute. Ah, oh. He's batted beautifully. Ali, it has to be said. Hardly put a foot wrong. Came in under pressure. Oh, oh that's going to be four there's more. There's a chance. Just wide of Hogan. You mentioned about not putting the foot wrong. That's possibly the first one. Just got a little nick on that, but enough to get it wide of the keeper. Despairing Dave. It was wide. Again, one of those moments. You know, you need, like, obviously, that's a no ball as well. And this is untidy from Joe Carroll. That's a second. The two so far have gone for no runs. The two free hits. Will there be a third? <laughs> Not a betting man, but a bet against it. There you go. Only going to be one, though. Out to De Beer, deep cover. It was actually a really good catch. Seen it on the replay there. It was. Coming well, he... down the hill. It's very difficult to judge coming down a hill, down a slope. He's judged it really well and got the hands out in front. Took the catch. I think that's one of the things on the hill, as you say. It's actually quite hard to judge. But he did everything right in the end and held on to it. And now, you know... 91 off 87 isn't insurmountable. And you just wonder at this point, you know, do they again gamble, bring back their strike bowler? There's the experience. Cameron Dye. Just pushing it into the covers. Give it one. Just take one. Guy at the other end's playing like a dream. Yes, they're on the risk of him getting out. But you've got to give him as many balls as these 86 left. I've got to go to the number 29. If he bats the majority here, chances are you'll win. Well, I think it would be fair to say if he's there at the end, Werningstown will win this game. And I kind of think in this these types of moments, Ali, sometimes you've got to seize them. <laughs> You got to gamble. You got to go to your best player mm -hmm. to get the best player out. Well, I was just talking with Gal there a moment ago about cup finals and looking after the game about ifs and buts moments. If we'd have taken that catch, if we'd have brought that boy, if we'd have run that run, do that now. Try and, try and be that moment right now. If I can get on, take a wicket. And that short ball again. I got Ross Allen in the last over. This time, James Cameron Dyke negotiates it. 171 for 6.14 to go. Well, you kind of sense there, and you can see even Joey Carroll himself, hands on hips. He looks a little bit weary. And again, you know, those moments that we talked about, and again, the ifs and buts. 
will be talked about after this match at various different times. Again, when Waringstown opted to bring young man Schnell back, they kind of gathered the momentum from there. And this is, you know, having watched the cricket that we have, Ali, sometimes it's about seizing moments. But this man's bowled very well. Yeah, he's, he's bowled well without, without seeming to do much. You know, he's bowled, he's bowled really tidily. Nothing, nothing too major in terms of spin movement, but very effective. That type of ball is exactly what I'm talking about. Well, it, it's a phrase that's often used, but he knows what he's doing. Mm. It's know, always a good thing. It, 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 a good it thing is, but he's, 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 he's in control, he's calm, he's, as you say, he's, he's not going to go as you too much have it, but there the figures speak for themselves. Two for 31, the vital wicket at Thompson. You know, in terms of where Waringstown were at. But he's bowled economically. Gareth Delaney still has overs in the locker. Obviously he hasn't played a huge amount of cricket. And again, that's clever. Just saying, come on Cameron Dell, come on. Really intriguing watch. It's what I love about this limited over format of the game. You know, there's tactics to it. You spoke about, Kyle was speaking about mid-off being in. And again, this variation in pace the whole time. And he gets through his over quickly, yeah. Ali. That's a big thing at the minute. And we're almost through this over. Takes it down to 13 at the end of this one. Like, he's probably bowled that over in about a minute and 15 seconds. Brilliant. Brilliant, you see that quite a lot. Kyle actually spoke about it when them and Gary Kidd were in tandem here, and they would rattle through 10 overs, huh. and they would go for 20 off those 10. Maybe not take a wickets, but you've, you've just, fifth of your innings is gone in 20 minutes. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> you know? no, not I today, don't. but it's after 7 o'clock, as you say. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's a, normally today, not, not the rule. Well, the skipper has decided... He's the man for the job. And it's quite funny. Bill Alizar used to have a really threatening in-swinger from over the wicket to the right-hander. He's kind of lost it a wee bit. And you know when you see that left armour who consistently brings the ball back into this? As a right-hand batsman, it was the most... You never really quite knew where your off stump was. And, uh, you know, invariably you look to bat outside your crease, kind of nullify a wee bit of that swing. Just that different angle again that's always talked about. You just see right arm, right arm, right arm. Suddenly a left armer comes in. Obviously they're much more prevalent now. Because everybody wants one. So they're coming more and more into the game. But definitely when like, you see the left arm coming on, you sort of think, what do I do now? <laughs> what do they do now? Well, you never mind the ones that go across you, Ali. No. The ones coming I in. love them. Throw your hands on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's see if... As I can't bring that ball back in to topping. You mentioned the ball's probably not, certainly not doing anything. Pretty slow deck now compared to the first sort of 10. So you're going to change it up now. See if you can get this ball reacting off the pitch. Well, that's what he'll do. He'll bowl these you know, little cutters. You can clearly see he's already gone to that. Immediately changes again. The look of him. He's going to come back over, I think. Certainly the left hander. Well, again, you know, the other side of things for topping here, there's no real need for panic. You know, obviously, someone of the experience of Cameron Dow. I have a clear idea of what's required. And again, from a Leinster point of view, you were talking there, Elliot, from their point of view, is they'll want Cameron and Down strike. Now two off ten. They've really done well. In the last four or five overs, they've really done well and bowled a lot. 
at the new guys. Ross Allen, 12 balls for one or two. Cameron Dine is on two off ten. He gets off straight. That sounds a re really, really simplistic I'm thing to say. But the game's going to come down to Morgan Topping here. I mean, he can't win this game on his own. I've seen him sort of an eight days ago just take an attack apart. You know, and he, he, he's got that in him. And at the minute, he's got a guy at the other end who he's happy with. But we've seen it with England. Ben Stokes has done it. Whenever it he just takes his game to a different gear. Jack Leach was the hero, wasn't he? I don't think he actually got as enough credit for what he well, did. We've that talked about we've talked about batters today, just hanging in there. Yeah. You know, he hung in for two or three days, I think. <laughs> <laughs> for one, well, he tormented us, if you remember as well. He did. Oh, the inside edge there. And the down, the fine leg. Well, that's the type of length he needs to be bowling to Cameron Dell. Don't let him get onto that back stool. Ask questions, attack the stumps. It's been an intriguing match, this. So many twists and turns, and you just feel. There's more. Oh, that's a cracking shot. I'm well fielded. Oh, it's good cricket. He really, again, just waited and waited on that ball. Hit it towards backward point. Good piece of fielding. Keeps it down to one. Waring's tank. Not be unhappy about that because it keeps topping on strike. 177 for 6. 83 from 72. Yeah, comparisons here, Ali. Really similar at this particular point of the match, but I was just going to point to Topping. One of the things that has really impressed me is his bat swing. You know, so much of the ball hits the middle of the bat a lot of the time. And, you know, he's, as you said, he's very steady, stands still, not a huge amount of movement, picks up the short ball well. Yeah, about as close a game as we could get here. We're heading into the last 12. Just the one wicket between the two. Five down for Leinster at this stage. Six for Warringstown. And the question would be, can Topping do what Peter Francis did for Leinster? And just as importantly, can the other guys help him? Well, isn't it extraordinary as well, Ali? It's always different when you're chasing. It's a different mindset. You just seem to have a little bit of kind of less freedom as such. Oh! In the, in the mid wicket. Got his hand to it. And when he did that, possibly should have made the catch. I thought he was taken a little bit by surprise there, Ali. That should really have been taken, I think. And possibly could have got there with two hands. But uh, Kyle talked about, you know, that wee bit of weak link in the field. couple of catches have gone down. But this is a really good spell from Bahadur. Look at that again. Just that guile and use of pace. He varies his pace so well. And with great accuracy. Yeah, he's been good. Let's say no frills. Just bold. Less than four. Almost bang on four, really. And over.
Well, for Leinster here, really, it's about preventing boundaries, Ali. And here we are. Let's have a look. So you can see there, tale of two halves, actually. Waringstown struggled early. France is particularly potent. But Botha and Topping steadied the ship. And there's just been never any kind of fluidity apart from Topping. 91 from 104 balls, faultless innings. He's been superb. Yeah, we look at the bowling. Seven bowlers now used. It does give them a little bit of flexibility. Francis was absolutely magnificent up top. And Azar also got a wicket. Bahadur, as we just mentioned there, just going up four and over. He's picked up two crucial wickets. Got a few options now left with the using those bowlers. He's got a few options left. Obviously, Francis, you would think, would come back for four. With these final 11. Skipper's going to continue on the Clare Road end. Yeah, I think the old half appeal there from the keeper. Please don't give a wide hump. Umpire says, I think I will. Regular fare, that, Ali. Absolutely. Regular fare. They always look disappointed, too, even when they know they're at it. <laughs> I think it's on you. Yeah, just going back to that baton card, he's does stick out like a sore thumb there, that 91, doesn't it? Mm. It really does. It's well, been a, just a different different level of innings. A lonely count. Well, you come over the line. Well, you kind of think, you see, one of the things there, and Kyle touched on it, you think where? And he's 91 from 104. And uh, that's a sign of a class player. And, you know, it's funny when you talk about things like elevation of a young player in an Irish context mm. these are the moments you choose to play innings is like this pressure situations I was talking to Cal as well just in the innings break it's 150 last week was a class act and the, that was in his union final this is an All-Ireland final this is a much broader mm. and every one of these runs important oh, that's well bowled well bowled just a check shot Morgan, and even that was well played because I thought he'd gone for it. Would have chipped that in the air, but he just held back. And he's the holdest shot. Well bowled, though, from Azar. Yeah, he just mixes it up. Palal Azar, those little off cutters. And then he kind of tries to skid one through. He is that skiddy low action. Trying to push for two here. Fielder gets round though. Keeps it to one. Good piece of field in there. In terms of speed, throw wasn't great. I need to release the ball quickly though. It's starting to get hard to see with the naked eye. I don't Tis know whether you bit. saw it there, Ali. It is a little bit. The way, the shape, the way the shape of the shot was, I thought that might have gone the distance, but only one. You know, I think, that, I think the DJ's booked here for 7.30. <laughs> Please, it's entertainment. I think he'll be put DJ back DJ won't bit. be spinning the wheels at 7.30, Ali. <laughs> I think he might be put back a bit here. I don't think the DJ will be on at 7.30. <laughs> I guarantee he's charging from 7.30. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Wonder will he be playing Sweet Carolina oh, or that? again, here again. He can me. play oh, me, oh, detector. Oh, it's played in every, every ground in the, in the country. Oh, there should be a should single, be a single there. there. Garth well, Delaney. of course, the think ended the over. I suppose over. they ended the over, but... I'd, I'd be taking it. I'd probably take ones at this stage. Game of and there is the man on the PA telling us that there are 10 overs to go. 76 required. So the run rate's still okay, although it's gone up quite considerably in the last... Five or six overs has gone. We were talking at 5.8 at one stage. It's now 7.6. It's still under control, but it's still it's still something that you can you can easily get. Um, but it's those wickets. Oh, 
Afters. Gonna close out here. Huh? Gonna pull his tenth. I'll bowl again. I'll bowl again. Well, interesting. Thinking of tons in Irish Senior Cup finals. Rahul Manka at 130 and 84. Decker Curry got two in 94-97. And of course, Shaheen Khan. And another one, Andrew Pointer. Clontarf against Merrion. Don't know whether our statistician, Jer Siggins, forgotten about that one, but I'm sure he'll be on WhatsApp very shortly. Well, he's actually played that quite well in the end. It's a shovel, that. A little bit. I've seen a few shovels back to the bowler, unfortunately, <laughs> but he's managed to get enough on that. And as we've talked about constantly, that's his job at the minute. He's got to rotate the strike. Kyle McCallum behind is getting a bit agitated, and I agree with him. It's something we spoke about earlier, Ali. It's putting no real pressure on. He'll be on with you in a minute, Louis. The next couple of overs he'll be on. If this keeps going the way it is, I'm not sure his old banker reserves are going to hold here. <laughs> he might be a bit nervous in the last eight overs here. He laughed at me last week. Let's see how he goes in the next eight overs. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Good spell, though. Oh, it's been an excellent spell of bowling. Just gone from 40 from his 10. Bang on, falling over. Got two wickets as well. So a really good spell from Saqib Bahadur. I always remember Davey Houghton when he coached us. Always any bowler, no matter when they bowl, you can get them out of the picture for your 10 overs or 40 runs. You've done exceptionally well. Yeah, you'll take that all day long. All day long. And the run rate's now gone to eights, which does put that wee bit of additional pressure. And, of course, as you said, Ali, Peter Francis can finish. And, of course, he's got three from Delaney in the tank, if required. And, again, with his experience, you might think he'll be used... Just really depends on the skipper here, and at what point, you know, they may consider going. They don't really need to consider that just yet. Just the one. I'll probably go through this this over, and this will be my last over of the day. On well, I'd be very disappointed with that, Ali, because <laughs> I've enjoyed your company throughout the very day. Very kind of you to, to say, say so, and. Uh, you're going to see the end of this through with Kyle. Indeed. Well, but it's been, a, it's been a fantastic day so far. The crowd's just starting to get into it here. It's just starting to get a little bit nervy. But I can guarantee you, get to 44 and 45, every ball's going to get a cheer from either Leinster or Warringstown. So I'm going to go out into the crowd. I'm going to enjoy the crowd for the last eight you overs. Could be, you could be Bumble for the last eight overs. I could you give me the roving <laughs> mic. <laughs> I don't think anybody could be Bumble. <laughs> Nobody's as mad as Bumble. Who are you up for? Who are you up for? <laughs> you think they'll do it? Oh. Listen, mate. You've just talked about Bumble. What would he be singing? <laughs> Sweet <laughs> <Hey> Caroline. <laughs> That's what he'll be doing. Oh. I miss him on comms. Oh, 100%. Oh, I miss him. 100%. Anyway, I'll never the, forget. I, I know that's back true. That's true. I can't ramble about that sort of stuff. <laughs> but we did have a bite after that dismal performance by Ireland at Bristol. We had him in the Danubius Hotel, and we're saying, "Right, Bumble, you're the coach. <laughs> you're out, Lords. What are you going to say to the boys? It will, br <laughs> as he said in his vernacular, it will brilliant. <laughs> William Porterfield, you're a great player. You're a great player. Not good player. You're a great player." All this sort of stuff. Wow. He had us in raptures. Oh, he's a top man. Oh, tops. But 
talking of tops. Morgan topping now within five of an Irish Senior Cup century, and it would be incredibly well deserved. He's batted quite beautifully. On a beautiful evening now, as the sun sets above the pavilion here in Waringstown. I just can't understand, Ali, why they're not taking ones there. Yeah, I think they're going to be one of those moments we're talking about. Looking back, should we have taken more singles? Like every Leinster fielder. This is far away from the batter as you can get. It's on the edge of the circle. <laughs> you can hardly see them. There's nobody on the leg side in the circle. I won at 45. Oh, that's class. That goes to 100. That is absolute class from Morgan Topping. That is fantastic. What a way to go to 100. Back to back hundreds for Waringstown. And that's just a class, class act. Morgan Topping. Well, you couldn't have put it any better, Ali. That is as good an innings as I've seen. And when you think about it on this stage, no better place to do it. 101 not out now from 113 deliveries. But it has been beautiful. absolutely beautiful innings. And look at the way he just shimmied down the surface and again balance that swing ball hitting the middle of the bat. Brilliant shot. And again, that might be just the kickstart, that wee bit of kickstart that he feels his team needs. But a good bit of fielding. Joey Carroll putting his body behind that. Keeps it he, down to one. I think he stopped that with his back. <laughs> they all count. Well, that brings me to me and the Mustin. It's been a pleasure watching Morgan Topping create that innings there of 100. I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Alan Lewis and Cal McCann to take it home. And whoever may win, may win. Well, I suppose the only thing, Ali, I'm going to have to be careful of, and bon voyage on your trip for the last eight overs, is to keep Kyle McCallum some sort of check here. I might, I might do this standing up, Louis. Well, if you're going to do it standing up, I'll join you standing up. What an innings from Morgan Topping. Great innings. Great innings. And they say that the great players stand up in the big games. And consecutive hundreds in senior cup finals. Well, wow. or you know, it's testament to a wonderfully talented young man who I think has a very big future in the game. But there's a game of cricket to win here. The question is, Peter Francis is the strike bowler, the gun bowler. But pace back on the ball, could that be an advantage to the batting side? Well, interestingly, probably no different to Graham Hume. He's got a very good yorker, uh, and it'll be just interesting to see how he varies things but again the other side of this say from a Leinster point of view in a setting sun over that pavilion and you've played here many times not easy I would imagine fielding out in that offside boundary square on the offside but he's got a big job to do for Leinster here Peter Francis he's had a the type of match Morgan Topping's had so yeah you can see that that's where he's going to be attacking Still like to see Morgan taking those signals, backing James Cameron Dow. He's now got said he's eleven. All the fielders are on the edge of the circle. You know, it's it's just over a run of ball. You know, it's eight and over. It's a it's a run of ball on the odd boundary. There's a there's somebody here in an orange vest. I think he's a Leinster twelfth man who's running back and forth across the side screen. Well, they had to put a vest on him for a start. At one stage, we thought he was a fielder. <laughs> piece of bowling. This guy's a good cricketer, Louis, isn't he? Peter very Francis. Good. Very, very impressive cricketer. You kind of saw, in a sense, what it meant to him after his innings, leaving the field. Big hugs for his part. And it's interesting, you talked about taking the singles to Peter came in at a very tricky stage. He got seven off seven balls. And I, you know, I don't know whether Wellington, and look, we're only going to know at the end of this game, but if it is one of the regrets... Well, you know, I just don't understand it. I think it was the end of the 49th over that he hit one to James McCollum who picked it up and threw it on the bounce to the bowler who missed it and they ran a second. That got Peter Francis back on strike who, who hit the first two balls the next over for six. Mm, so those small margins add 10 to the total. Absolutely. 
absolutely no need here to panic from a Warring Sound point of view. But it's been a great game of cricket. Great though. game of cricket. And do you know the good thing about it? The quality of the cricket's been really good. I've really enjoyed the quality. I've enjoyed the quality of Topping's innings no end. And again, you know, having kind of been and you been, I love to see that. Love to see it. You know, player of that type of talent coming through. Well, Lady Burrell, when he came initially, sat us down in a room in North County and he challenged every player there to say, that, listen, I've looked at the averages. Why are the overseas players at the top of all the averages in every union? So today, you know, very often it used to be, well, we hope the pro gets a load of, you know, it's absolutely wonderful for me to see our own homegrown talent put a hell of a lot of work into the game, you know, and, and not burning fruit for them. Uh, people probably don't realise what Morgan Topping has gone through over the last five years to get the glory that he's getting at the moment. So it's a hugely significant milestone for him. Well, you talked about someone too that, again, when you came into the Irish team and you speak of A.D. Burrell, I always remember him telling the story about you can do something for my team, but as long as the gate of this place is open a quarter to eight by you every morning and you're prepared to hit 10,000 balls, mm -hmm. but that's your commitment to me. And if you've got that commitment, I think there's something in it. Of course, obviously, got a folk hero status. John Mooney went on to be fielding coaches for some of the top nations of the world. He was just one of those inspiring cricketers. Again, there's another single turn down. You just have to wonder. And that's a good over from Francis, it has to be said. I think there were two overs in the, in the Leinster innings that were skyscrapers. I think what Warringstown need now are probably one or two skyscrapers, a couple of 20 runovers, and all of a sudden, well, listen, there's only 59 required, but that's the one thing that I think Leinster have coped with much better. They've managed that there haven't been those skyscrapers. You know, there were a couple of overs that, you know, there were three or three sixes or 20, 22, 23 of them, and that hurts. So I think looking at this, Morgan will probably, you know, they're looking now at Francis bowling the remaining overs from the Warring end. So the skipper... Balalas are probably going to be the one that the players are going to look to take down. Hitting with the wind, downhill, down breeze. Fasten your seatbelts. Um, again, I might be wrong. And we talked about it with Ross Allen, if you remember, but. Yeah, that goes. See. Perhaps that's the first maximum of what we, what we just talked about, Louis. A skyscraper much needed. Morgan Topping got set across onto off stump and has picked that up over wide mid on. Much to the light of the Warringstown balcony. You can well, just see before the ball's bowled. Look, he just takes a step back and across on the off stump. Gets set. Strong base. Out of here. Well, it's interesting that you say that, Kyle, because again, if I was in Lencer's camp, and obviously Bilal is the captain. Delaney with three in the tank. You know, that kind of fast leg spin, leg breaks, whether he's comfortable or not doing it. But when you saw the skills of Francis in that last over, I don't know whether he's struggling. I don't know whether he's a bit... I don't know whether he's got a problem with his leg. There seems to be a major discussion going on here between the think tank and Leinster. Look at it, Louis. Runs to win, 53, balls remaining, 41. It's not insurmountable by any matter of means, and again, it was no surprise to me that Morgan Topping, he's targeting this over, my friend. Because he knows so, the other end is difficult. Well, you can see there's nerves, there's tension here. This is the beauty of cup finals, and it's lovely to be watching it from this side of the boundary. <laughs> but you can see there's still anxiety on the fielding side. They know this game's not over. They know that, you know, if Morgan Topping finishes 140 not out here, where is going win this game? So, if you he, know... If he does, it'll be an extraordinary seven days. Oh, <laughs> are you watching, Heinrich Milan? <laughs> Andrew White? I, I have to tell you, I'll be messaging Andrew White here personally. But well, is he know, not here? I haven't said, well, he may well be here, I'm sure he, he might be up enjoying hospitality, why do you, oh, right, okay. if you're listening, well. you know, but from my point of view, you know, the great Rahul Mankad, 130, the highest ever scored in our senior cup final, and he could play. Big town. I know Chair Siggins hasn't been back to me, he forgot Andrew Pointer's 100, <laughs> not like him to miss a stat. 
I have to say, Ger has kept me right over the oh. commentary for a long time. Where would it be without him? Well, it is. You know, obviously we're conscious of it because we do it, but, you know, when you do the, the bigger games and the information that comes in, you sound like a guru. <laughs> People tell you how good you are. I'm thinking, well, anyway, listen, I'm being fed this. Here we go. It's well bowled. Oh. oh, that's probably a wee bit harsh, I would have thought. Because it was clever from... Let's have a, oh. let's have a look again at that, though, I see. It's a batter's game, Lou. It's it a is. batter's game, isn't it? No doubt about it. 52 from 41. But he's a calm character, Bilal is our lovely man. Heart and soul into his cricket club. Walked in off the street, started on Leinster's sixth, would you believe? And one of those moments, and again one of these things, they got someone like him, no, I want him on my team. <laughs> and uh, he's been there for a long time now, captains the, captains the club with great pride. And maybe he just feels he's got to try and deliver on this occasion, but there's a man at 110 at the other end, and he's been absolutely brilliant. That ball's head out towards... Oh, he's it. gone! He's gone! And it is under pressure. A fantastic catch from Monik Patel. It really is. He was running away to his left-hand side. Again, he just didn't quite get the elevation, Morgan Topping, and he'll be terribly disappointed because it was a wonderful innings. And again, you can see the delight of Bill Alizar. Outstanding innings from Morgan Topping. Well, Carl, I stand here clapping myself because that's one of the nicest innings I've seen in a long, long time. And I think as a batter, when you see the reaction of the opposition and the opposition supporters to your dismissal, you realise the respect that you've earned. Well, they were all on their feet behind here, and you could hear them all clapping. It was a wonderful innings. So tell me about James Mitchell with the bat. James Mitchell is a strong fella who can hit the ball. Now, I have to say we were beaten very heavily by Leinster in Rathmines last year. And he came in and got 40 off about 20 balls um, and hit the ball very, very well. So he is capable of, of, of quick clear runs. I have to say, tends to clear the front leg. He's going to give the bowlers the stumps. So if I were, I would be looking at going full and straight. But if it's in the arc, in the famous words of Neil Russell, the old North Down opener, if it's in the arc, it's out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That could be wide. Well, we had a fellow in our fourth team. He said, if you get a glimpse, have a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I'll tell you, under pressure, that was a very good catch, Carl. Great catch. Great, Great catch. catch. Into catch. the sun. Into, Into the, the sun. sun. Oh! Gives you his stumps. I see what you mean. And you know what's quite interesting? I spoke before the game about this team and having watched them a bit this season. They play for each other. They play, And you mentioned it, that last 10 overs. Wearingstown were that little bit flat. You know, and they just, they just stuck at it. They stuck together. And again, they've obviously got a supreme bowler up front in Peter Francis. Well, I think on reflection, Warrington looked back. James Cameron Dow being forced to bowl the last few overs from the from the, the you know the, the, the clear road end were pivotal. Um, and so, from my point of view, that you know ultimately Graham Hume bowled ten, and the other two seamers bowled ten between them. Correct. So there's twenty overs of of, of seam bowling right. in the Warrington innings. Very difficult in an Irish Cup final unless conditions are really in your favour, turning and bouncing to get away with. Was that you know you have to be able to rely on your seam bowlers to bowl those death overs. Although if you remember, Ali made a very good comment. You know, we we think you must bring your seamer back and young. Like that's where the momentum shift changed, and it was very difficult for him. But you can, again, no different to Morgan Topping at the time. You know, you're you're eyeing up a bowler. You're eyeing, because these are the sorts of things that you begin to think of. Right, who who necessarily am I going to take down? And that was the momentum shift. 
And again, quite rightly, you said that throw in from the boundary, misfield, Francis back on strike, 12 off the next two balls. Cup finals, we've said all along, are won and lost in very small margins. And at the moment, it looks to me like, you know, Leinster are very much, they have one hand on the trophy. Jonathan Bush can bat. I think for me, what you'll see is a bit of tip and run here. And then, you know, James Cameron Dow has had a chance to get in. And he is capable of clearing the boundary. You never know. The game is not over. The fat lady might be clearing her voice. Well, but it's not over yet. If there's something to happen. But we've been treated to an excellent game of cricket, Kyle. I've really enjoyed it. I love, I've really enjoyed commentating on it. It's been quality. A leave. And a nice one oh, at that. <laughs> Nothing like a good leave. Fifty-one for thirty-seven. Is there a moment? Is there a change? Will something happen? I think it's. I think it's worth stating, even at this stage, that you know, if Leinster are to get over the line, and it it looks very much that way at this stage. What an achievement that will have been. To have beaten Warringstown in Warringstown is something that happens very rarely. Mm -hmm. So to come in an All-Ireland final and have been 11 for three <laughs> yeah. and, and, and to come over and, and win the game, I think a significant kudos would have to be given to the, the players group uh, for them to be taking the trophy back to, to, to Ralph Mines. Big time. And you know what? Kind of clubs go up and down, but five years ago, Leinster were in turmoil. Turmoil and... Jared Chetty came in, a very brave move by the club. And he set about changing attitudes and he set about trying to develop younger players. And, like, obviously they've got experience and people like Joey Carroll and, you know, a very good overseas pro. But they've played for each other today. And that's the one thing that I kind of said to you before that the match start, having seen a good bit of them. And this guy can bowl. Knows, knows what he's doing. And he's been a galvanising force for them, but just Warrington have been a bit off. Like the the singles thing in the second innings has been something that has surprised me. Like look, everyone's on the edge of this. Like you'll understand it at this point in time. There's no need for them to be, but you know, to not keep that scoreboard ticking the way it should have been. What you're seeing here is death bowling being executed really well. We saw it with Graham Hume. Absolutely. But then the other thing to bear in mind, you know, Ben Snell's just off eight for 30 during a week. He's a young bowler. Absolutely. He will be much better for this experience. No you know, doubt about it. And he will learn, undoubtedly, mark my words. Mm. He's, a, he's a tremendous young talent. And he's, you know, well, you've got, to be, you've got to be careful with young talent all the time. You've got to constantly encourage. Nothing wrong with, you know, things like that happening. You're young. You're going to get days like this. It's That's it. Straight up in the air. Captain underneath it. Bilal Azar takes it safely. Busted to the delight of the supporters. Warringstown 9 down. Leinster with pretty much both hands now in the Bob Kerr Aries trophy. And that's a great piece of bowling by Francis. Just pushing Cameron Dow onto the back foot. And really did him for pace in the end. And a good catch by the skipper. who's had a tricky day in the field. And as we say, poor old Bilal. Ball has followed him around a bit. But on that occasion, he got himself in the right place and took the catch comfortably. And as you say, there is no doubt now that Leinster have their hands on the Bob Kerr. Last one, of course, in 2009. And interestingly, incredibly, Carlos Braithwaite flew from the GT Canada T20 to be here today. And it's kind of mark of... You know how much he enjoyed his time in Ireland. He's here with his family. And they're going to, all things being equal, be celebrating heavy in Rathmines. Although they've got a league game tomorrow. I can't, <laughs> I can't see how oh, they're going to be in too much shape for that. But you, you tend to keep going when you're winning. But as you say, it's a, you know, when you kind of think of Waringstown's record at home, it's huge. It's a, it's a, it's a really remarkably good victory. As you say, from the position they were in this morning. And Snell off the mark. With a 
single. I always like when they shape that shot when they get to the non strip They've got a big hack to leg. No, I'm not going to shape this thing through extra cover. You know, had Morgan topping me in there for another 15 balls, maybe. You just don't know. It's the ifs and buts that we love about this game that kills us, gives us incredible joy, excitement. Nicely played by Jonathan Bush. He's a, Jonathan Bush a good batsman. You know, where I, I think that upon the dismissal of, you know, Greg Thompson, what Leinster did very well um, was keep Morgan topping off strike. He, he he watched a lot of cricket from the non-strikers end, and you could argue that the batters from numbers sort of seven, eight, nine, ten weren't able to rotate the strike. Um, and, and again, when I compare that to the Leinster innings, you know, Leinster were able to do that. Uh, perhaps you know the field placing, perhaps the pressure that was put on. But it's, it, listen, you know, it's much easier when you know you put totals on the board, what you've got to defend, and it's very easy in hindsight on this side of the road. Yeah, I know that. But the other, you made a very interesting point. It comes up. There it is. Peter Francis justifiably takes the last wicket. He's had a brilliant match individually. It's been a brilliant team performance by Leinster. And deservedly they take the Bob Kerr All-Ireland Cup. Bowling wearing sound out for 211. And you can see the joy. The supporters are here. They're all up. And it's why we play the game, Kyle. Wonderful game of cricket and thoroughly deserving of their win and there they are president and coach coming over and it's wonderful for them both put enormous amount into the club and it's as much a special day for them as it is for the players and look at the joy and only rightly so and you can see the number of kids there's a great body of children up there playing cricket now and this will only add to the fire yeah, congratulations, Leinster Cricket Club. Deserved winners today. Won the toss, courageously batted first. And right up against it from early days. 11 for 3, everything against. And they've come back, they've shown great heart, great grit, and no doubt great skill to get over the line. Deserved winners by 49 runs, 48 runs. And I'm sure it'll be a noisy trip back to Dublin <laughs> at some stage this evening. And whoever they're playing well, tomorrow. Get the DJ on. <laughs> get the DJ on. That's what I say. Get the DJ on. They might just be staying. That bus might be leaving here till 12 o'clock. But it's been a tremendous game. And I've been so impressed with the way Leinster went about their business. And they were under the cosh, obviously, early on. And Delaney. But it was more their out cricket. The general levels of their out cricket was absolutely superb. And they'll relish this wonderful occasion. Wonderful victory. Here's the card. What you're going to see again is another Warringstown performance. There is the Leinster performance. They batted their 50 overs. They set it up in the middle. You know, you see batter there, 42 from 68. Joey Carroll, 78 from 108. But the key innings, that of Peter Francis, saw them to what was a match winning total, 74 from 55. And there you go. That's really the difference in the game. Partners with 57, 70, 82 and 39. And again, even that little piece of De Beer 6 off 5 in helping Francis get the other 31 off 13. And we've spoken on commentary long enough about the, the do's and don'ts of how that happened. But a wonderful reconstruction by them. And they're the bowling figures, Carl. As you can see, Graham Hume, 10 overs, 2 for 35. Very tidy. Ben Snell's figure somewhat distorted. You know, a very good first five overs. But his one over that he came back proving very expensive. And that's what gave the, the, the Leinster batters a lot, a lot of momentum, you know. And there's the second innings bowling figures. If you have a little look, just economy rates. No major skyscrapers as we talked about. The key thing from a Warringstown point of view, and it has come home to haunt them today. They won the semi-final having been bowled out in 43 overs against Pembroke. You know, that, that inability to, to set it up to come home in the last 10 overs has been something that has been an issue throughout the course of the year. And as you can see, one really major contribution. Pat Botha with 32 from 41. But unfortunately for Warringstown, guys who have really performed wonderfully throughout the year. Adam Dennison, fresh off a final, a cup final 100 last week, dismissed early for three. Greg Thompson, most, you know, the, the player of the year for Warringstown out for 17. Those are two of the, the big inning. You know, Irish International, James McCollum, unfortunately failed 
able to register a major score. Morgan Topping, however, what a standout performance. Big future ahead for him. And there, as you said, Louise, the big difference. You know, there were two two uh, partnerships of 50 plus. You can pair that then to what we saw from the Leinster men. So, listen. It's been a wonderful game of cricket. As you can see, Peter Francis, 71 of 55 balls and 8 overs, 3 for 24. I think it's safe to say we know who the man of the match might be. But don't downplay the role of uh, Sadiq Bahadur there, 10 overs, 2 for 40. He really was the one who who, who, who brought Warringstown back into play along with Gareth, Gareth Delaney. So overall, there's our match summary. Yes, and there it is, Leinster from... The depths of being 11 for 3 to amass 259 for 6 was a huge achievement and all those scores in the middle order. And really the standout batting performance, Morgan Topping, sad in many cases to score 100 and be on the losing team. But that's what was his fate was today because really there was no backup and you can see that from the scores. So congratulations to Leinster, the winners of the Bob Kerr. Arrakis sponsored Irish Senior Cup. Wonderful performance by them. Thoroughly deserved. It's been wonderful to bring these pictures to you. Courtesy of HBV Studios. And uh, it's been a great pleasure to be joined by my old mate Kyle McCallum. And uh, of course Ali McCalmont. And the crowd are gathering in front of the pavilion. Uh, all ready for the match day presentation. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of joy and uh, tears. That's what these things, these, these occasions tend to bring, tears of joy. And that's what there will be today. It's been a wonderful performance. And as I say, get the DJ on, Kyle, get the DJ on. So that's all from us here today. And uh, we wish you bon voyage. Wherever you may uh, wherever you may be, be it Spain, uh, sitting at home in other parts of Ireland, but uh, I certainly know one man in Spain who'll be extremely happy. And it's goodbye from Kyle, goodbye from us and all the HBV team until we see you again at the National Cup Final, the Arrakis National Cup Final tomorrow, same ground, 12 o'clock start.